make sure that you leave space for those emergency personnel to uh, get in and attend to potential victims as well. But again, at this point, what we know is that there are several road closures in the area of Perryman at Sasusha. We're looking at jams on Philadelphia Road as well as 40. There are several uh, businesses in that area that if you uh, know anybody or that works there, friends or family that you might want to try with text or calling or social media uh, to check to find out if there are closures or lockdowns. We know that there are several apartments in that area as well as a Walmart store. There is a park, uh, a public park, Harriman Park, that's also near there as well. All of those areas could obviously be affected by these closures and all the emergency personnel that's coming in there. And these closures are not going to go away anytime soon. It's only going to continue to jam up the roads even worse. Uh, they're going to be out there investigating for up for hours. And so something that we mentioned before, if you have a child that goes to school there, don't rush the school that's near that area. Uh, you'll want to contact the school to find out if they're on lockdown. And then in addition to that, let your child stay safe there instead of getting stuck on the road trying to go there and get them. Um, obviously, your best bet is to stay informed by watching WJZ. We are giving information as it comes available. Mike Halperin now on the scene, Chopper on the way to the scene, and we'll keep you updated. In the meantime, we do know that the roads immediately surrounding that area are closed and jammed. 95 is clear. If you need to travel right near that area, Pulaski Highway is moving, but it's just moving slow. Back over to you guys. All right, Sharon, thank you. Again, a good reminder that if you need to get in contact with any schools, any loved ones in the area, not to rush to the scene or right. try to take it on yourself, contact them or social media. Right, especially as we await word on the suspect. We're going to go now live to Mike Helgren again, uh, who has a, Mike, our understanding, a business owner from that area or witness? Well, someone who works and lives here, uh, Colleen Henderson, Hendrickson, and you were telling me um, that it was just kind of chaotic here. Abs absolutely. Uh, oh, when I first left, I was just trying to catch the bus. It was just a regular day. It was just slightly rainy, and it wasn't until someone said, hey, there's, there's an active shooting going on there. You be careful. And... I, of course, thought it was, like, far off or that's, like, down the road or something, right? Not, like, right here. And, no, it, it's right outside. It's right on the doorstep. Describe what you've seen as far as police activity, just how, uh, you know, how crazy it's been here. It's It's been absolutely crazy. Everything's cut off. Uh, all the roads are cut off. Um, they're not even supposed to let cars down here, and they're just using any larger vehicles they're letting through. But... Uh, <laughs> They're telling some people to divert through the graveyard somewhat, but there's so many cars that I think I counted at least 13 ambulances, and that's that was just when I was counting. And they put in a, a lot of emergency vehicles, there's like three choppers, they're still looking, it's still investigating. And, well, we just saw several empty Harford County school buses uh, go by here. I don't know the, the purpose of those, but just to point those out, and uh, still multiple police cars here. Uh, now, tell me, you you live in the area, you work in the area, you're familiar with it. So this is, as we understand, some sort of a business park. Can you tell us about yeah, it? it? It's mostly warehouses in the area. Along that, there's the Clorox plant, the Sephora warehouse. Just uh, It's usually just a really sleepy place. There's a lot of residential neighborhoods on this this side here and then there's just some warehouses and like the Rite Aid area and and warehouse it's it's really just usually very calm and this is the most chaotic I've ever seen it and just describe how frightening this is for you as someone who is you know from this area and then all of a sudden you know you're seeing all this police activity you're hearing about a mass shooting I mean it, it, you know your emotions dealing with this oh it's it's very scary when it's just right there on your doorstep because you you can see a billion news reports about shooting about emergency instances and it still doesn't make it real to you but I think it, it's a it's real for a lot of people right now and there's a lot of people still affected by this they're still looking and it's it's been a few hours at this point or about an hour and a half it's just insane and it it's 
it's still sinking in. It's still crazy. And, and tell me, is it as a fairly large business park? Um, are there multiple ways in and out? I mean, I don't know how familiar you are with that, you know, particular area. Well, at least with that up there, there's really only out Spazusha there and out Spazusha there. And really, there's only three main ways of getting in and out, at least right here. And it's just blocked everything off. You know, and they're still, of course, looking in the forest area for investigation purposes. And, yeah, I've, I've been told that stay in the safe area, but I've been told different things about what's the safe area. And I'm, I've essentially been told I can't go back to my apartment, too. So everyone, I think a lot of cars here are just stuck. There's been trucks there for at least 40 minutes. Yeah, we saw and those 18 wheelers yeah. on Spasusha here that have just stopped so, on the side of the road. Not only is this scary, but it's really halted a lot of things that people were meant to do and trying to do today. And it's it's been, it, it, is, uh, it is infuriating a little, not only that you know, there's a mass shooter, but that everything's just kind of stopped up like this. And we've talked today about how uh, unfortunately familiar this area has been with some high-profile shootings, the one at the Panera uh, not that long ago, and just last year, the workplace shooting just to our south here with uh, a manhunt that lasted hours. I mean, uh, your thoughts that, that this community, this Harford County community, is going through something like this again? Uh, well, I think it's a matter of, I, I did hear quite a bit about the Panera shooting, and I just think it's something where it's usually such a, a small place, it's usually really quiet. I, I just think there's a, a lot of people that they see it on on TV and they try to emulate it so maybe it's it's that a lot of people feel like they're wanting to cause a stir again with that and I feel like with the warehouse situation I know a lot of people feel like they're overworked maybe it has something to do with that I have no idea and we're still waiting to hear details about the motive about the investigation all that is fluid right here but uh, I want to ask you as well you said you know you're not sure if you can get back to where you live so what are you going to do well I'm trying to get to work <laughs> I'm just gonna wait and see where the safe areas or what areas they say are safe I'm gonna try to walk there and I'm trying to you know just uh, get to work on time or as close as on time as I can get uh, as a lot of people are trying to do right now and I'm I'm sure that a lot of people are scared because this you know is right on their doorstep and this usually doesn't happen at this kind of level anywhere usually like in in smaller towns here in Harford County. Thank you, Colleen. I certainly appreciate you taking time no, no to thing. share your thoughts with us and uh, give us uh, some perspective on this area as we try to gather more information. We'll uh, send it back to you on TV Hill. All right, Mike, thanks so much. You know, Mike mentioned the Harford, the other shooting in Harford County at a Panera. We mm -hmm. also had the shooting in Edgewood, and now this one. We're going to go now to Rick Ritter, uh, who is on the scene now. And Rick just uh, tweeted a short time ago that there were several ambulances and a media staging area. And Rick, if you can uh, hear me, we understand that there is going to be a press conference at 1145 as yep. they continue to gather information. What are you seeing, and where are you exactly? So as you mentioned, we're at the media staging area. This is Old Philadelphia Road and Short Lane Road. We were just told that we are expected to get an update around 1145 on the shooting where we know multiple people have been shot. Just coming up here and driving up here from the Baltimore area along 95, we saw several unmarked police cars racing up with their sirens on, with their lights on. And then when we came around Spasusha Road, which is obviously where the shooting took place, right around that area, that part was blocked off and multiple cars were trying to get in there in terms of authorities and police vehicles. But again, this is the media staging area, Chopper 13. They were over the scene around this area a short time ago. Might currently still be up there right now. But we saw an ambulance from Habit to Grace leaving this scene a short time ago, racing by us. Again, just a lot of unmarked vehicles in terms of police cars trying to get to that scene. But we know we're getting a media update around 1145, trying to get more information. You know, Mike Helgren was talking about it a little bit earlier. It's hard not to come up here. And Jess, you had mentioned it too. And think about the previous horrific shootings that we've had in this area. That workplace shooting at Advanced Grand 
kind of solutions that took place almost a year ago, uh, literally about seven miles away from here. So obviously still waiting for a lot more information to unfold, but we are expected to get an update around 1145, get some more information on this horrific incident that took place. It's also important to put out here, I know that Governor Larry Hogan has been briefed on this shooting. Hogan putting out a tweet a short time ago calling it horrific, saying that the state is standing by ready to assist in any way possible. But as far as this media staging here, or staging area here, very quiet, other than those police vehicles racing by and the ambulance that we saw race by here a short time ago. But we are expected to get an update here in less than an hour. But for now, we'll send it back to you. It's interesting if you can stand by for just a minute. This shooting uh, follows the other shooting incidents that just occurred yesterday, one in Wisconsin, mm. uh, another one in Pennsylvania, another one at a retirement community in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the Capitol Gazette shooting, and it, you know, not to bring up these horrific situations, but it is. It's happening too often mm -hmm. and so frequently. And again, Mike, it's an it, eerie reminder. Mike and Rick were in the same spot, like he said, seven miles away. A pattern we do not want to see here. Again, we have a live chopper picture for you over the scene here. Reports of several people shot and hurt in Harford County. The ATF on the scene, the Sheriff's Department, FBI, all trying to figure out exactly what happened this morning. They responded to calls around 9.06. We just heard from um, a young lady with Mike Helgren, Colleen. She says it was just a regular day. She lives in the area. It was a normal day, and then chaos, right? All broke out. Um, so we're just, we're just trying to get more information as it becomes available to us. We do know that there are multiple victims. Mm -hmm. Mike Helgren reported that some of them have been taken to Delaware. The closest hospital would be Christiana. Uh, others taken to shock trauma. It's unclear who was taken where, how many victims. That witness that Mike spoke with just a short time ago said that she saw at least a dozen emergency mm -hmm. vehicles or ambulances uh, near the Scene. Again, we're just trying to confirm where exactly this took place. We do know in a business park, we know that people are being asked to avoid the area. We also know that area schools in Harford County are on lockdown, and we're trying to get that information to parents as well. And traffic is tight. Sharon, we spoke to her multiple times this morning. Uh, 40 is going to be tight, 95 is going to be tight. A lot of road closures are going to be in the way. Uh, again, she reminded people not to rush to the scene, not to try to go out there if you need to contact someone that's in the area especially at a school or a business, to do so via the telephone or social media, um, so not to complicate the already chaotic and active area. Right. The Harford County Sheriff's Department is saying that the situation is still very fluid. It's unclear right now. We don't have any information about the suspect or where that suspect may be. They're asking that people avoid that area. You can see this shot from uh, Chopper 13, and we are being told that they're only allowed to get so close mm -hmm. because of that area. Area. They need to keep the uh, the skies clear as they continue to investigate, and that's so that the police choppers can get where they need to go as well. And they need to be able to do that because they're still trying to get as much information as possible and trying to make sure that the people that are hurt, the victims in this case, are in the hospital, can make it to the hospital. Again, live look for you from Chopper 13 over the scene right now. Yeah, and as Rick mentioned earlier and Mike, you know, this is just not too far from... Um, you know, the last scene that we covered, uh, as Rick mentioned, it was just a year ago uh, when there were three workers who were killed at an Edgewood facility. And then Rick, uh, <coughs> just kind of refresh it for us, um, Roddy Prince then went up 95 and there was another shooting in Delaware. Mm -hmm. And so that's a concern, of course, where this suspect may be in today's incident. And Jess, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I just spoke with the authorities literally one minute ago and they tell us the suspect has not been taken into custody yet. So it's still an active search for the suspect. They say it's not an active shooting situation anymore, but that the suspect has not been taken into custody yet. And that's certainly a concern. Where did the suspect flee to? Where's he at? Is there anybody else that is involved with this? But as far as the media staging area goes, which is where we're at right now, Old Philadelphia Road and Short Lane Road, it's very quiet over here, but about 20 minutes ago it wasn't. We saw an ambulance from having a great race by where we were. I actually tweeted that out a little while ago. Also riding up here from the Baltimore area along 95, we saw several unmarked police cars with their sirens and lights speeding up here to Hartford County trying to get to the scene. And then Spasusha Road, which is currently blocked off in Chopper 13, was over that area or still is over that area right now, which is where the shooting took place. Uh, we saw several unmarked police cars trying to get into that area as well, obviously trying to do what they can to help with this investigation. But you bring up the two previous shootings that 
we had here, uh, of course, the one in Bel Air a couple years ago at Panera Bread with the deputies from Hartford County. Then the one literally almost a year ago that took place at Advanced Granite Solutions, that horrific workplace shooting. And you had mentioned when you ride up here and you get here, and even for me, just to be sitting here right now, it's hard not to think about those shootings and hard to believe that here we are again, literally less than a year later and a possible another workplace shooting, which is what the report initially came out as. We know multiple people shot and we are expected to get an update here around 1145 with more information on this tragedy. But again, authorities just told me a short time ago that suspect has not been taken into custody yet. Jess, Nicole. Rick, stand by for just a minute. We just want to update uh, any parents who are concerned. Church Creek Elementary School has been placed on a modified lockdown. Uh, fortunately, as we mentioned, this is an industrial or business park. Uh, there isn't a school in the immediate vicinity, but they are doing that at Church Creek Elementary out of an abundance of caution because that would probably be the closest one in proximity to where the shooting occurred. And Rick, as you mentioned, that suspect okay. has not been caught. Uh, so they don't know exactly where he or she may be at this point. What are you hearing about the uh, possible media briefing? Are they still, I imagine, gathering information on the suspect and the victims as well? Jess, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear if you were talking to me right there. We're trying to fix the battery on the DeGero. But yes, we know the media briefing, 1145. And I heard from authorities literally just minutes ago, and they said this suspect has not been taken into custody yet. But wanted to point out, this is not still an active shooter situation. The shooting has ended, but the search for the suspect, for the alleged shooter, continues. And of course, in a situation like this, you have to wonder, is this uh, you know, one individual acting like this? Was there multiple people involved? That information we don't know yet, but we are expected to get an update here in less than an hour, and hopefully iron out some of these details. But as far as this area goes, specifically the media staging area is pretty quiet right now, but still a little while ago we saw one ambulance race by the scene. And just coming up here from the Baltimore area, we keep reiterating the massive amounts of unmarked police cars that were literally racing up 95 with their sirens and lights trying to get to this scene. There's a couple of homes by here in terms of some neighborhoods that are nearby. Obviously a lot of people that are starting to circulate out and trying to figure out what's going on. Of course they're worried and as you mentioned, whether they have children or not, whether those kids are in school right now. So a lot of concern in this area, but still a lot of details that have not yet been released. All right, Rick, thank you so much. And uh, we'll keep coming back to you in the next few minutes ahead of that media briefing. Uh, Kimberly Eaton is on the way. And also, Governor Larry Hogan just sent out another tweet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's interesting when we're covering the stories, we're getting so much information At via one time. social media. Yes. So he just tweeted out that MDSP is on the scene assisting the Hartford Sheriff's Department and, of course, still standing by ready to offer any additional support. As we've been telling you, the ATF was on the scene, FBI as well, to help the Sheriff's Office. And the key piece of information that... Okay. This is someone who lives in Aberdeen who had a similar shooting, again, that you've been mentioning, Jess and Rick, two years ago. They say it's quite odd that they both happened so close and so close to the Aberdeen Proving Grounds. Right. And I think the key piece of information that Rick just gave us was that they're still looking for the suspect. Right, and we just don't know at this point. They don't know. We had some concerns about area schools, but again, uh, fortunately, because this is a business park, the schools are not very close to the location, but if you are just tuning in, Church Creek Elementary School is on a modified lockdown. There is no threat to the school at this point, but that is out of an abundance of precaution. And again, if you do have children there, Church Creek Elementary School, as Sharon mentioned, sometimes it's almost safer mm -hmm. to have them there because we don't know where the suspect is. Police are rerouting people around that area. Several roads are closed. Mm -hmm. And again, we are waiting for that 1145 media briefing so that we know exactly where this took place. Absolutely. And the witness that Mike Halgren spoke with was saying the same thing. There's, sh there's only three ways in and out in that area. So right. everything is jammed tight uh, with emergency crews trying to get to the scene, trying to get people out of there to the hospital. Um, so that area, again, the traffic is tight. Things are moving quickly and they're asking people to avoid the area. If you're just joining us, this is um, south of Aberdeen, Pasusha Road, Perryman Road, a shooting in the area. Multiple people have been shot, as Mike told us earlier. People are at shock trauma and in Delaware at the hospital as well. Harford County Fire and EMS is tweeting um, out right now that they are working a shooting incident at the Rite Aid Distribution Center in Aberdeen. We are working to confirm that, but that is per the fire department in Harford County, Harford County EMS. Uh, we know that this is in the uh, business district, but we are still waiting to confirm it exactly which business, but that is per the fire department. 
Okay. okay, and what you're looking at is people being evacuated on buses. That's right, we don't know where they're going. We do know they're getting on those buses to get out of the area. Again, we've, we were told this area has been very tight since those calls came in. Of course, trying to get the emergency vehicles in and out. So that's what you're looking at right now. We want to check back in with Rick. He is on the scene right now. Rick, can you tell us what you're seeing? Okay, we're having trouble. Um, we are confirming that multiple people well, they're saying multiple people have been shot. Mm -hmm. um, it's unclear if they are fatal. Uh, Congressman Dutch Ruppersberger tweeting out that he's monitoring the shooting in Aberdeen, asking folks to avoid the area and uh, praying for victims and their loved ones. Uh, Rick, you had mentioned a short time ago that police are saying that no more shots are being fired, but they are still looking for a suspect. And also, I'm wondering if you got that update as well from Harford County Fire. Yup, that's exactly, Jess and Nicole, that's exactly what I'm looking at right now. The Hartford County Fire and EMS tweeting out literally moments ago that this shooting took place at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. So we now know that multiple people have been shot at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. And I want to go to Chopper 13 because they're over that scene right now. What looks like employees being evacuated out of that warehouse and being put on the school buses. Now, again, this is new information we were just told moments ago by Hartford County Fire and EMS who tweeted out that this incident took place at the Rite Aid Distribution Center, and that's where multiple people were shot. Uh, the media staging area, that's exactly where we are right now at Old Philadelphia Road and Short Lane Road. We're expected to get an update here now in about 35 minutes to get some more information on this shooting. But the new information, the biggest detail that just unfolded here moments ago, this shooting took place at the Rite Aid Distribution Center of the warehouse in Chopper 13 over that scene where multiple people are being evacuated. We know multiple people shot. We saw an ambulance race by where we are literally about 15 to 20 minutes ago, and authorities tell us they are still searching for the suspect at this hour. They say no arrests have been made, and that suspect is not yet in custody. So we're going to get a whole lot more information when this media uh, availability takes place in literally less than 35 minutes now. We'll start to piece together this horrific situation. All right, Rick, and I just pulled up their Facebook page, the Rite Aid distribution page, and I'm looking at comments from employees. Mm -hmm. um, there are several people taking to their Facebook page uh, and saying that um, either they are inside or nearby. Uh, it's still unclear at this point. We did see those buses taking people out. Mm -hmm. And something else that I just read, they said as many as a thousand people work at that distribution center. So we're trying to get more information about that as well. We know that the victims were taken to Delaware as well as here in Maryland. Let's go back to Mike Halgren. Yes, he's on the scene for us. Mike, can you update us so far what you're seeing? Yes. So we moved a little bit closer. We've been talking about that Rite Aid distribu Distribution Center. Here it is. I'm just across the street here. You can see the massive police presence. I've seen uh, FBI, ATF, people in military uniforms. I see some ATF, uh, people with ATF vests just behind me here. Uh, just a massive police presence. This is where uh, Spasusha Road uh, ends right at this distribution center. There's a cemetery across the street here. You can see the roads are blocked off. We're looking at video from Chopper 13, uh, an active scene. Uh, we mentioned how those school buses were helping to evacuate people. Um, those school buses came in here on Spasusha Road when we were live just a few minutes ago. They were empty, uh, brought them up here to the scene, to the Rite Aid distribution center. We're trying to evacuate people from the scene. We also saw saw uh, a Honda that was at this corner and it had crime tape around it and police towed that away probably uh, within the past 10 minutes. We don't know if that vehicle was connected to the scene. Um, now. Just a few moments ago, we talked to a woman who lives and works in this area about what it has been like, what is she is seeing, here she is. It's very scary when it's just right there on your doorstep because you you can see a billion news reports about shooters, about emergency instances, and it still doesn't make it real to you. But I think it, it's, a, it's real for a lot of people right now, and there's a lot of people still affected by this. They're still looking, and it's it's been a few hours at this point, or about an hour and a half. It's just insane, and it, it's, it's still sinking in. It's still crazy.
So she lives in this area. She can't go back to her home while this is still um, an active situation here. A lot of places are blocked off here still. We just saw some more state police cruisers coming in here to the scene. And now they're, uh, well, there's a backhoe um, that they're is passing through this area, but but this is the entrance to the Rite Aid Distribution uh, Center, the Enterprise Business Park. It says here on the set, on the sign, and this is where Spasusha Road ends. This is where at 9:06 this morning, those first calls came in for help and police later confirmed that this was a mass shooting incident here in Harford County. We saw them tow away one car from the scene. We don't know more than that. They are going to release more information just about a half hour from now when they hold a press conference, 1145 this morning, but it has been nerve wracking for the people who live and work in this area and uh, we don't know the extent of injuries to those victims, but we did see multiple ambulances leaving the scene, taking those victims to trauma centers in the area, and uh, we're continuing to see police arrive with flashing lights here at the scene, as this is still a fluid and open investigation right here, where they have local police agencies from around the area and federal help in the form of the ATF and FBI. We expect to hear more details about possible weapons, how this unfolded, uh, whether they know any motive. There are a lot of questions that still need to be answered in this and they need to uh, make sure that this area is safe so they go meticulously through any buildings if need be to make sure that it's all clear. I'm seeing a number of ATF agents just across the street here right now on the scene here in what is an active situation here in Harford County on Spasusha Road just across the street from the Enterprise Business Park where this continues to unfold and again we'll get that briefing from police at 11 45, where they'll be able to fill in a few more gaps in exactly what unfolded here just after 9 o'clock this morning. Back to you on TV Hill. You know, Mike, you had mentioned uh, that they have to comb through this building. I'm looking at this right now. It says that this uh, facility is 959,000 square feet. Now, it's unclear exactly where the shooting occurred, but we're looking live from Chopper 13, and you can see just how enormous this facility is. And with a thousand or more employees having to be bussed out. This is going to take quite some time. It, it is. Uh, we saw, I believe, three to four school buses, empty Harford County school buses, that came to the scene here just about the top of the hour. Um, and as we mentioned, we believe those were evacuating employees uh, from the building. But we don't we, we we don't know exactly where this shooting happened. And so, as they fill in more details about that, and you know, we'll alert the the public that that there's an all clear here. Uh, we don't know, you know, what exactly that. They, they may have to search through, but typically when something like this happens, if it happens inside a building, as we saw in the mass shooting last year, they had to go meticulously through that building every inch to make sure that it was safe for people. But again, we're still waiting for details on how this shooting unfolded and about the number of victims and the extent of their injuries here. So as we look here across the scene, you can see this is the entrance to the Enterprise Business Park yeah. here in Harford County, Spasusha Road. You can see the active police presence here. We're going to get more details in just a few minutes uh, as to exactly more on what happened, but this is still early in this investigation. Um, I mean, it's good news that they have the power of the federal government here with the FBI and ATF that can provide those extra resources to the Harford County Sheriff's Office as they try to get to the bottom of what happened here. Back to you. All right, Mike, thank you. And we also want to caution, you know, we're following a lot of this on social media and not all of the reports that are coming through are correct. So we are only going to report exactly what we're hearing from police. We are awaiting that media briefing, which should occur in about a half hour, give or take. Rick Ritter is live at the scene there, Mike Helgren as well. Right. I, I think it's very important at this point to only go with information that we can validate. And so all we're saying at this time is that there are, it is a active scene and there are multiple victims. That's all we know at this time officially. And here's a tweet from the Harford County Fire and EMS. Yep. 
Fire units are working on a shooting incident at the Rite Aid Distribution Center in Aberdeen. Our understanding is there were several people shot. The scene is still very fluid. We do know that several area roads are also closed. That media staging area is where Rick is now, and we're waiting to hear from them. All right, and again, um, Governor Larry Hogan has sent state police there uh, to assist with the Harford uh, County Sheriff's Department. Uh, the governor saying we stand ready to offer any additional support needed. There is tremendous response to this shooting scene, of course. And then also, uh, Kurt Saber tweeted this out. He lives in Aberdeen. He said Aberdeen had a similar shooting two years ago. Uh, he's referring to the Edgewood shooting and also the Panera shootings. Um, it's quite odd that they both happened so close and so close to Aberdeen Proving Ground, which, as we know, is very safe and very well protected. Um, let's go back out live to Rick Ritter, who is in that media staging area. And Rick, we were just talking about how eerie it is that you were just there not too long ago. And well, how less than a year. Yeah. Yeah, less than a year ago, and uh, and just that 95 corridor uh, is very important for police to monitor where that suspect could be. Well, just Denise, I want to get to some new information that just came in literally moments ago. Sources have confirmed to the Associated Press that multiple people have been killed in this workplace shooting. Again, literally just moments ago, the Associated Press saying that sources tell that multiple people have been killed in this workplace shooting at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. So we know it took place around 9 o'clock this morning off Spasusha Road, right in that area. Chopper 13 was over that scene when multiple people, about dozens or so, really, I should say hundreds, being evacuated from that building, a building where more than a thousand employees worked, and we now know that multiple people were killed in this horrific shooting. That new information literally coming in just moments ago. Uh, we're expected to get an update here now about 20 minutes or so. Uh, this is the media staging area, Old Philadelphia Road and Short Lane Road, where we're expected to try and piece together this horrific tragedy and what took place. Now, jumping back to the other tragedy, literally almost a year ago, that took place about seven miles away from here, so really a uh, while to say the least about these two shootings taking place literally so close. Obviously, that one at Advanced Granite Solutions taking place at a much smaller workplace, really only about 20 or 30 employees with that. This situation a whole lot more scarier when you have a 1,000 employees or so inside a distribution center where shots rang out and where multiple people we know have now been killed. But we are expected to get an update here within about 20 minutes or so. We know Governor Larry Hogan, he put out some information saying that the state is standing by, ready to assist in any way possible. He called this a horrific incident that took place, but we now know multiple people killed in this shooting, and we're expected to get an update here within the next 20 minutes or so. Rick, it's interesting. We were talking about Edgewood. We were also talking about Panera. Since March in Maryland, we've had Great Mills, the Capital Gazette, and now this. Well, yes, these are clearly volatile and explosive times. We do want to say, although what Rick is saying is correct, we are saying that this information comes from AP, a reporter at AP, who is citing an official as a source that there are multiple victims. If you know someone who lives or who, excuse me, who works in that area and you're concerned about them, we do not have any numbers in terms of victims. We don't have any identities in terms of victims. At this point, AP, an AP reporter is citing an official as a source of saying that there are fatalities in this uh, mass shooting. Um, clearly extremely distressing for anyone who works there, lives around there, or knows someone who works there. Right. We are also uh, seeing some reports. We don't know how this person was connected, but it may have been a man or a woman. Uh, we don't know much about this suspect. We're waiting to hear from police in about 25 minutes. Again, uh, some of the victims have been taken to Maryland hospitals and some have been taken up to Delaware because of the close proximity the to uh, to Delaware. That would be Christiana, I believe, would be the closest hospital uh, to Aberdeen and near Aberdeen Proving Ground. And this is just south of Aberdeen. You're looking live at the school buses that are taking some of the employees from that Rite Aid Distribution Center. We're told there are about 1,000 employees there, and the building is about 959,000 square feet, so an incredibly, incredibly large space. Yeah, we're going to go back to Mike Kelgren now, who is uh, outside of the vicinity, um, uh, awaiting, as we all are, official word from law enforcement. Um, once again, I want to say that the reports that there are multiple victims uh, are being cited by an AP reporter who says that they got that information from an, a law enforcement official who 
wants to remain anonymous. So although we absolutely trust the validity of an AP reporter, we want to um, qualify that information for those of you who are extremely understandably distressed if you know someone who works there and is concerned. We are the last, we the media are the last right. priority for law enforcement right now, but they are going to, within the hour we are told, give us some sort of official statement, which we will carry, of course, live. But uh, we're now seeing again, uh, it looks like a medevac. state medevac. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, yeah. it, it's very distressing for people at home, I know, to hear things like, multiple mass shooting, multiple victims. But let's go to Mike Helgren. Mike? You have some new information, sure. Mike. Denise, right? the medevac helicopter is just over my head. Uh, I, there was another one landing here. We saw two Harford County public school buses. They brought them in empty just at the top of the hour, uh, taking people out, heading out of the business park, followed by a number of police officers. And the AP, as you have been mentioning, and I want to read the exact bulletin, uh, at 11:10 uh, a.m., an official says multiple people have been killed in a shooting in Harford County, Maryland. The law enforcement official has knowledge of the shooting but wasn't authorized to discuss details by name and spoke on condition of anonymity to the Associated Press. The Harford County Sheriff's Office tweeted there was a shooting Thursday morning that involves multiple victims here. So the medevac helicopter helicopter is overhead here. Uh, the, there was another one uh, we believe was landing there. We're monitoring the situation on the ground, but also from Chopper 13. And then three school buses filled with people from this business park. Um, they were just taken out of the main entrance here, which is where we are located on Spasusha Road, followed by uh, a number of law enforcement vehicles just leaving the scene here in Harford County. But uh, again, we're waiting for official word on any fatalities from the Harford County Sheriff's Office at their press briefing, which is scheduled at 1145. So a fluid scene here uh, outside this Rite Aid uh, Business Park, Enterprise Business Park, and still law enforcement officials or officers arriving here at the scene. Um, again, the Associated Press report is that multiple people have been killed in this shooting in Harford County. I see um, a state police spokesman just uh, here at the scene, uh, just across the street, uh, but uh, we're, we're thinking that Harford County Sheriff's Office leading this investigation will be providing that briefing uh, as uh, we get more. Oh, and you can see from our live camera here on the ground, I'm watching the medevac chopper just a few uh, feet in front of me as it goes, uh, as it goes down. Uh, uh, here, um, just off Spasusha Road, uh, that chopper is landing now here at the scene. Uh, we don't know how this situation unfolded, if there perhaps are more victims inside that they're trying to rescue, seriously injured victims, um, and, and that medevac would need to transport to a trauma center here. But we're watching that chopper land uh, uh, at this business park, at this enterprise business park right now. Um, and moments ago, we saw them evacuate three busloads of people uh, before the, the chopper, uh, which circled around us, is now landing here at the business park, where, according to the Associated Press, multiple people are dead after a shooting uh, that unfolded just after 9 well, o'clock this morning Mike, with those emergency calls first coming in then. Sorry to interrupt you, Mike, but I just there has been an update from AP. Again, this is the sources AP, that when we say multiple dead, they are now saying saying three people are dead in this shooting. Uh, there may be many more injured, but according to the AP, there, are, there have been deaths and three people are dead. We, um, they're not saying, obviously, identities of those people or whether a suspect is among them. Um, this event happened over two hours ago, and the fact that a medevac has just landed again means that either they have, um, in their search of this facility, found another victim, or there has been a, a, a dramatic development within the last um, hour or so, because uh, it just, as you've, we've been watching live, landed just now.
Sure. We also know that the suspect is not yet in custody. We are getting some reports about that suspect, but again, we're waiting for confirmation from police. Uh, Mike told us earlier today that some of the victims have been transported to Delaware. The closest trauma center is, in fact, at Christiana. The other closest trauma center would be uh, shock trauma. And then, of course, we have Upper Chesapeake Medical, Hospital, or Medical Center as well. Uh, so several areas nearby where victims could have been transported. But as Denise mentioned, and yes, three have been confirmed dead at this point, according to the Associated Press. However, there may be many more victims, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Again, at this point, we aren't getting much information about the suspect. We don't know if that suspect worked at that facility. We do know about a 1,000 people are employed there. Uh, that facility is incredibly large in that business park. Also, Denise, we should mention, if you're just tuning in, Church Creek Elementary is on a lockdown, but that is out of an abundance of cost. That would be the closest school to that area, but of course that's just because the police, uh, we don't know, we're still waiting for information on that suspect. So it's unclear if they're looking for the suspect, if they have that suspect, or what. All right, we will uh, continue to cover this live. Uh, again, the latest information, a mass shooting, an active scene, three people dead. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. Well, if you're expecting uh, your regular programming, we are interrupting it all this morning to follow, if you're just joining us, a shooting that has taken place this morning at about 9.06 at an industrial park in Harford County. You are looking live at the scene right now at what we believe is a Rite Aid distribution center. This is where we believe the shooting took place. Uh, what we know now is that the, it is an active scene. There are multiple victims. It is being called a mass shooting, and at this time, we believe three people have been confirmed dead in this shooting. That is what we know at this time. We're going to go back to Rick Ritter. And Rick, we were talking about this in Edgewood. That was just 11 months ago where three Marylanders were killed in that incident less than 10 miles away. Harford County has dealt with an insane amount of grief, for a lack of better words, here over the past couple of years. As you mentioned, that shooting taking place literally about 11 months ago at Advanced Granite Solutions, an area, or excuse me, a workplace that had only about 20 or 30 employees or so. This shooting taking place at the Rite Aid Distribution Center with more than 1,000 employees. And Denise and Jess, you both had mentioned the new information that just came in moments ago from the Associated Press. They are now reporting and contributing to a source that three people have been killed in this shooting. Again, we now know that three people were killed in the short in the shooting. That, according to the Associated Press, who is citing a source. This all took place around nine o'clock this morning off of Spasusha Road at the Rite Aid Distribution Center, Chopper 13. Over that scene just a little while ago, and we saw dozens or hundreds of employees being evacuated from that warehouse and being put on the buses. So obviously a scary, scary situation, and we're still trying to piece together all this information as it unfolds. We're live right now at the media staging area. This is Old Philadelphia Road, Short Lane Road, probably about a mile, maybe two, from where this shooting took place, and we are expected to get an update here within the next 15 minutes. Now, a little while ago, I was told that a suspect has not been taken into custody yet, although there are some reports circulating that are suggesting different but authorities say right now they cannot say whether that suspect has been taken into custody and hopefully we're going to get that information or an update on that within the next 15 minutes or so. Yeah, I think what you're saying is, uh, what, what you're saying we can verify, Rick, which is a mass shooting and three dead. Seems like this. There's a lot of panic. There's a lot of emotion in the community as, as is entirely understandable. And so information starts getting spread like crazy. So we're going to stick with what we can verify. Um, and we, according to an AP, a uh, reporter who has an, a law enforcement source, three people are dead. And we do know it is still being called an active scene. So beyond that, they may themselves still be gathering information. We know that Hartford no, County Sheriff's Office there, no. FBI uh, from Baltimore Field Office uh, is tweeting out that it is responding, as well as uh, the ATF, uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives. Their agents are responding as well, as well as state police. The governor sends state police there as, as well. So this is a very massive,
massive location and you have a law, an army of law enforcement there right now. And I imagine that as we say in these scenes, that, well, take a look right there. You have, uh, looks like National Guard. Um, you have a tremendous search going on right now for any victims and or a suspect. We're also waiting to hear from Aberdeen police uh, regarding this shooting in Perryman. They're saying that they are working on a staging area for families to be reunited. That information is forthcoming. We will bring you that information as quickly as possible. We're going to go now to uh, Nicole, who is standing by in the queue, because as Denise and I mentioned, so much of this information is being filtered in through social media, and that's how the police, uh, the ATF, and the uh, fire department are also providing information to the media as well, so we can convey that information to you. Nicole, what are you seeing? Well, Jess and Denise, a lot of information is coming in, especially with the new updates. We're seeing people marking themselves safe on Twitter. We also have a tweet from Scott Wilson. He says, I can't even put into words how I feel about the active shooter in Aberdeen, my hometown. I'm hurt and angry that this keeps happening and I'm afraid of how close they're getting but to some people this still won't be a wake-up call making me even more angry we also have a tweet up from the governor Larry Hogan who says we are closely monitoring the horrific shooting in Aberdeen our prayers are with all of those impacted including our first responders and of course the state standing by ready to offer any support now if you're in the area if you know anyone in the area we do have a hashtag that we're using on WJZ's platforms be on WJZ is what we're using if you send us any pictures any videos any information that you have that we can utilize and help the information get out to people that's how you can do it Denise. all right thank you Nicole yeah I can imagine this is a, a massive warehouse situation so you have a lot of employees we don't have numbers yet on how many people work in that area but I'm sure it's in the hundreds and all of those family yes, members are at home right now uh, worried and and understandably so so as soon as we get any verifiable information about identities or numbers we will bring it to you we promise uh, live as we will re remain on that scene with our uh, th at least three reporters we have there now right I just saw a short time ago Denise I think this was before you joined us about a thousand employees there yeah and understandable so look at the size of that massive massive uh, insulation there right more than 900,000 square feet feet uh, facility and there are about three different right aid uh, distribution centers in this area um, or I should say on the East Coast um, and this is one of the largest so they house uh, all sorts of they said medicines uh, medications rather mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in all different parts so as Mike was explaining they have to comb through every area uh, let's go back to Mike for more on that Mike mm -hmm. Well, we've also, Jessica, just learned that a number of patients were taken to Hopkins Bayview, and they're going to hold a press conference at 1230, and we're going to be covering that, as well as at uh, 1145, so just 10 minutes from now, Harford County Sheriff's Office is going to be holding a briefing. We saw an ATF canine uh, going into the scene. We also saw some ATF agents with large weapons going into the scene, and there's a semi right now that I'm watching as it comes out of the entrance to the center. This is uh, 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 the first uh, vehicle that uh, is not a police vehicle that we know uh, that I have seen leaving the scene here. Um, you can see still a large law enforcement presence as that semi leaves the business park here. About, oh, I'd say 10 minutes ago, we saw the medevac chopper land. Um, so we don't know if they're trying to help out victims uh, we have not seen that chopper leave at this point. So you see the semi uh, there leaving the business park here um, in Harford County. And uh, you also see um, this is an, uh, another police vehicle uh, behind it um, as police have, uh, have blocked off this scene, secure scene. But a lot of federal agents here, and I may have lost, I may have lost my audio, uh, my IFB connection to you. But uh, again, we're waiting waiting for a briefing in about oh, it's about 10 minutes here. I hear you again there. Um, so, oh, there you see the rescue vehicle, Har Harford County rescue vehicle, uh, armored looking vehicle here, and the Harford County Sheriff's Office uh, vehicles behind it. 
there's a, a whole contingent here uh, coming in, um, four different vehicles, including um, a militarized vehicle that is heading to the entrance here of this Rite Aid Distribution Center on Spasusha Road, four different vehicles. Uh, we saw that medevac chopper land just a few moments ago, and that is still here on the scene, but again, they're bringing in more vehicles, a militarized vehicle here, according to the Associated Press, just to repeat from their sources, three people dead here. Uh, we're still waiting to hear more information about the suspect here, but you can see this is still an active scene as this contingent of vehicles heads into the uh, business park here, the scene where the shooting happened just about two and a half hours ago. Uh, again, three people dead here on the scene, a briefing, that's according to the AP, a briefing to come in just a few minutes and still an active scene as more law enforcement officers head here. I see another four, five, six, seven vehicles. Just They're just coming and coming here on Spasusha Road uh, here at the entrance to the facility here. So, um, you know, it looks like something has happened. We don't know what. Um, we don't know the status of the suspect or suspects here. We're waiting to hear more information officially from the sheriff's office. But again, a large contingent of law enforcement officers here at the scene. And we'll continue to monitor the situation here uh, on Spasusha Road. Well, we were looking, uh, while you were talking, Mike, we were looking live at a, um, a staging area, looks like in front of one of the buildings, as though law enforcement is about to enter that building. As we know from these situations, they have to take every precaution. They have no idea if there are explosives left behind. They, uh, we don't know. The no. suspect could still be inside. If the suspect is inside, which, which area of which building? So, yeah, that's why there's this enormous presence, because they have to deal with a facility that is going to, to until the situation is under control, a facility that takes people at every entrance and uh, scouring every inch. And uh, as of 11:25, it was still being called an active shooter scene, which means um, if there is a suspect who has been arrested, we have not been informed, and we have no way of telling you that that has happened uh, in a verifiable. Even though there are rumors out there, we have no way of saying yes, somebody is in custody. As far as we know, this is still an active scene, and as we look at it, that's exactly how it appears. Right. And Mike, we're going to stay with you. If if you can for just a minute. If somebody is just tuning in, sure. we are awaiting a press conference from police. Tell us exactly what's going on. Reset the scene for us, if you will. All right, 9.06 this morning, the first calls came in for a shooting here at this Rite Aid Distribution Center, which is on Spasusha Road in Harford County, about 10 minutes from where that workplace shooting happened last year. They're familiar, unfortunately, with dealing with things like this. The Associated Press first reported that there were multiple fatalities, then provided some more details that there were three people dead, citing an anonymous law enforcement source. We are still waiting for official word from the Harford County Sheriff's Office. They are keeping people back from the actual business park. However, uh, you can see that uh, they have a large law enforcement presence here, including federal agents from the ATF and the FBI who are here investigating. Uh, just about 10 or so minutes ago, we saw the medevac touch down here, and that was after they had evacuated some people who work here on three Harford County school buses. And then moments ago, you saw it live here on WJZ when a large contingent of law enforcement officers came here, including a militarized vehicle. Um, and what typically happens in situations like this, if something happened in a building, they have to go inch by inch in that building and make sure that it's clear that the threat is gone. Uh, we don't know how many other people may have been injured, although that AP report says three dead. We don't know the extent of other injuries. We don't know how this unfolded or the extent of uh, uh, who they are looking for, if they're looking for any one and multiple suspects, uh, whether that is the case. However, we did see them tow away a, uh, a gray Honda Civic that had crime tape around it that was just right here behind me uh, when we first arrived at the scene. We don't know if that is connected in some way to this, but they towed that away, oh, I'd say about an hour ago uh, from the scene here. And uh, we also have seen multiple law enforcement agencies still arriving here at the scene. And that medevac has not yet, as far as I've been able to hear, uh, because I did hear it was right across the street when it landed. We did not see that 
that medevac uh, chopper take back off. And we know that a number of people are being treated at trauma centers in the area, including at Johns Hopkins Bayview. And they're going to hold a press conference we're hearing around 12.30 today. WJZ will be covering that, uh, where we hope to get more details about that. But there are a number of trauma centers in this area, from Baltimore stretching up to Delaware, that could take these patients. Uh, and uh, we're still waiting on a number of injured and perhaps some just basic details about the severity of those injuries. And a lot of people here, um, some people, are not able to get to where they live. They're concerned. Um, uh, we talked to one woman who said how chaotic it was, uh, how every, it, it seemed like all hell broke loose in those moments after 9 o'clock uh, as police were first responding here en masse and trying to investigate this and figure out what exactly happened here. So again, it appears that just a, a few moments ago, some, there was a lot of activity. Now I'm seeing some, uh, uh, I believe, ATF and, and people in police vests, and uh, one of them has uh, a, a large weapon. As she's uh, walking out of the scene here, just across, we're just across the street from this business park, and uh, we're seeing it looks like a little bit more activity. Uh, a, a number of agents here on the scene. I would say at least uh, three dozen of them here. Uh, and they've got, this is Spasusha Road. This is the entrance to this business park. Um, Hartford well, County Sheriff's Office is going to hold a press conference in just minutes from right. now, Denise. Yeah, that's what I was going to just, sorry to interrupt you, Mike, to, to remind people that, and it does look like they are beginning to convene for some sort of a, an official news conference. Um, in this era, of mass shootings, sadly, we have a new vocabulary, and uh, one of them is fluid. The situation is fluid. I would say that the situation here is fluid. People who live in the vicinity of this industrial park are being urged to not come in the area, to stay out of the area. I know your first instinct, if you know someone who works there and you're frightened, uh, is to go there, but really the best thing to do, as hard as it might be, would be right now to stay where you are and to continue to listen to news sources. Um, and to wait for word on someone that you may be concerned about. Uh, we hope to get you that kind of information in just a few moments when we're supposed to have a news conference uh, with the officials at the scene. Right. Harford County Sheriff also reminding people to follow them and listen to them for any official information. If you have a family member inside, you will be reunited with that family member. We're just trying to determine exactly where that uh, place will be, where that location will be. We saw several school buses taking the employees out of the building. We believe that there are at least a thousand employees that work at that facility. That facility is incredibly large. Police are still combing through that area. Chopper 13 is overhead and it's very difficult for them to get close because as you saw those medevac helicopters as recently as five minutes ago were still landing at that location. Mike also mentioned that some, some of the victims are being taken to Delaware hospitals, Maryland hospitals. We understand now uh, Johns Hopkins Bayview location as well as uh, um, trauma centers. Uh, trauma centers. Yeah. The closest trauma centers would be shock trauma, of course. Also, uh, Christiana has a very good trauma center as well. But remember, there's a lot of information that's still floating around out there, especially regarding the suspect in this case. And we don't want to report incorrect information. At this point, it's unclear whether that suspect is, in fact, in custody. Uh, we do know that the shooting situation has stopped. Right. Um, I, I would say that in this particular instance, to uh, in terms of national media, uh, I would trust your local media because a lot of national media yeah. is reporting things that aren't necessarily correct because they're get, gathering information as quickly as they can. The best word is going to come directly from law enforcement, which is going to happen in just a few mo moments, and that is going to be the, the real information that we can rely on. Unfortunately, we, we do have to say that it seems to be absolutely clear at this point there are fatalities, and the number we have right now is three. But there also were multiple injuries, clearly just because of the response, we can say that. And Denise, you know, we have been talking about this. If this seems oddly familiar, it is. Uh, 11 months ago, we also had this 
Very similar shot uh, mm -hmm. over Edgewood. I mean, and that was, granite, wasn't even a right? year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that was when Roddy Prince shot three employees at Granite Solutions and then went up 95, and there was another shooting in Delaware as well. Uh, we also know that there was the Panera shooting also in Harford County. Um, this one at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. And then since March, uh, a shooting at Great Mills High School and then also the Capitol Gazette here in Maryland. And it's, it's disturbing to continue covering these. Uh, we're going to show you a shot, too. We understand the medevac helicopter is now leaving. We just saw it land a few minutes ago. Uh, where it is heading, it's unclear to us. Again, we're still waiting for that information. That press conference was supposed right. to start about two minutes ago. But, but we know how that goes in these fluid situations. And, you know, we're making assumptions here, but uh, I am making the assumption that if a medevac just landed and is taking off now two and a half hours after the event initially took place, that means either they are discovering more people who are injured or something has developed, something dramatic has developed recently. We're but again, we'll find that out, we hope. Denise, we're getting this too from um, the Rite Aid and the Associated Press spokeswoman, Susan Henderson told the, uh, Susan Henderson would be with Rite Aid, told the Associated Press on Thursday morning the shooting happened at a support facility adjacent to a larger building. Uh, three people, as we know, have been killed. Uh, the law enforcement official has knowledge of the shooting but wasn't authorized to discuss. We're waiting for that officially. But um, so a support facility adjacent to a larger building, as we mentioned, that, that Rite Aid distribution center is quite big. Right. And we don't know. I mean, initially the, the word went out, workplace shooting, but a workplace shooting could mean anything. It could be because of some domestic uh, dispute. It could be because this is a Rite Aid distribution center, a robbery, some form of robbery. We just don't know. There are hundreds and hundreds of unanswered questions right now. The most important, of course, are who are these victims and so that their families can rest easy. Um, who, who is just fine? Who w works here? Who has been evacuated and is just fine? Those are the most important questions we hope to get answers to in uh, the next 10 to 15 minutes um, from law enforcement who have said that they are going to have a news conference at 11.45. Obviously, that can float because they're about as busy as you can imagine any. You any know, one of the things, too, we're getting a lot of reports, and we, t we heard from Nicole Baker just a short time ago saying that people were checking in on Facebook saying that they are okay. I see someone saying that uh, their son works in the main Rite Aid distribution center, uh, which we're being told is still on lockdown. Parts of it are still being on held on lockdown as those employees are being taken out. Um, he works there for, gosh, a decade um, and knows some of the people there. So people are still checking in uh, to, to let loved ones know that they are okay. We still do not have word on that media, on that, uh, excuse me, family reunification center. We are told that within the next five minutes that media briefing will be underway. Rick Ritter has been standing by live there as well. Uh, Rick Ritter and Mike Helgren, this has become all too familiar for them covering these workplace shootings. And Denise, it was a, a good point that you mentioned you know sometimes these are domestic situations and um, it unfortunately occurs at a workplace in other situations it is uh, a shooting where it's a disgruntled employee as we're all aware well, it, yeah anything anything this could be anything at this point we really don't know as I say it's a it's a drug distribution center could have been a robbery we literally know know nothing that we can give you any any information that we can give you that's verifiable at this point except that there are three sadly three people who have uh, lost their lives this morning um, and we have been told that that does not that is not including a suspect those are three victims as far as we know at this point all right let's go back now to Mike Helgren uh, with more and Mike that medevac helicopter has taken off again is that sounds like it's behind you it did uh, it did it, it just it, I just literally like a minute ago it just went up over those trees and flew back over that way so uh, it uh, first landed here uh, roughly 10 to 15 minutes ago um, just the, the course of events from what we're seeing here there were um, several empty Harford County school buses that were brought in here to the business park and then probably about a half hour later we saw those buses uh, filled with people leaving the business park with a number of members of law enforcement and uh, then uh, we saw the medevac chopper land here uh, at a large uh, looked like a large building just right here at the business park just almost across the street from where I am and then um, it was probably 10 or well, there was a, a, a militarized vehicle and a large line of law enforcement that, that, that came in to the business park, to the scene.
and then we saw that medevac chopper take off. Now we're seeing a number of law enforcement vehicles leaving after that medevac chopper took off. And um, as we mentioned from the Associated Press, uh, we heard from a Rite Aid spokeswoman, Susan Henderson, that uh, the, the shooting happened at a support facility adjacent to a larger building here, a support facility adjacent to a larger building here at the scene. So we, we uh, are, are thinking that perhaps there were still some injured in there and so that they, uh, you know, wanted to clear out as many uh, civilians as they could, brought in that uh, medevac chopper, then brought in more law enforcement support, and then that medevac chopper left the scene. And as we were telling you earlier, here in Harford County, where they've dealt with this before, um, they have trained paramedics to come in and deal with these mass shootings so that, um, you know, it's a, it can be a dangerous, active, fluid situation. And uh, they've trained them to be able to work around that and be able to protect their own lives while they're trying to save people so that, you know, someone doesn't bleed to death or, you know, doesn't get who's injured, doesn't get, uh, isn't stuck there while they're. They're waiting for police to clear the building. Sometimes they will bring in those first responders to an area that they believe is reasonably safe to try to get to any victims, and then they can get them quickly triaged and get them out and get them to safety um, before police have totally given the all clear on the, these buildings. And that has saved lives. We saw that they did that in the shooting that happened last year with uh, the workplace shooting involving Roddy Prince, who went on the run and who uh, drove up to Newark, Delaware. And, and, and shot uh, someone there. He still has to go on trial in Maryland, but his uh, trial in Delaware is over. Um, but we saw that they, they had already had that training, and we talked to um, some people with the sheriff's office who had been through that training. So unfortunately, they're well-versed in that. Um, again, that medevac chopper just left here. We're waiting for word on the extent of injuries, but we know there are multiple injured as well who were taken to uh, Christiana, who were taken to Johns Hopkins Bayview, and we're expecting to hear more from at least Johns Hopkins Bayview later on today. Quick question for you. Are you hearing anything? We, I'm getting word that uh, they are telling people to go to Havre de Grace to reunite with family members, uh, but I'm trying to get confirmation on that. Level Fire Company? That may well be true. Um, however, uh, the, actually, the Harford County Sheriff's Office just said that they were a few minutes delayed, um, but that they are they're going to get uh, their briefing underway. So I'm thinking that they'll you know provide more information about that um, uh, when they do their press briefing. Um, all we know from the scene right here is that they evacuated people out. They brought the medevac in. They have a large presence here, and we've seen a lot of ATF agents. Um, uh, who are armed uh, with their vests here. Um, we saw some activity just a few moments ago, um, and we still see a number of police officers standing by here on Spasusha Road, the entrance to this to this uh, distribution center. And from what the Rite Aid is telling us is that the shooting happened at a support facility that is next to a larger building. But they've got to go through here, I'm thinking, and make sure that they, you know, cover every... Uh, every square foot of this so that uh, if, if there is any di risk or danger here that uh, they, uh, you know, that, that this is safe for people. Um, so this is an a still a, a, a developing situation here and police have not stood down yet. I mean, they, you know, you can see from these pictures just how many law enforcement are here um, as this, uh, a, a, a number, uh, the number just has kept growing since this shooting was first reported reported a few minutes after nine o'clock this morning. Uh, it's, um, it's ironic uh, in a terrible way that this would happen again in Harford County because generally Harford County is a, is a very safe county. The Sheriff uh, Gaylor would want everyone to know that. Um, when they lost two deputies, it was the first law enforcement they'd lost in decades. Right. And, um, but this is again a large workplace area. and. Um, you know, there are more guns than people in this country, so these shootings continue to happen. Yeah, it was just 11 months ago uh, that Roddy Prince I shot remember, three employees at Edgewood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also interesting, Denise, that you say that Capital Gazette 
you know, is now following this as well. And they just lost uh, their own employees in a workplace shooting. Uh, this has happened three times here in Maryland. This is the third incident since March. We had Great Mills High School where there was a shooting, the Capitol Gazette. Uh, and then, of course, as you mentioned, Panera, that was uh, two years ago, and then Edgewood last year, and now this one at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. And, you know, it's, um, it's deja vu here, where we're sitting up here and we're telling you about a workplace shooting and a suspect and casualties and people being yeah. medevaced to area hospitals. And uh, it's just, it's so disturbing to continue following this. Yeah. It's disturbing. It's our job, but we're also citizens, and it disturbs us as well. Kimberly Eden has now arrived at the scene, and I know you were tweeting a couple hours ago, Kimberly, that on your way to work, you saw the response at this scene. Um, where are you located now, and what have you learned? Well, Denise, right now we're pushed back from the scene. We're at Short Lane and Old Philadelphia Road. We're uh, staged here waiting for the press conference to begin. This, of course, gives authorities the room to work at the scene. We're not even uh, within a viewing area of the scene, but we are waiting on a press conference to begin here any minute now. And as we see in this, these situations, this will likely be the first of many press conferences today. Law enforcement is generally very good about giving us informa any information they can when they can. So we expect that these press conferences could be staggered throughout the day as the situation unfolds. I know uh, you guys keep referring to this as a fluid situation and uh, in the sense that it's an active shooter situation that is of course not the case from what we're told but it is a fluid situation in the aspect this, that this investigation is really just beginning we first heard reports of an active shooter at a few minutes after nine this morning so this is just uh, less than three hours into this investigation so generally we will get information from police as they can release it but we've also seen that this has now become a multi-agency effort, as so many of these mass shootings do. So those, uh, that information will have to be coordinated between various law enforcement agencies. And, of course, um, they want to make sure that they get this right. And we've already seen Hartford County cautioning on social media to make sure that you're getting your news from a credible source because so often we see the rumor mill start going in these situations. But they are promising us an official update here any moment. And as soon as we can bring that to you, we, of course, will. We know a lot of people are closely watching this situation. Kimberly, I, I want to uh, interject here for a second. It seemed to imply that you now can confirm that it is no longer an active shooter scene. Is that correct? Those are the reports that we've seen on Twitter, Denise. But again, we are waiting on all of this to be confirmed. But again, they are still on scene. Those are some of the reports that we're seeing on Twitter. We're also seeing reports that other businesses nearby may be locked down. But again, this is a very new investigation, and we are waiting on authorities to update us. Right. And those reports that you're seeing on Twitter, are those from reliable, uh, reliable sources? Because... I'm, I'm happy to hear it if it's correct. I want to I want to know if indeed it is no longer an active scene. Well, Denise, I'll work to I'll work to clarify that here in a few minutes. But Great. that's what we're seeing largely reported. Good. I right. hope that's correct. All right, Kimberly, thank you so much. If you are just joining us and you are tuning in for WJZ News at Noon, uh, we are following breaking news in Harford County, where we have confirmed that three people have been killed. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. And welcome back, everyone. I'm Jessica Cartelia with Denise Koch. We have been on the scene all morning. We have crews. We are waiting a uh, press conference from Halford, Hartford County Sheriff's Department after three people were killed and several more injured in a workplace shooting at the Rite Aid distribution facility in Hartford County. Indeed, we say workplace shooting because that is where it happened, um, but we don't have any idea in terms of motivation, etc. The, the only information we can tell you right now, as Jessica said, is that three people have been killed. There are other who are injured. We don't have exact numbers for you. It was initially described as multiple, but that's all we know at this point in terms of victims. We're going to go live back to Mike Helgren, who was one of the first on the scene uh, with the very latest. Mike? 
So we're here at Spasusha Road. We're across the street from this distribution center. What Rite Aid is saying is that it had occurred at a support building that is next to a larger building here. We've seen a large and continuing police presence here. And as we've been reporting, uh, three dead, but we're still waiting to hear from the Harford County Sheriff's Office. Multiple injured who have been taken to several trauma centers in the area, including Johns Hopkins Bayview. We have seen ATF, FBI, federal agencies. Agents on the scene here trying to assist in helping uh, to find out what exactly happened. We saw the medevac chopper here land, uh, about stay here for about 15 minutes, and then take off again. Um, and we saw a several militarized vehicles arriving here at the scene at this distribution center. Uh, the first calls came in at 9.06, and we're seeing a mobile communication center now arriving here uh, at the scene. Uh, so they are setting up here for the long haul. We don't know the motive. We don't have confirmed information right now that we can share with you about the shooter or shooters in this incident. However, we know, again, three dead, multiple injured, and we're trying to get more information about the extent of those injuries. Johns Hopkins Bayview will be holding a press press conference in the next half hour. It is a fluid situation here with multiple law enforcement remaining on the scene, several roads closed. Um, this is uh, uh, another mass shooting in this county that saw one less than a year ago, about 10 miles away from here at a workplace. Uh, this series of buildings houses hundreds of employees here and as for protocol they have to 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 go through comb through these buildings and to try to make sure that that everyone is safe and secure and try to secure the scene however we have seen them evacuate a number of people in school buses from the scene they brought those buses in three of them took people out with, uh, they were followed by a contingent of law enforcement officers and um, were waiting for a briefing from the Har Har Harford County Hopkins. Sheriff's Office. It was supposed to happen Excuse at 1145. Me, Mike, uh, Mike um, we're interrupting you because we think that they are about to start the news conference right now. Detective Barry Glassman to brief you on the events of this morning. Um, I just briefly want to remind everyone that this is still a very fluid investigation. Watching the reports this morning, there was a lot of misinformation already out and circulating. And so I please um, urge you to follow the Sheriff's Office on our social media feeds. That will be information that is confirmed and vetted in our office. We will continue to update you throughout the day. We will not take any questions at this time after the Sheriff and the Kenny Executive statements. Um, and I will let you know on Twitter again when the next media briefing will be. Thank you. What's the Twitter, man? Harford underscore Sheriff. Okay, thank you. Another tragic event for us here this morning in Harford County. Uh, to begin with, I want to thank everyone for their patience. Uh, unfortunately, the county exec and I and all of our law enforcement partners have been standing here before. Uh, we stand here yet again today. Uh, you know, many people have been affected by the events this morning. Uh, and our prayers and prayers and thoughts and prayers of the Harford County Sheriff's Office go out to all those affected. Uh, there, we are so preliminary into this investigation. I know there's a million questions. We're not going to take any questions today. Um, I know you have many, but as Christy said, we, it's so important that we deal in facts. Uh, there's families that are irreparably harmed from today's event. Uh, we don't want to make it as if you could make it worse. You certainly can. We don't want to be part of that. We want to release facts. So please uh, allow us the time to gather facts and share those with you. Um, uh, I'm going to give you as much information as we can right now, even though it's very preliminary and it's very limited. Uh, at about 9.06 this morning, a report came into dispatch center from the Rite Aid Distribution Center of shots fired. Immediately, deputies, officers, troopers, other first responders uh, responded. Uh, we were on scene just in over five minutes. Uh, arriving law enforcement, fire and EMS units quickly uh, paired up together, uh, got into the building in order to render first aid where appropriate, uh, treat patients in an attempt to locate a, a suspect or suspects. At this time, I can confirm multiple wounded and multiple fatalities. Based on what we know right now, and again, very preliminary, the lone suspect in this incident is in custody and is in critical condition at a local hospital. 
It appears to be uh, a single weapon that was used, a handgun, uh, and there were no shots fired by any of the law enforcement officers responding to the scene. We do not believe that there's an additional threat anywhere to our Harford County community. We have set up a family reunification center working with the county executive and our county partners at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. And, and again, this investigation is very early. Um, I and our office will be happy to give you more information as it becomes available. Again, I ask you uh, to keep the victims of today's uh, tragic event in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, and I also you know, have to uh, thank our fellow first responders. We have responders here from the federal government who were on scene within minutes, the FBI, the DEA, ATF, uh, the state police, MDTA police, natural resources, the local municipal departments of Aberdeen, Haverty, Grace, and Bel Air. Uh, you name it, as we've seen, unfortunately, in our community before, when something like this happens, uh, you can't have enough police and you can't have them fast enough. And we are very fortunate here that everyone works so well together and responds so well together that we were on scene and able to get as much aid in as quickly as possible. So that's what we have for you at this time. Um, Christy will put out a little later when we're going to have some additional details. And I, I know you're anxious for them. We'll, we'll be as timely as we can. And the county executive did want to offer a few thoughts this morning. Sir, can I get your name, sir? Sheriff Jeff Gaylor, G A H L. -E. Thanks, Sheriff Gaylor. Uh, Barry Glassman, the Harper County Executive. Uh, I just got off the phone with Governor Hogan a few moments ago and updated uh, the governor on uh, the incident so far as we know it. Uh, he offered all of his resources available under state government. We certainly appreciate the Maryland State Police, all the allied agencies that responded. Uh, you know, I followed this probably from the moment the call came in on our dispatch uh, and listened to the radio transmissions. Uh, unfortunately, in today's world, we have active shooter drilling and drills, and I can tell you and tell our Harford County citizens that every agency performed at the top of their profession, and the response from all our allied agencies was great. Our volunteer fire and EMS system responded with medical units, so I am thankful to all the agencies that came out to help us today uh, to get through this, which is becoming a, a too often occurrence, not only in Harford County, but in the country. So with that said, we, we really reach out to those families that are suffering right now that have lost loved ones uh, and offer our services as we begin uh, to get them reunified, uh, not only with loved ones lost, but with workers that have been displaced. Uh, so I certainly thank all our courageous men and women that have helped us this morning. Sheriff, are you suggesting that the suspect Herself. Jane, we're not going to give any additional information right now. Again, this is very fluid, and you know us. We will be sure to provide you the information as soon as we have it, so follow our feeds, and I will absolutely let you know when the next media briefing will be today, and hopefully we'll be able to nail down some of those other details and, and give you a better picture of what unfolded. Can you so say whether the suspect was so Thank you so much. Of her own gun? Uh, thank you. All right. All right, that, has, uh, that it was a news briefing with the Hartford County Sheriff's Department, and they told us when it began they were not going to answer questions, and they're not. But we did get some verifiable, good information. Um, the most important, I guess, right now, no threat to the community, and the lone suspect w who has not been identified as to sex or identity is in custody in critical condition. And also important, no shots were fired by any law enforcement, so that gives you some insight. Let's go back live to Mike. Mike Hellegren, who has been covering this all morning, first on the scene. Mike? Jessica, police uh, say they responded here within five minutes. The sheriff said that you can never have enough officers and help in this situation, but he says that they were well prepared to handle this on this scene within five minutes of this happening. And just recapping what Denise has said, what we've got enough in here. We'll get a, I'll get a little, yeah, I got it. Labeling uh, on social media.
information about that person. We don't know if it has any connection to a vehicle we saw uh, towed from right here uh, at this intersection shortly after this happened. The sheriff also didn't give any exact numbers on victims. What we had been reporting was from the Associated Press and a law enforcement source. However, the sheriff would just say multiple fatalities and multiple wounded here. And we know that some of them were taken to Johns Hopkins Bayview where they were expected to hold a press conference at 1230 today. So we may get some more information on the wounded who were taken there. But uh, they did not take questions. They did not answer any other questions about this suspect. We know that the suspect, according to police, had a single handgun. And the ATF is here. They are going to trace that as best they can and try to find out where that weapon came from. They didn't answer any questions about how that weapon was uh, purchased, how that, you know, how that suspect in this case had that weapon. But they said there was a lone suspect who opened fire here in the nine, just around nine o'clock. They um, got here by 9-11 with those first calls coming in at 9.06 uh, of a shooting here at this Rite Aid distribution center. According to Rite Aid, it happened at a uh, smaller building adjacent to one of the larger buildings at a support building here. We don't know how many people were taken from the scene, but we saw several school buses loaded with people. We also saw medevac taking people from here just within the past hour. So that was several hours after this had already started. So they had to come in here, clear the scene. We we heard about uh, the county executive talking about how they have seen this before, unfortunately dealt with this before, how they are prepared, how they have the training to deal with this, and uh, they're going to get through it. This is a very strong community, but just another horrible tragedy here. The lone suspect in custody right now, and we hope to hear more information from the sheriff's office about that person later on today. All right, Mike, and while Mike has been talking, we have been showing you live pictures from our chopper, and you've been able to see the people are still being evacuated. But as you could tell if you were watching, they're, they're walking in a very casual, calm way because we have been assured by the sheriff's department that the lone suspect is in custody in critical condition and that right now it is no longer an active scene. Right, and we're still trying to learn more about that suspect. Uh, Dutch Ruppersberger tweeting just a short time ago, no matter how often these shootings happen in our community and country, Country. It is never normal or routine. This is the third shooting since March here in Maryland. We were just in Harford County 11 months ago for another workplace shooting uh, less than 10 miles away. Uh, Rick Ritter was on <laughs> covering all of these situations for us and joins us now again. Uh, Rick, you just heard this press conference. Mm -hmm. This is incredibly disturbing. Just yet, yet we're again. still trying. Go ahead. Absolutely, to say the least, and we're still trying to gather all this information and piece everything together, but we heard from the Hartford County Sheriff Jeffrey Galler a short time ago saying this call came in around 9 o'clock this morning, and deputies, they arrived within five minutes of this shooting. Now, we know multiple people were killed and multiple people were wounded, and we also know that the lone suspect has been taken into custody and is in critical condition. Again, a lone suspect taken into custody in critical condition, multiple people killed, multiple people wounded, and obviously still a very active investigation. Uh, a state senator for Hartford County, he put out this tweet a short time ago, and I want to read it to you because we keep talking about three mass shootings here in three years. The state senator said, three years, three mass shootings in District 34. This is so very sad. It's really a great community. And you heard the shower talking about it a little bit, too. Almost hard to fathom that here we are less than a year later after the other workplace shooting at Advanced Granite Solutions, and we have another mass shooting, this one taking place at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. So Chopper 13, they were over that scene or still are over over that scene. Hundreds of employees were being evacuated from that building. We know Rite Aid said there was more than a thousand employees that were inside of there when the shooting unfolded. That's how many worked there. We now know that multiple people have been killed and multiple people wounded. And the big news, the lone suspect taken into custody, but in critical condition. They have not said whether that's a female or a male, but we know that suspect is in custody. We know deputies arrived within five minutes of the shooting, and we know no shots were fired by law enforcement. Jess, Denise. All right, thank you very much, Rick. And uh, 
three mass shootings in three years, and yes, it is a wonderful community. Absolutely a wonderful community. Harford County is a wonderful place to live. It just takes one person with a gun, um, but it is a, a delightful c uh, county in so many ways. We're going to go back now to Kimberly Eaton, who is our reporter also on the, so uh, the scene. And Kimberly, the information you gave us earlier, which was terrific, has just been verified by the sheriff's office. Yes, indeed, it is now no longer an active shooter scene. And uh, as you heard, that lone suspect uh, is in custody in critical condition. And Denise, even after that information has been confirmed, there are still many questions about what is still really an unfolding situation early on in the investigation. Now, as you just heard Rick say, we heard from police a short while ago telling us that officers were there within five minutes. They found one lone suspect, again, unclear if that person is a man or a woman, one lone suspect with a single handgun. And they also said that this just shows the importance of having so many police ready to respond, prepared to respond in this community and in these situations. We saw that in Annapolis during the Capitol Gazette shooting. Police, law enforcement were able to get there within minutes and apprehend that suspect. Again, we're seeing it here within five minutes. They were able to get on scene. Now, what happened after that moment is still unclear, but police deputies telling us that this is, of course, still very on in the investigation. They're calling this the preliminary briefing. Now, they haven't said when the next update may come, but of course, as I said, there are still so many questions. They're saying at this point multiple injuries, multiple fatalities. They're not giving us any numbers or really any information about the suspect at this point. And that is, of course, because they are still there. They are still at the Rite Aid Center and they're still investigating. And when they have any information to share, of course, they will get that to us. But in terms of when that may happen and when that next briefing, exactly will be. We're still standing by to find out, of course, as soon as we know more, so will you. Kimberly, and uh, we just know what it must be like. The, the sheriff and the county executive said hearts and prayers with the families. Uh, I can't imagine the agony for people who have a loved one who works in that facility. We can't give you any information at this time yet. They can't even, in many cases, right. they may still be trying to identify some of these victims. But we do have some information, or Nicole has some information for us. Yeah, let's go now to Nicole with uh, more on where families need to reunite with loved ones. Nicole. Jess and Denise, a lot of information coming in, about 8,000 tweets in the last 30 minutes. Uh, we want to give you information about the Family Reunification Center. It is set up at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. The address, 3633 Level Village Roads, as in Havert Grace. That was just tweeted out by the Havert, um, Harford Sheriff's Department, so that's good information. We also want to give you a hotline, the Emergency Operations Center, partially activated now. So here's the number you can call. It's 410-838-5800. Okay, so that's good, inf good information, 410-838-5800. Again, that reunification center is also set up in Haver de Grace as well. Again, I'll bring that tweet up again, 3633 Level Village Road. A lot of information on social media, the sheriff's office reminding people not to take to any rumors, to trust their sources and the sources that they're linking to so that people know exactly what's happening and how to get in contact with people in the area. Just Denise. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. And we can't say that enough. Uh, Twitter is like a rumor line, right? Mm -hmm. So you only pay attention to reliable tweets from reliable sources as well. Sure, and same goes for Facebook and, and all social media. Let's Absolutely. go back uh, to Rick Ritter. Um, you know, something I keep seeing as people say, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. We're tired of this. This has to stop. And Rick uh, was live at a scene less than a year ago. And it's heartbreaking, Rick. And I know in the next few days, as you spoke with some of the employees, you know, who watched some of their, their co-workers gun down, it has to stop. Uh, he or she, uh, there's no other way to put it. There's no other way to set it. It's horrific. It's a tragedy, and it absolutely needs to stop. One is enough, enough. This is the third mass shooting at District 34 in the past three years. Of course, the last one before this one taking place exactly just about 11 months ago at Advanced Granite Solutions, a smaller business with about 20 or 30 employees. This one taking place at the Rite Aid Distribution Center with a little more than 1,000 employees, and we now know that multiple people were killed and multiple people were wounded that per the Harford County Sheriff.
Merv, who spoke about 10 to 15 minutes ago or so. And we keep talking about social media, and I'm sitting in here between my live shots trying to read social media and go through the posts that people are putting out there. This is the heartbreaking part about all this right now is watching loved ones put posts up on social media, trying to get in contact with them and trying to find out if they're okay. One person putting out, anyone know, I'm not going to say the person's name, let us know she is okay. I cannot get a hold of her at the Rite Aid warehouse. Another person saying, my mom was in that warehouse. Can anybody get in touch with her? Does anybody have any information? So a lot of people still waiting to see if their loved ones are okay. Absolutely the heartbreaking part about all this. Of course, it's our job to sit here and report the facts, but Jess and Denise, you know, it's hard not to be a human to even shed a tear in between all of this, knowing how difficult this is, not only for these families, but for the entire community going through this for the third time in three years. It is hard to fathom, to say the least. It is indeed. And all, even if you just heard it, we're going to say it again, the phone number, because, <coughs> excuse me, we don't have any answers for you yet. Uh, the phone number, 410-838-5800. So if you get a tweet from someone asking that, tell them to call this number, 410-838-5800. And that is the official hotline where you'll get any information that the Harford County Sheriff's Department has on someone that you may know and be so worried about. Also, we're going to go back out live to Mike Helgren, but briefly, Church Creek Elementary was on a modified lockdown, and that was out of precaution. This is an industrial park area where Mike is standing by, and uh, fortunately, there are not many schools in that area, but because several of the roads had to be closed, this was solely as a precaution. Mike? Well, I want to go through some of the tweets that the Harvard County Sheriff's Office has sent out to just kind of run down some of their main points, that the sheriff expresses his thoughts and prayers to those involved in their families, that they're still in the preliminary stages of this investigation. One suspect is in custody, that the first report came out at 9.06 at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. They were able to get here within five minutes. They say multiple wounded and multiple fatalities. They have not given a number, citing AP sources. Uh, there were three people dead, but again, Harford County Sheriff saying multiple, fatality, multiple fatalities and multiple wounded. And based on what the Sheriff's Office knows, this was a lone suspect. The suspect is in custody and in critical condition. We do not believe that there is a further threat to the community. They have a family reunification center set up at the Level Volunteer Firehouse and that they're going to release additional information later today that they thank their partners with the FBI. DEA, Maryland State Police, MDTA, Aberdeen Police, Bel Air Police, and Havre de Grace Police. This is a huge presence here of law enforcement that has helped with this. The ATF trying to use their resources to track that gun, a single handgun from what uh, the sheriff said was used in this, a lone suspect in this shooting. We have seen medevac here, uh, airlifting, we're believing people who were injured from the scene. Uh, we saw people evacuate evacuated from the scene. But we don't know much more about the suspect at this point. Police are keeping that close to the vest right now, that person's identity. Um, we don't know if that person has been interviewed or how. We know the person's in critical condition. We don't know the extent of that suspect's injuries in this. Police say they did not fire a shot in all of this. So uh, we're waiting to hear more information. If you remember the shooting that happened here, the workplace shooting 11 months ago, we had a suspect who was on the loose. They were putting out that person's picture, looking for that person. Um, we got a lot more information right off the bat in, in that case. In this case, it's different because they have the person in custody, so they don't want to say too much right now and piece this together exactly how this unfolded. We don't know the motive in all of this. Mike, Back to TV Hill. Yeah, I, although they refused to take any questions, as you just said, they did make a specific comment, which was that no shots were fired by an officer, which would lead one to think that therefore the suspect must have shot themselves. They wouldn't answer that, of course, but that's the assumption. Would you agree? I would agree. I would agree. And that's what we've heard. But, you know, officially what they're saying is that this suspect was in critical condition and they 
did not fire any shots, or an officer did not fire any shots. But uh, we'll, we'll eventually hear this person's name. Um, we don't know uh, if this person has been interviewed at this point because we don't know the extent of the injuries. I'm sure that's going to be part uh, of all of this, a, a key component, and whether that person will cooperate in this. And exactly why that person uh, opened fire, their connection to a business here, we don't know uh, exactly what the motive was. So a lot of questions that have yet to be answered. But as the sheriff's office has said repeatedly, this is all still very preliminary out here. Uh, Mike, we are looking at a live picture from Chopper 13 as people are being evacuated from that building, and we know that they have been transported by buses. We know more than a thousand employees worked at that facility. Uh, also, we are expecting an update in a few minutes from Johns Hopkins, their Bayview campus, uh, because we do know that some of the victims may have been transported there. Mike, just to ask you about the timeline as all of this unfolded. You know, we're talking about just 10 minutes after nine this morning, but then we saw that medevac helicopter land and then take off behind you, and that was less than an hour ago. So we keep saying that it's a fluid scene. It's unclear, but they are still responding. Well, and we don't know the extent of the injuries, uh, you know, of the people who were wounded. I was just wondering, I were live on the air, uh, uh, a representative of the sheriff's office, Christy Hopkins, we, we've uh, spoken to you before in uh, situations like this. Can you just, what would, what would be your main message to the community right now? I think that we're seeing more and more that these situations are not preventable, that no community is immune, no business is, commune and is immune, and so preparation is key, training is key. We spend many hours, um, days training people on exactly what to do if there is a workplace violence incident or if there is an active shooter um, at the mall, at your workplace, wherever it may be. And it's, it's two-pronged, so we have to continue to look at these situations and investigate why they happen, but we also need to be training people to understand what to do when this type of violence is at your doorstep. And that's what we saw here today. We saw people that were um, you know, taking the precautions that we've talked about in the news for so long, run, hide, fight. We've also saw um, the rescue task force put in place, something that we saw at the Advanced Granite um, when they had the shooting just over a year ago, where we are now trained to have EMS providers right. and law enforcement go in together to hopefully begin to save lives of victims inside. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, they want more information, how this unfolded, but I know the sheriff's office is saying, you know, wait, hold on a little bit, right? This is a very fluid investigation. There's a lot of information that's coming out that, that is, as quickly as it comes out, it's proven not to be true. And so I very much and the sheriff very much would like to ensure that the information that we're giving the community is, is true and factual, confirmed information. And we will continue to utilize our social media resources. We ask people to please follow us because that is your confirmed source of information. And believe me, we want to provide you answers as much as we would like to have them. So as soon as we know that, we're going to let the community know. And I know even though we see still a large police contingent yeah. here something that the sheriff stressed is that like right where we are people sh shouldn't feel like they're in any danger right now we have no reason to believe that there is any further threat to the community uh, any other messages that you like for the community I mean we we did a story with you about those first responders being trained yeah. and I'm sure that made a difference with the uh, other workplace shooting 11 months ago and, and, and again today I'm sure that that kind of, of, of training was was essential in this absolutely and th those are the types of trainings that save lives. Thank you very much. Well, we're Thank continuing you. to gather information. I know you will keep us updated Absolutely. and we'll get more from the Sheriff's Office Absolutely. later on. So that's the latest from the Sheriff's Office here and we are awaiting a press conference from Johns Hopkins Bayview about more of the victims. Um, uh, the Sheriff's Office officially will not give a number. They are saying multiple wounded, multiple fatalities. That's going to come out. But, you know, I've had people ask on Twitter, like, well, we want to know what happened. Why, why can't can't they give out more information? Well, she said, just be patient. This is uh, preliminary, uh, you know, this is just, just all unfolding. There's still a lot that they're trying to learn and they want to make sure that what is out there is accurate. So you heard it from the sheriff's office, you saw the press conference here, uh, but we're going to continue to follow the situation and uh, still a, a large police presence here at the scene. Yeah, and people still being evacuated from the building. It's understandable that they're not giving out information because their first 
first priority is to treat the injured. And we don't know how injured those people may be. They may be critically injured. So the last thing they're worried about right now, they want to save their lives and then identify them and then notify the families and then notify the public. Um, let's continue the conversation because it's a good one that Mike was having there with the spokeswoman a moment ago. And let's go to Rick Ritter uh, talking about active shooter drills, Rick. And I know that you heard the county executive talking about how they had just had a, an active shooter drill and one with hope that everyone in that facility had had such a drill and knew what to do when they heard that there were shots fired there. Rick? And Denise, Barry Glassman will be the first to tell you, unfortunately, they have a lot of experience with this in this county with three mass shootings in three years. So they know what they're doing. They know how to handle these situations. And that's why deputies were able to respond within minutes when the shooting first unfolded around 9 o'clock this morning. So as Mike mentioned, look, there's a lot of questions that are unanswered right now. A lot of people begging for more information, trying to dig and find out exactly what took place here. Now that we know that the suspect is in custody, in critical condition, but in custody, you have to believe that ATF agents, the FBI, they're all going to be digging into that suspect's information right now, her background or his or her background, who they're with, uh, their cell phone records, their computers, trying to find out more about why this situation unfolded. Again, we know it took place around 9 o'clock this morning. Multiple people killed, multiple people wounded. Chopper 13 has still been over the scene, showing people being evacuated out of that Rite Aid distribution center, uh, a center where there's more than a thousand people employed, and we know that multiple people there have been shot, multiple people have been killed. Again, this is another tragic situation. Here we are. It seems like just yesterday I stood in this area 11 months ago reporting on another mass shooting, that one taking place at Advanced Granite Solutions. So going back to your point, Denise, obviously they have a lot of experience with this, unfortunately, and which is why deputies were able to respond so quick to this situation and hopefully stop it before it was a lot worse. But still, a lot of questions remain unanswered. We don't know exactly how many people were shot, how many people have been killed. That's all information that hopefully we'll get here within the next couple of hours here at the media station. Staging area, things have quieted down quite a lot. Still some deputies on scene from the Hartford County Sheriff's Office. It looks like the sheriff has left the scene. Hopefully we're going to be getting another update here within the next couple of hours. But if you're just joining us right now, just to rehash quickly, shooting at the Rite Aid Distribution Center, the warehouse off of Spanusha Road, multiple people killed, multiple people injured. The lone suspect now in custody, but in critical condition. Live from Television Hill. This is WJZ Breaking News. Okay, and as you just heard Rick Ritter's report, we are following that breaking news out of Harford County where we know that multiple people have been shot and we know that several people have been killed in a workplace shooting at the Rite Aid Distribution Center that's just south of Aberdeen. We also know that we are awaiting a press conference. Devin Bartolotta is standing by live. Uh, we'll get to her in just a little bit. We're waiting a press conference at Johns Hopkins Bayview uh, where security, according to Devin, has streets blocked and many are wearing bulletproof vests at Bayview ahead of that press conference regarding victims that may have been taken there. But this scene that you're looking live at is the scene I of this large warehouse one. facility I mean, where they continue to evacuate workers. Although this happened in a building adjacent to the Rite Aid Distribution Center, they, uh, as you can imagine, at this point want to evacuate the entire facility to search it and make sure it's secure and make sure there are no explosives or anything else on scene. But as Jess said, if you are just joining us, you need to be reassured in knowing that as far as the sheriff's office knows, it was a lone suspect who is in custody in critical condition and the sheriff is uh, notifying the community that they do not have reason to worry about a threat. As far as they know, there is no threat to the community that still exists. Right. Also, uh, we have seen medevac helicopters going in and out, one as recently as, uh, you know, just what within the past half hour or so. So we hour, keep yeah. saying it is a fluid scene, and by that we mean that, as you saw, many of those employees are still being escorted out of the building, and there is a very large presence there. We have the FBI on the scene, the ATF on the scene, uh, Joppa Magnolia Fire, fire crews from all over, uh, and EMTs being brought out. Earlier, Mike Helgren spoke with a witness who says she saw more than a dozen ambulances uh, near the area. So it is unclear how many people have been shot. Uh, but again, the, the nice, uh, the nice, if there is a silver lining, there is no immediate threat now to the adjacent community. We had been saying earlier that there was a, a modified lockdown at one of the elementary schools. That would have been Church Creek. Uh, and that was completely as a precaution. Let's go back now to uh, live to Mike Helgren, who is one of the first on the scene. Mike? 
Jessica, we're still trying to gather information as to the motive why this all unfolded. The sheriff did not take any questions. Uh, he wanted to tell the community that the area was safe, that there's no further threat. He provided some information about that lone suspect. Let's listen to what Sheriff Gaylor said just a few moments ago. At about 9.06 this morning, a report came into a dispatch center from the Rite Aid Distribution Center of shots fired. Immediately, deputies, officers, troopers, other first responders uh, responded. Uh, we were on scene just in over five minutes. Uh, arriving law enforcement, fire and EMS units quickly uh, paired up together, uh, got into the building in order to render first aid where appropriate. Uh, treat patients in an attempt to locate a, a suspect or suspects. At this time, I can confirm multiple wounded and multiple fatalities. Based on what we know right now, and again, very preliminary, the lone suspect in this incident is in custody and is in critical condition at a local hospital. It appears to be uh, a single weapon that was used, a handgun, uh, and there were no shots fired by any of the law enforcement officers responding to the scene. We do not believe that there's an additional threat anywhere to our Harford County community. Sheriff Gaylor, just moments ago, those are the confirmed facts. And we talked to a Harford County Sheriff's Office representative a few moments ago, and she said, listen, we want to make sure that we investigate this fully, sorry. and there are a lot of rumors going on about there. Let's go back to you on TV. Yeah, sorry, Health. Mike, we hate to interrupt you, but we want to go to Hopkins Bayview, where the uh, doctors are about to sure. have a news conference about any victims who are... So uh, I'm uh, Ray Fang. I'm the trauma medical director here at Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center. Um, about all I can tell you right now is that we received four uh, persons from the incident this morning. Uh, they all came to us as a level two trauma center serving this part of, of Maryland. Um, they're all under our care. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation that their families have been notified that they are here uh, and have been notified of their condition before we can give you any specifics about their conditions. So really all I can tell you is that we received four patients with gunshot wounds earlier today. Um, to us, they're all patients. We weren't there, so everything we know is second, third hand, so I really can't comment on whether one or not is, is the shooter. Has anyone been brought here who uh, their condition may have changed and they may have passed while here? So uh, really, we need to wait to make sure their families are notified before we can give any of you details about their specific conditions. But all four have gunshot wounds? Yes. Multiple gunshot wounds? Um, gunshot wounds. Um, I think all, all I really want to say is they all suffered gunshot wounds, and until we have a chance to talk to their families first, I think that that's, it's, it's best for the families to learn their conditions from us directly rather than through you, unfortunately. Have yes. any of the victims been taken into surgery? Uh, some of them have required surgical care. Were they brought here by medevac or by ground? By ground. I mean, Maryland has an excellent uh, EMS system. Uh, it is pretty advanced and very well organized for our country. And so they were all beneficiaries of that MIMS uh, system, and they were brought here very rapidly. Can you give us an idea of their priority when they were first brought in? So uh, MIMS has a priority, it has a triage scale, and they were all considered priority one because they had suffered gunshot wounds. Can you tell us how many have been uh, I can't tell you that until we know the families know who, who's here. What time did they arrive? They arrived probably around 10 a.m. They're all adults? They're all adults. Were their family members uh, any information they should have at this point if they believe that one of their loved ones? So I think there are some contact numbers for them to call. Uh, I don't know, again, if they call the hospital directly until uh, authorities have notified them. I don't know that they're going to share more information about their specifics. So I believe that authorities are going to notify all the patients that receive, let them know that they're here. Um, and then once we've had confirmation that that notification has happened, then we can give them more information. Could you offer some insight to our viewers who may not be familiar with how the decision making happens or uh, when there is an incident like this and how the decision is made to bring a victim? Yeah, so, 
So in the state of Maryland, again, there's an organization called MIMS, Maryland Institute for EMS Services. Um, all the pre-hospital providers are trained on the MIMS protocols, and there are specific uh, injuries that um, they have patients would do best if they came to a designated trauma center. And so if the EMS providers feel they meet those criteria, they will preferentially take them to designated trauma centers within the state of Maryland. Um, for this part of the state, Bayview is the, the closest trauma center to serve them. Um, other ones in our region, of course, would be Johns Hopkins Hospital and uh, shock trauma. Um, but again, we, at least in the trauma community, we feel that there are certain patients whose outcomes are, are improved by going to designated trauma centers that are resourced, manned, and have the expertise to care for those patients. And this is one probably event where that, that will probably prove to be true. Can you talk at all about any increased security at the hospital? Like, you guys have sort of blocked out the streets, but are there, is there anything else that other patients need to be aware of or families that are trying to get through? I think, uh, at least at this time, we are business as usual. Um, at first, when we didn't know how many patients we were getting, of course, we kind of adapted to be ready to take more patients, and we were ready to take more patients. Uh, again, in the state of Maryland, I, they, the, the state, um, I think, tried to distribute patients best to where there was resources and capability available to take care of them. So they saw that we were receiving multiple casualties and we could take more, but of course, they tried to offload the, the number of casualties by distributing them to other trauma centers in the region. Are any of the patients what happened? Uh, I have not had conversations like, like that with any patient, so I can't say. So could you just tell us behind the scenes um, what's happening? Um, to be honest with you, at what's happening now is after those patients came in after that single event, things went back to business as usual. You know, as a trauma center, we will get patients like this, either in multiple casualty events like this or single casualty events, and we take care of them. And once the surge occurred and we were comfortable that weren't more patients weren't coming in, then it was business as usual again. Are they in the trauma ICU? So we have a single uh, surgical ICU for trauma and other surgical patients, and if any of them merited that level of care, they would be there. Um, but again, I don't want to comment on specific conditions of any patients. Any idea when you might be able to share some additional information with us? Once we have a confirmation that the patient families have been informed that their loved ones are here and that we've had a chance to talk directly to the patient's families and let them know their conditions, and perhaps we can share more information to, about those specific patients. But again, at this point, you're still reaching out to the families. They haven't all uh, I think the, the police authorities are, are the ones that are reaching out for those contacts. Okay? All right, thank you. We've been listening to a doctor at Hopkins Bayview talk about the four patients who were taken there uh, to their trauma center. Uh, what's important that he said is that there are four patients, they are all being treated at the trauma center. To him, to the hospital, they are patients. So he right. could not confirm or deny whether the shooter was one of the people who was taken to Hopkins Bayview. You know, it's interesting, and as I mentioned, and I was really hoping that somebody would ask, is Devin said that there were several uh, guards out there with bulletproof vests. Our, so, our reporter Devin Barlotta tweeted this, right? Right. So my question is, you know, are they, why? What do, what do we know about that? Are they still walking around? Um, my understanding is that there is not a threat to the hospital. A sheriff's deputy said that there is not an immediate threat to the general public. Uh, but it is unclear as to why that is the case and why people are wearing bulletproof vests or if that's just part of uh, Baltimore City Police's response uh, just because it is an ongoing scene. Let's go back out to Rick Ritter uh, live with more. Rick? Well, Jess Denise, again, that was the doctor from Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center who said they've received four patients all by ground, all priority one adults, meaning they suffered gunshot wounds, taken into that medical center. Some have already undergone surgery, and right now they're still trying to notify families. So that kind of gives you an idea of how many people we're talking about that have been injured or impacted by the shooting. Four just by ground. I mean, Mike Helgren all day has been live out there on the scene with the medevac going up and down, up and down, transporting patients in other ways. We know at least four were taken by ground to the Johns Hopkins 
Hopkins Bayview Medical Center. Now, we heard from the Hartford County Sheriff, the Hartford County Executive a little while ago, painting us a, a, a grim picture of what took place at this uh, Rite Aid Distribution Center today, saying the call came in around 9 o'clock this morning. Deputies arrived within about five minutes, and that they know multiple people have been killed and multiple people have been injured in this shooting, but not elaborating on a specific amount. But again, multiple people killed, multiple people injured, and the lone suspect taken into custody, not saying whether that's a male or a female, but lone suspect in custody and in critical condition. Again, we heard from the Hartford County Sheriff and County Executive Barry Glassman a little while ago. Here's what he had to say. I followed this probably from the moment the call came in on our dispatch uh, and listened to the radio transmissions. Uh, unfortunately, in today's world, we have active shooter drilling and drills, and I can tell you and tell our Hartford County citizens that every agency performed at the top of their profession, and the response from all our allied agencies was great. Our volunteer fire and EMS system responded with medical units, so I am thankful to all the agencies that came out to help us today uh, to get through this, which is becoming a, a too often occurrence, not only in Harford County. But Unfortunately, as he said, this is becoming the new norm. And so many agencies across the country, of course, are doing training in this, uh, making sure they're up to uh, the finest standards in all of this, if you will. Uh, here in Hartford County, unfortunately, they have so much experience with this. We've been talking about it all day long. Three mass shootings in three years, the last one before this one, taking place literally 11 months ago, about seven miles in from here, at another workplace shooting. Of course, that suspect was taken into custody much later on. The suspect, in this case, the lone suspect, in custody, in critical condition. Just a heartbreaking scenario all around. Obviously, loved ones trying to find more information out right now, making sure their loved ones are okay. We saw a lot of posts on social media, people reaching out, dropping their loved ones' names, saying, do you know this person? Do you know if they're okay? I can't get in touch with them. And that's the heartbreaking situations that we're starting to hear about with these shootings that, and that always unfold shortly after these details come out. But again, multiple people killed, multiple people wounded, the lone suspect now in custody, but in critical condition. And you have to believe it this time, now that they have that suspect in custody, they obviously know the suspect's identity, that the ATF, FBI agencies, they're going to be digging into that suspect's background, trying to get more information on why this unfold, digging into computers, cell phone records, maybe speaking with people he or she knows, trying to find out exactly why this unfolded. Well, Rick, um, interrupting you there just for a second, yes, you're absolutely right that there are lots of people out there who are distressed. And in case you have not heard, I'm, it, we're going to repeat this throughout the day. There is a phone number that the Hartford County Sheriff's Office has set up because we don't have answers for you. The doctor at Bayview cannot give identities, obviously, the patients till the families have been notified. The number is 410-838-5800. Feel free to hand that out on social media to anyone you think needs to know it. 410-838-5800. That is a number that the Sheriff's Office has set up so that you can hopefully get some answers uh, to the burning questions you have if you know someone or are related to someone who works at that facility. Right. Uh, also, we had been talking a little bit. I just got a, a tweet from a law enforcement official who said, you know, it is protocol that law enforcement wear a ballistic vest when responding to any call involving the possibility of personal harm. You know, thank you so much. Um, we know this. My, my question is regarding the hospital specifically. Um, he did say that it was, the, the doctor said that it is business as usual as far as they know. Um, but anytime you have a situation like this, uh, my question would be, we are, it's unclear if the suspect in this case was taken to Johns right. Hopkins and if there is uh, any threat uh, to anyone in that trauma department we know that security has increased and that's why I was trying to uh, see if there was some sort of connection there and I think that will all come to light as this investigation uh, progresses. Right. The doctor very poignantly said to a doctor, to the facility, their patients. Uh, right. Doesn't matter whether they are a shooter or a victim, their patients. So we will not know that until they are able to notify all the families involved. There's Mike Helgren. Uh, we've been saying Mike was first on the scene today uh, at n just after. Uh, what time did you get there, Mike? Like 9, 9.20, 9.30? Oh, 
Yeah, in the 9 o'clock hour, and uh, I'll tell you one new development. The Harford County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone who is still inside these buildings here to dial 911 so that they know uh, where they are because they have to go through these buildings. I'll read you the exact tweet. At this time, the Harford County Sheriff's Office would ask that anyone who may still be in the building to dial 911 so that deputies can locate you. Uh, still, a lot of police here on the scene. They are early in this investigation. They've got to go through that building to, to give the all clear, even though we know that there is no threat, according to the sheriff here. Um, you know, they have to go through every inch of that building, and that is something that we've seen them do in this very county after mass shootings. Um, you know, we, we talked about uh, bulletproof vests at the hospital. You heard the one question in the, in the press conference was, uh, was the, uh, the suspected shooter taken to Johns Hopkins? Bayview, uh, the, uh, the, the, the doctor speaking would not answer that question, uh, you know, would not provide that information. We do know that the lone suspect was critically injured. Police didn't fire the bullet, they say, but that suspect was critically injured uh, and we taken to a hospital. And so uh, we don't know exactly where that suspect is at this point, and we don't know, um, you know, whether police have been able to, at this point, Point, interview the suspect, but we did speak to some civilian people, uh, people out here at the scene about uh, what they have seen. Let's take a listen to that right now. It's been absolutely crazy. Everything's cut off. Uh, all the roads are cut off. Um, they're not even supposed to let cars down here, and they're just using any larger vehicles they're letting through. But uh, they're telling some people to divert through the graveyard somewhat. But there's so many cars that I think I counted at least 13 ambulances, and that's that was just when I was counting. And they put in a, a lot of emergency vehicles. There's like three choppers. They're still looking. It's still investigating. So that was a little earlier today, and we got to tell you, there are still some roads blocked off here in front of this distribution center. You can see uh, where we are here. There's still a large police presence out here at the scene. Again, the Harford County Sheriff's Office asking people to call 911 if they're still inside that building. And now we are seeing another uh, empty Harford County school bus going back into the scene. Now, earlier we saw three school buses uh, that were uh, brought in here. They took people out about a half hour later. We're seeing another school bus enter the uh, entrance here to this Rite Aid warehouse industrial area. So we uh, perhaps they're they're gathering more people to to take them uh, to take them back out from the scene. But another school bus uh, arriving here at the scene. So it appears that they're still trying to clear this building and make sure that there is uh, no one inside. So they're still trying to to make Make sure that any civilians who are in this building are out, and and uh, that is another aspect of uh, controlling, making sure this scene is is totally um, under control here. And as you heard from that witness on the scene, uh, just a, a chaotic situation, um, and it's something that she says is such a quiet area you don't expect it. But, but sadly, we've seen other other shootings uh, just down the road here, from you know Panera to the Advanced Granite shooting last year. But um, another school bus arriving here in the scene trying to clear out this building asking those who are in the building to call 911 so that they can locate them that is the latest from here in front of this Rite Aid distribution center Mike before you go just very briefly uh, if you're still there uh, were you not surprised when when uh, the sheriff said that there was a single weapon that was a that was a handgun when you have multiple fatalities yeah, multiple he, injuries he, he, and a handgun you know more about this than I do what, what's I mean your we don't you know he, no, no, I mean, I, who, you know, he didn't describe the weapon beyond that or whether anything was, it was used uh, to enhance that weapon. We don't know. I mean, it was a surprising. And uh, right now we've got the ATF out here. So, uh, and there was a large ATF contingent, I can tell you. So those are the experts in providing their expertise in this situation. So they, uh, I'm assuming that they have recovered that weapon, that single handgun. And uh, so, uh, you know, they are going to be 
looking at that, uh, finding out where it came from. And, you know, we don't know whether anything was used to enhance that weapon at this point, and that may come out later as the sheriff's office provides more information later today. So, yes, it was surprising. We got to wait and see. But uh, from what the sheriff said, a handgun and he, along with the ATF, are looking more at that weapon, and more details are going to come out on that. All right. Thank you, Mike. Very interesting. All right. We want to update you now to... Uh... <sighs> Harford County Sheriff is updating the Family Reunification Hotline. That new number, if you need it, 410-638-3826. 410-638-3826, option 9. And they're asking, you know, if you know anybody, please share this. I, I know on Facebook there's a lot of people asking for, for help reunifying. Or, you know, reuniting with their family members. They haven't heard from them. 410-638-3826. We're going to go now to Devin Bartolotta, who is live at Johns Hopkins Bayview Campus. And Devin, I, I keep asking this over and over. Talk to, uh, to us about the security that is there at the hospital. Jess, we just heard a bit ago from Dr. Raymond Fang. He's the head of the Trauma Medical Center here at Bayview. He told us uh, over and over again, this is business as usual. Usual. There are a few cars at the end of the street here that are blocking things off, and we did see security guards that are wearing bulletproof vests. But he did say that once they received everyone, they have four patients here, everything kind of went back to normal. They're just treating them as patients. He said that, again, four people were brought here by ambulance. They were treated as a priority one because they all had gunshot wounds, but that's really all the information that he could share with us because 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 he said that those people's families have not yet been notified and police are working right now to connect with their families and tell them where they are. So we right now do not know the ages, the genders. Uh, we don't know uh, the nature of anyone's injuries of the four victims that are here. We do know that several of them needed surgery, but that's all that Dr. Fang would really tell us here. Otherwise, he said they were kind of braced for impact here whenever they heard that they were going to be getting victims from a mass shooting and they were prepared to receive people. But once they received only four patients, they said that everything kind of went back to business as usual and other patients or other families here may not even notice any difference at all uh, whenever they come to the hospital here. Actually, if you look right to my left here, you can see two of those security guards that have the bulletproof vest. This is Johns Hopkins security here and they're just um, walking with someone right into the building there. But that's really about all we've seen in terms of heightened security here uh, or, or anything other than, Dr. Fang said, business as usual. So he said that we're going to get an update, another update at 2.30 this afternoon. We are hoping then whether we might, found out, might find out some more information about the four patients that are here and whether one of them may be the shooting suspect. Again, we do know that the shooting suspect is in critical condition, but we have not been told what hospital that person is at. Dr. Fang said here there are all patients and he can't tell us that. Right, thank you very much, Devin, reporting at Hopkins Bayview. Now let's go over to Nicole, who's in the Cube, and she has been uh, carefully monitoring social media. Nicole? Yes, Denise, Jess, we're up to 18,000 tweets, and I say that because the Hartford Sheriff's Department wanted to remind people that everything you're taking in in social media needs to be verified, needs to make sure that it is accurate information. So we're tracking social media in the cube right now. The latest tweet came out from Hartford Sheriff saying, at this time, the office wants anyone that may still be in the building to call 911 so deputies can locate you. Mike Helgram reminded you about that tweet as well. So if you're still in the area and you're in that building, the, de the deputies need you to give them a call. Now, we're also taking a look at some of the other tweets. Based on what we know right now, we know that there was a lone suspect. The suspect is in custody and critical condition in the hospital at this time, as we just got an update on that as well. The sheriff's office also confirming multiple wounded, multiple fatalities, as we've heard in the last hour or so. The first report came in 906. Shots fired at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. Assets were on the scene within five minutes, and we know it was a multiple agency response there. So we know all hands were on deck. We want to remind you that there is a family reunification center set up in Haverty Grace. Here's the address, 3633 Level Village Road. Again, that's for families trying to find their loved ones and reunite. Again, anything you see on social media that you may be sharing or seeing, make sure that it is from a verified source. Uh, we've seen some people checking in, letting people know that they are safe. Um, we're just monitoring new information as it comes. Again, if you're still in that building, still in the area, please call 911 so the deputies may be able to find you. Denise, Jess. All right, thank you, Nicole. And uh, anyone who may be just tuning in, uh, we are continuing to cover this shooting in Harford County, not because it is still ongoing, 
going, but because there are still so many unanswered questions, and including how many victims uh, have died and how many victims are injured and what their identities may be. Um, but as we have been trying to tell those who've been following us, we have been told that the scene has been secured. As you can see, multiple law enforcement uh, going through all of the buildings and searching, that the lone suspect is in custody in critical condition, and that at this time there is no threat to the community. And as far as um, they know, as far as the sheriff's office knows, this scene is contained and there is no longer a threat to people in the building. However, if you're in the building and you happen to be watching us on some sort of device, call 911 and let them know you're there. They are now having to scour every inch of that enormous facility to find out and make sure that everyone is accounted for and that everyone is safe. Right. We also uh, want to reiterate to Great Mills, um, oh, excuse me, um, let me go back. Church Creek Elementary uh, was on a modified lockdown. Um, again, that was just out of precaution. Lockdowns in the area have been lifted, but they are still urging people to avoid that area because several of the roads are closed and this investigation is ongoing. You know, Denise, it's interesting. We watched so many people being evacuated from the building, and yet we just got that tweet saying that some people still may be hiding, mm -hmm. um, un, you know, concerns about, about what is taking place, and they want to locate you and let you know that everything is okay, that it is an active scene as far as getting people out of the building, but as far as uh, the gunman police said that, or woman police said that it was a loan a suspect, mm -hmm. a lone shooter, and that person is in custody in critical condition. Let's go back to Kimberly Eaton now with the latest. Kimberly? And Jess, you were just talking about how the sheriff's office is asking anyone who might still be in the building to call 911 so that they can locate those people and help get them safely out of the area. And that tells you just how quickly authorities in Hartford County have gotten this family re reunification center set up. That is where we are now. So while they're still on that scene trying to get people out safely, they already have this established. You can see here behind us, this is where they are asking folks who... Uh, who have been touched by this mass shooting to re to meet to rejoin with their loved ones. This is on Level Village Road. This is about nine miles from the scene of the shooting. You can see uh, law enforcement here far down this road. You can see the flashing lights. But at this point, we've seen very few cars actually coming here. Just people are slowly trickling in. And again, that could be because, as we just said, this is still very early on in this investigation, in this situation. I think Rick Ritter was the one earlier who reported that about a thousand people work at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. And then Mike Helgren said a few minutes ago that people are still being bussed out of that area. So we don't know at this point if uh, they've been able to even contact their family members to tell them to meet them here or to get together here at this spot. Like we said, few cars are just trickling in. Of course, we're going to be here. We're going to try to talk to some of these folks and uh, find out what they know because, again, we don't know if people have even been able to get in contact with their loved ones yet, but we will be here and bring you any information as soon as we can. Justin Denise. Kimberly, right, thank thanks. You, Kimberly. We're going to go back live to uh, Mike Helgren. And Mike, we're hearing that there is going to be another media briefing um, within the next, I don't even know what time it is, 1.30, around uh, in the 2 o'clock hour. Are you yeah. hearing that? What is this? 1 o'clock? Yeah, yeah. We're hearing that there's a second media briefing I just saw on Twitter. Um, I, it was a video, so I don't have the exact time for you. However, um, something I can tell you, because we're just constantly observing here, uh, about five minutes ago, we heard like a loud bang, like, you know, coming from the vicinity of the building. I don't know if there's anything to that. We know that, um, you know, they'd ask people if they were still inside to, to call 911 to let them know. They brought in another school bus. So uh, what we think is that they're still trying to clear the building and make sure that there are no civilians inside. But we did hear a loud, just a single bang, you know, like a, I don't know if sounded like an explosive it just you know I could clearly hear it over here so that's just an observation from here at the scene um, there's still uh, there, there's we've been, been giving you information about the family reunification center that's set up um, so they're still trying to bring families back together here a lot of people are concerned about this this is unfortunately something that Harford County has had to go through in the past and at the first media briefing we heard from the county executive and his thoughts on on another tragedy in his community. Let's listen in to Mr. Glassman. We really 
reach out to those families that are suffering right now that have lost loved ones uh, and offer our services as we begin uh, to get them reunified, uh, not only with loved ones lost, but with workers that have been displaced. Uh, so I certainly thank all our courageous men and women that have helped us this morning. And he also referenced the training that they have, not only for these officers, but also for the paramedics and the first responders who can get in faster that way. Um, so we're still seeing uh, police leaving the scene. There's a couple uh, sheriff's vehicles here. But something that the uh, Sheriff Gaylor wanted to make clear, and also the uh, representative from the Sheriff's Department who we interviewed live here uh, about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes ago, was that there is no threat here at the scene right now, but there's still activity here at the scene. Uh, they have a lone uh, suspect in custody who was injured, who was shot in critical condition. They're saying that police did not fire that shot. That person is at the hospital, but we expect to hear more information about that suspect and also perhaps about the exact number of victims in this case coming up at that second media briefing. The official word is that there are multiple fatalities and multiple wounded here at the scene. Back to you on TV Hill. Okay, Mike, thanks so much. And we're going to bring Kimberly Eaton back in. And Kimberly, um, you covered the Capitol Gazette shooting extensively, and it's, it's interesting because they just tweeted out, with today's workplace shooting in Harford County, it's happened again, and yet we will continue to ask, how do we prevent the next mass shooting? And, you know, while these have nothing to do with each other, we have been on this scene time and time again covering this story, you especially, and it's just heartbreaking. Just every single one of these is heartbreaking. In fact, on the way up here, I was trying to count how many of these so-called mass shootings I've covered uh, in the last five, seven, eight years of reporting. I can't at this point. I mean, we've listed how many we've seen here in Maryland recently, the Capitol Gazette shooting, the workplace shooting in Edgewood, and in fact, uh, early on when this situation was just starting to unfold this morning, I saw on Twitter a young woman who listed in her bio that she's a Capitol Gazette reporter tweeting that one of the things that people tell you after you've survived a mass shooting is that it's going to be difficult to see the next one unfold. And she said what they don't prepare you for is to see the one after that and the one after that. And the fact of the matter is that shooting inside the Capitol Gazette was months ago. These are happening so frequently now. And so, uh, again, we've seen authorities work very quickly to get people help and to get people reunited with their families. And that's what's going on here, here at Level Village Road. Down the way from us is the Volunteer Firehouse. And I'm going to step out so you can uh, see down there. We're pushed back quite a ways, but this is where they are asking family members to meet anyone who may have been inside. And uh, they also have a hotline set up, but they worked very quickly to get this established. You can see the Red Cross coming through. This is the kind of aid I'm referring to. Right away, the counties are able to mobilize help for the victims, for the survivors, for their families. And that's because we have seen this time and time again, unfortunately. You even heard Sheriff, Ga Sheriff Gaylor say it, that they're prepared for these situations because they have to be. They just dealt with one of these shootings. So if you are trying to get in touch with a loved one, with a family member, a friend, someone who may have been involved, who may have been inside or has some connection to this, this is where they are asking you to come. This is on Level Village Road. It is the Volunteer Firehouse. They also have a hotline set up both for information and for information specifically on family reunification. We have that listed on our website at WJZ.com. Now, we've seen these cars just starting to trickle in here. You saw the Red Cross just come through. So this is still very early on in the investigation. And I was mentioning earlier, Rick Ritter had said there are possibly a 1,000 employees who work at this facility. We don't know at this point how many of them have been able to get into contact with their family. Mike Helgren said some of those folks are still being bussed away from the scene. So again, this is very early on. But as this unfolds, as we watch folks come into this reunification center, we will, of course, keep you updated.
that you listened in uh, to the news conference and heard the county executive talking about the fact that they had just done an active shooter drill um, to prepare for just such a, an event as this. Um, those kinds of drills need to, in this day and age, be done in almost every business. And Kimberly, going back to you now, um, he talked about what everyone at the Capitol Gazette talked about the day that you were out there reporting, the run, hide, and fight. Mm -hmm. um, th th this is the information that needs to be spread to every workplace now. Do you agree? Through every workplace, and unfortunately, um, even beyond that, because we have seen these situations unfold in pretty much every kind of facility you can imagine. And the thing we keep talking about, we keep listing all these recent mass shootings that we've covered in Maryland, near Maryland, even throughout the country. And the fact of the matter is, yes, we talk about how many there have been, but for these people, for these thousand people who were inside this facility and who survived this or had to witness this, this is the day that's going to change their life. This is the horrific event that no one should have to prepare for, but the matter, the fact of the matter is, we do, and you said the, um, run, hide, or fight. We've heard law enforcement prepare because we have seen these in such close proximity to each other and twice recently in Hartford County. Poignant that this is the second time in less than a year, the third mass shooting in three years. I, I feel compelled to say this is no reflection on Hartford County, which is a beautiful, uh, in many cases rural, uh, peaceful, environment where they do not have a lot of crime sure. if you talk to the sheriff's office it just takes one person oh. in the right state of mind with a gun in any community Look to make annapolis. this happen sure annapolis and absolutely and falls it's just it's just it's awful yeah it is awful all right thank you kimberly very much uh and she'll remain of course on that scene and we're going to go now to devon bartolotta who is at hopkins bayview where just about an hour ago we heard from doctors there um what little they would tell us about the four people that they're treating devon Denise, that's right. We don't really know much about the four patients who were brought here. We know that they were brought here by ambulance. All four of them had gunshot wounds, and a few of them required surgery, but that's really all that Dr. Fang would tell us right now, that right now they're trying to work to get a hold of the families of all four of these people and, uh, and tell those families what is going on with their loved ones and what their status is, what their condition is, and that happens before we find out anything about those patients uh, or their condition. Even we don't really know uh, what conditions any of these patients are in. Kim just talked briefly about how prepared Harford County was for this event and how prepared a lot of counties are for events like this. And that was the case here at Johns Hopkins Bayview as well. Dr. Fang told us that when they heard that there was a mass shooting, they were prepared. They were at the ready to triage patients patients and get them in long before they knew how many people they would be getting from that shooting. They ended up getting four people here again and they say that once they got those four patients, they got them where they needed to be, started to treat them, and it was business as usual. So it's really that at the ready uh, kind of mentality that so many organizations, so many officials had today that have really uh, guided this whole process along as horrific as this all is. So again, what we have have right now at the hospital four patients we don't know how old they are male or female we don't know what conditions they are in but we do know that all four of them had gunshot wounds we're going to listen right now to a little bit of what dr fang had to say earlier this afternoon about all i can tell you right now is that we received four uh, persons from the incident this morning. Uh, they all came to us as a level two trauma center serving this part of, of Maryland. Um, they're all under our care. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation that their families have been notified that they are here uh, and have been notified of their condition before we can give you any specifics about their conditions. So really all I can tell you is that we received four patients with gunshot wounds earlier today. Um, to us, they're all patients. We weren't there, so everything we know is second, third hand, so I really can't comment on whether one or not is, is the shooter. Now, again, you, you just heard Dr. Fang say that he could not confirm whether or not one of those four people was the shooter, and that's, of course, because this is a very early investigation. These people have only been at the hospital for about three hours now, so there's still a lot of work to be done here, a lot of questions to be answered, and families to be contacted about all of this. We are supposed to get another update from Johns Hopkins Bayview at 2.30 this afternoon. We will, of course, keep you updated when that happens. 
All right, thank you very uh, we want to tell you very quickly that the modified lockdown at Church Creek Elementary School has now been lifted. So if you know anyone who has children at that school, the lockdown is now lifted. And if you're concerned about them and want to go pick them up, I think you are free to do so. Although, once again, law enforcement is urging people to stay away from the vicinity of this crime scene because there is such an enormous response there. There is bound to be a backup, and really it'll make their job so much easier if the roads are as clear as possible. And now we're we're going to go to um, to Mike Helgren, I believe. Rick Ritter, excuse me, Rick Ritter, who is uh, one of our reporters on the scene. Rick. Denise, we just spoke to authorities a short time ago, and right now they are efforting another press conference. Exactly what time that will be, we don't know yet. I was told they're getting some last minute information in right now that they're trying to iron out before they announce the next time for that media briefing. So, as we continue to get hours here later past the scene, we're certainly waiting for more information, and we're most likely going to get it here with that next update whenever that comes. You have to understand here, think back to the Capitol Gazette shooting, and really a lot of these mass shootings, it takes hours of information, or excuse me, investigating for them to dig around and get the details. Details that we're all looking for right now. We keep talking about it all day. People on social media reaching out saying, I want to know what happened. Why did this happen? Tell me more about the suspect. They have a lot of investigating to do. The ATF, the FBI, now that they know the identity of this suspect who is in custody but in critical condition, the lone suspect, they are certainly digging into cell phones, computers, people that person knows, family members, trying to find out more about why this situation unfolded. Just to rehash, if you're joining us right now, this shooting took place around 9 o'clock this morning at the Rite Aid Distribution. Center where Rite Aid said more than a thousand employees work, and we know multiple people were killed inside there. We know multiple people were injured. We know at least four patients were taken by ground to the Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center. So, certainly a tragic situation to say the least, and one this county is all too familiar with. We're talking about it all day. The third mass shooting in just three years, of course, the other one before this taking place about 11 months ago at Advanced Granite Solutions. That business only had about 20 or 30 employees. Multiple people still were killed. This business, we're told, has about a thousand employees, and we know multiple people killed once again and multiple people injured as well. The suspect in custody, the lone suspect, and authorities say it was a handgun that that person used to go on this shooting, if you will. The shooting rampage is what we're going to call it. So hopefully, we're going to get an update here from authorities within the next hour, maybe. I'm told they're piecing together some last minute information before they can announce the time and before we can get another media briefing here. But for now, we'll send it back to you. All right, Rick, thank you so much. We're going to go back to Mike Helgren, who has been live since the very beginning of this as it's all unfolded. And Mike, uh, we're looking live at a shot from Chopper 13 of another bus. Uh, we know that people are still being evacuated from that area or from uh, the building, which is a gigantic facility. Four hours later, still being evacuated. Yeah, they had brought in three school buses earlier today, brought those people out, and then they had medevac land. Medevac went away, uh, or flew away, uh, presumably with some uh, with a victim or victims on board. And then uh, just about I don't know, 15 minutes ago, there was another Harford County school bus that they brought in here, an empty school bus, so that uh, we're thinking that they're evacuating more people from this distribution center, trying to make sure it's all clear, trying to get all the civilians out. Those last three school buses they were followed by a large contingent of police officers as they left here so that is part of this story I mean uh, one part is investigating how and why it happened that lone uh, suspect that they have in custody in critical condition and then another part is you know securing the actual scene here and as the sheriff has said and it bears repeating again that there's no threat here at the scene right now however they want to make sure that they get that building clear and that's what they are are doing and they're asking that anyone inside give them a call via 911 to let them know where they are so they can make sure that they're out. But we still have a uh, large police presence here, including federal agents, and we're going to continue to monitor the situation here at the scene. And um, again, every time our chopper flies over the facility, we see more people leaving the building, and I'm sure they have to get those people out, interview them, identify them, and then get them and out. It's it speaks it what go ahead I was just saying it speaks to just, you know, what a large facility this is. What Rite Aid has said is it was a, a, a building adjacent to a larger building, a support building, but just, you know, how, uh, you know, how big the, of a project this is that still four hours later they're trying to get people out of the building here at the scene. Yeah, and 
uh, if you've been following us this uh, today, I know, Mike, that you said you heard a bang earlier, but we still have no idea what that was. <laughs> No, some some people had said that they thought it might have been from Aberdeen Proving Ground. That may be. Oh, I was oh, just, oh. you know, reporting an observation. Uh -huh. But but I don't know. I don't know. You know. Uh, I mean, I think the important thing is to say that uh, there's no threat here at the scene, and they have the lone suspect in custody. Absolutely. But you forget Aberdeen Proving Ground is yeah. so close by. Close to there. Um, as we go to another reporter, thank you, Mike. I just wanted to one against uh, once again sure. say, uh, in case you have not heard it, there is a hotline 410 -838 800. That is the hotline that the sheriff's office has set up to talk to people who are concerned about someone who may have been in the building when this happened. 410-838-5800. Obviously, that is going to be a busy line. Call if you have a loved one, a friend, a family member who you suspect might have been at the scene. Call that number. And uh, it's also on WJZ.com if you didn't have a pencil, as I said out loud. Okay, and we're going to go back to Kimberly Eaton, who is live. Uh, Kimberly, can you hear me? Yes, Jess, I have you. So Mike was just talking about how four hours after the first shots were fired, just after nine this morning, uh, they are still busing people who survived the shooting, who may have been inside that building. They're still busing people away from the scene, and that tells you how many people may have been in this facility. Rick Ritter reporting a thousand people possibly inside that uh, Rite Aid warehouse. And just in the last few minutes, we saw uh, one of those buses just leave Level Village Road here. This is where authorities are asking people to meet their family members, their loved ones who may have been inside or may have been at the scene of this shooting. Now, again, this is on Level Village Road. Down the way from us here is a volunteer firehouse. This has been established as the Family Reunification Center. And Denise just read the Family Reunification Center, excuse me, the Family Reunification Hotline number. You can also call that for information. And what we've seen so often in these situations, and Rick and Mike both touched on this, how long it takes for this investigation to unfold, how long it takes to get information, because authorities have to be thorough, they have to be detailed, and this is all just beginning. And as that happens, uh, folks are being cleared away from the scene. And in these situations, a lot of times, uh, that means they may not have things with them, like their cell phone, other items they may have brought to work because they may have been rushed out of that building. And often in these situations, the whole area is locked down, so they can't get to their car. So that's the importance of county authorities setting up so quickly areas like this so that they can reconnect with your family members. So if you're having trouble getting in touch with someone, they're asking that you connect with them at the Family Reunification Center here on Level Village Road or try that hotline for more information. In the meantime, we're standing by again. We said, uh, I said, we just saw one of those buses that they're, they're using to transport people away from the scene leave here. And Mike's talking about how uh, the time constraints, how long it's taking to get people cleared and make sure they are cleared to leave that scene. And something to keep in mind, this is nine miles away from where that shooting happened. So just the travel time here is lengthy. So be patient. This is a slow process. But if you are looking for a family member or a loved one, again, the Family Reunification Center is on Level Village Road at the Volunteer Firehouse. Or you can call the hotline that is listed on WJZ.com. Denise and Jess. Yeah, and I, and I know you said it, but it's uh, that that uh, family Reunification Center is in Haverty Grace. So if, if you're not familiar with the roads in Haverty Grace, thank you, Kimberly. Um, and we'll be coming back to you in just a second. We're going to go now back to Devin Bartolotta, who is at uh, Hopkins Bayview, where about an hour ago or two hours ago, we heard from a doctor there about the four patients who were be tr being treated in the trauma center, which of course shows how significant their injuries were. Devin? Devin also said that there was a lot of security around, um, that people were there in um, bulletproof vests. It's unclear why. It's unclear what uh, the need for the increased security is. Um, and it's unclear where that suspect, uh, who is listed in critical condition, was taken. But we're trying to get Devin here. But in the meantime, there we go. Devin, can you hear us? I can hear you, Jess, yeah. Okay, what's the latest there at Hopkins? 
Uh, the latest here, uh, Dr. Raymond Fang told us a little bit earlier, it's business as usual, and we have not really seen too much out of the ordinary here, but there is a bit of increased security. Right at the bottom of the hill here where we are, there are uh, security vehicles that are blocking off the road, and we've also seen members of the security team that they're, that they're wearing bulletproof vests that say special, uh, special response unit, and they've been kind of walking up and along this area here. Now, Dr. Fang uh, told us he cannot confirm whether or not the suspected shooter in this situation has been brought here. He said they're all patients to him. I want to give you a, a hear at what he said earlier. About all I can tell you right now is that we received four uh, persons from the incident this morning. Uh, they all came to us as a level two trauma center serving this part of, of Maryland. Um, they're all under our care. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation that their families have been notified that they are here uh, and have been notified of their condition before we can give you any specifics about their conditions. So really all I can tell you is that we received four patients with gunshot wounds earlier today. Um, to us, they're all patients. We weren't there, so everything we know is second, third hand, so I really can't comment on whether one or not is, is the shooter. Now, again, we are, we're not quite sure where that shooter could be. If not here, there is a little bit of increased security. We just saw one of those security guards in the uh, special response unit vests walking down the hill here. Um, but we did have a photographer drive in moments ago. He says that no other streets are blocked off here. So it's just here that they're kind of focusing their attention and their security. So we are waiting for an update. We're supposed to hear more coming up at 2.30 this afternoon. Uh, perhaps by then, the police will have reached some of the family members, and we might be able to hear more about what patients Patients are being treated here, how old they are, whether they're male or female, the extent of their injuries, whether there was one gun, gunshot wound to, to them or multiple, how many people needed surgery. Right now, there are a lot of unknowns, and doctors in here are just doing their jobs trying to treat these patients and get them back uh, to health here. They've only been at the hospital now for about three and a half hours, so there's still a lot of questions unanswered. We're hoping to hear a little bit more coming up this afternoon. I'll send it back to you at Sal. Right. Thank you, Devin. And we we need to reiterate that um, with multiple victims, this is Hopkins Bayview, and they are confirming for us, uh, excuse me, victims. But obviously, a number of other hospitals are also treating mm -hmm. victims at this time. We have not heard from any of those hospitals, nor do we know how many people were taken exactly where. But this is the one who has been talking to us so far. And they certainly do that to spread it around so that there are enough resources at those hospitals, at those trauma centers to make sure that everyone is taken care of. We know that some of the uh, victims were taken up to Christiana Trauma Center up in Delaware as well. So um, we're going to go back now to Rick Ritter. And Rick, from uh, we keep taking this chopper shot showing that employees are still being evacuated hours after this occurred. This is quite a large facility. Absolutely. Rite Aid saying more than a thousand employees inside that facility so you can understand why it would be taking so long for employees, witnesses to be taken out of there and be put on those buses. And also you guys pointed out that at least four people were taken to Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center by ground. That is just there. That is only one hospital. So we know multiple people were killed and multiple people were wounded with four alone taken to Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center. That gives you an idea that several people were obviously uh, victims of this heinous act of uh, crime here. But authorities, I spoke with them a short time ago. We're hoping to have another media update here, maybe within the next hour or so. They tell me they're trying to piece together some last in minute information that's coming in here. Hopefully going to be doing another briefing here within the next hour or so, so we can get some more information and find out exactly what happened here as the details continue to unfold. Obviously, plenty of unanswered questions. So many people want to know why this happened. More information about the suspect and the suspect's background. You better believe that right now the ATF, the FBI, they are digging into that suspect background going through cell phones, computers, speaking with their family members, neighbors, anybody they know, trying to get an idea of why this all unfolded. Chopper 13 was over the scene earlier when those witnesses and employees at the Rite Aid Distribution Center were being taken out of there and being put on buses. The call came in around 9 o'clock and Hartford County Sheriff and also the Hartford County Executive, they've been talking about it all day long about the response and how great the response was. Unfortunately, they have a lot of experience with these mass shootings here in Hartford County. We've been chatting about it all day long. The 
third mass shooting in three years. Of course, the other one taking place about 11 months ago, just about seven or eight miles from here, uh, from where this shooting took place at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. So uh, another tragedy that this community is becoming all too familiar with, unfortunately. A heartbreaking day here in Hartford County, and authorities right now trying to piece this all together. And hopefully, we're going to have another media update here within the next hour or so. All right, thank you, Rick. Yes, and I'm joined now by Mayor Bubala. Um, it is a heartbreaking day in Hartford County, but we also do not know where those uh, the injured and the dead uh, live. They worked uh, at this distribution center in Hartford County, but they could come from all over the state. It's an enormous facility. All right, also our reporter Kimberly Eden is there um, in another area surrounding. Where exactly are you, Kimberly? In relation well, to the scene. Right now we are on Level Village Road in Haver de Grace. Oh, in relation to the scene, we're about nine miles from the scene, so quite a ways away. Mm -hmm. And we were talking earlier about how um, the media staging area was out of viewing area of the scene, and now we're quite a ways away. And that gives authorities room to work as they uh, continue this investigation still in the very earliest early stages. And you've heard Mike say it, you've heard Rick say it, it is a slow process getting folks bust away from that scene and brought out here okay. to the Family Reunification Center. But okay. this is where they are asking family members to come to meet with their loved ones. They are asking folks, this is just in there, asking folks to not call the Level Volunteer Fire Company for information. They have specifically set up a hotline through Harford County. You can find that on our website, WJZ.com, or you can come here to Level Village Road in Habitat Grace and meet up with your loved ones. Rick was saying this is a slow process to get information out there as this investigation continues. But if you are specifically looking for information on someone who may have been inside at the time of the shooting, who may have been near the scene at the time of the shooting, this is the place to come. That is the hotline to call. And we have seen one of those buses leave here recently. We've seen more and more cars start to pass through the police barricades here behind us. So it looks like folks are listening to that. They're coming here. And as, uh, as this continues to develop, we will, of course, bring you any new information. But for now, back to you. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. And our coverage will continue. Stay with us. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. All right. Thank you for bearing with us as we continue to follow the breaking news. It has now been more than four hours since reports first came in just after 9 a.m. of shots fired at this workplace in Aberdeen, Harford County. That's right. It's a, a, a Rite Aid distribution center, an enormous facility. It was a building adjacent, an adjacent support building in which the shooting took place. If you are just joining us, catching you very, very quickly, all we have been told so far is that sadly there are multiple fatalities as well as multiple injuries. However, the situation has been contained. The lone suspect, it's believed the lone suspect, uh, has, is in custody in critical condition. So therefore, the, there is no danger to the community. The uh, sheriff has reassured everyone of that. And at this point, it is uh, treating the injured and notifying Correct. the families. Correct. And then reunifying some of the families of the workers who will be taken to that Close center. To a thousand. And just yeah. about uh, 45 minutes ago, we're getting our confirmed information, of course, through Hartford County Sheriff's, and they are tweeting out information. About 45 minutes ago, they said anybody who is still inside the building to call 911 so deputies can locate you. And we know just from covering workplace shootings and going through some training that they go room by room and that's what they're doing the different offices even though it's probably a warehouse and it's quite open inside they still have to comb through every inch of that place and they were hoping that they could find everyone and if not that anyone left inside should call 911. And if you uh, stay with us, you'll see our chopper continues to capture the scene as people leave, slowly leave the buildings, are identified, are interviewed. Mike Helgren was uh, just about the first reporter, probably the first reporter on the scene this morning, right after this occurred, shortly after nine, has been there ever since. And uh, we keep trying to grasp at what information we can get, Mike. 
Well, I tell you, just about uh, less than a minute ago, we saw about six different police vehicles leave the scene, including a militarized vehicle. Uh, they, this is the same group that came rushing in uh, just before 10 o'clock uh, when we had set up here uh, just outside the entrance to this business park. So we are seeing still some activity here. They're about, we're told, to open up the roads around here. They had been closed since this started. Started. The sheriff saying that they responded to this scene within just five minutes. But um, so we're told things are, are in, in small ways getting back to normal with them opening these roads again. And again, more police vehicles leaving the scene, trying to make sure that they've got this area cleared. Uh, as far as the suspect, they have a lot of questions they need to answer. They did not take questions at their last press briefing, but we're hoping to get more information on the lone shooter in this case, uh, more information on the weapon used, something, Denise, that you have brought up, that there was a single handgun, they say, that was used, yet we're talking about multiple victims and multiple fatalities. Uh, and so, uh, you know, what, what, you know, more information about the, about the weapon that was used, where it came from, about this person, uh, and, and a possible motive, whether there were any warning signs, whether there were any mental health issues, that's something that we don't know, that we hope to learn as this investigation progresses. All we know, multiple victims, uh, uh, you know, uh, multiple fatalities, four people taken to Johns Hopkins Bayview, others transported to other local hospitals. We don't know where the shooter was taken. Uh, shooter was in critical condition um, at that last update that they gave us, and we've heard an outpouring of comments from lawmakers, their thoughts and prayers with the victims and families impacted by the situation here. The governor has promised his full support. Um, we have federal agents here on the ground from the ATF, DEA, FBI, all assisting in this. The ATF, a critical role uh, with trying to uh, provide information about that weapon and just find out why this happened, why they're seeing this again. And another aspect of this, the critical role in the training uh, that not only the officers here on the scene received, but also the paramedics so that they could come in as quickly as possible and take care of those who were injured. Um, we saw the medevac. Uh, you know, land here um, before noon today and then take off again, presumably with more victims here. But I want to reiterate from what the sheriff has said that there is no further danger here on the ground. So we did see vehicles leaving and we do know that they're going to reopen the roads uh, around this facility. Um, they're hoping to, uh, you know, in the next little bit. They didn't give us an exact timeline. We just had to move our vehicle uh, out of the roadway here. Um, um, still uh, uh, a lot of questions and we're trying to get answers to them and, and why this would happen again here, something that people unfortunately have had to go through in this county before. Mike, we've been seeing a school bus, uh, as we've seen a number of them this morning, slowly work its way through. We sure. can only assume they're taking more of those workers to their reunification center. Um, which means that their job is still remains. I have one quick question for you, which is that you've sure. been there as there was law enforcement arriving on mass. Are they beginning to leave? Does it appear as though the situation is starting to dissipate? It does. It does. And. Uh uh, from what we can tell you is yeah, it was definitely more tense uh, before. We don't know the exact timeline, where they found this uh, lone suspect, uh, where in the building this happened, was it inside and outside. So as some of those pieces come together and more of that information becomes public, you know, it will, it will help us understand exactly what happened here. But uh, definitely less tense, but still uh, law enforcement presence. Um, here on the scene and we expect that there will be for some time to come because we're still very early in this uh, as it happened uh, just after nine o'clock this morning. All right, Mike, thank you so much. We'll continue to check back in with you. The most critical aspect of the information that needs to go out now is there is no threat to the community right now. The lone suspects in custody, in critical condition. We're gonna go back to Devin Bartolotta. She's at Hopkins Bayview with more on what's developing there. Devin? 
Mary, and we, we still don't know if that shooting suspect is here at Bayview. Uh, the doctor who spoke with us at 12:30 this afternoon says he cannot confirm that, and police have not yet said where that person has been taken. We have been talking a lot this afternoon about increased security around the Bayview campus. I want to give you a look at what I'm talking about. You can see here there are two vehicles here that are blocking the road. This is along Mason Lord Drive uh, here on the Bayview campus, kind of the back side of the campus here, and you can see those two vehicles there that are. Um, they're blocking off the entrance, and there's also at least two security guards uh, in bulletproof vests. It's a special response unit on them for Johns Hopkins security, and they've been kind of rerouting cars and really keeping an eye on this area. But there's no explanation for that right now. The doctor who spoke with us earlier says it is business as usual inside the hospital, but we don't have eyeballs in there. We're not quite sure uh, if there is any type of increased security. He also says that he will not be able to tell us if he has talked to any of the patients. Had any conversations with them about what might have happened today? Uh, and right now, we don't know very much about the patients that are in there. There are four people that were brought here by ambulance. We don't know their conditions, their ages, their genders, nothing yet, except that they all had gunshot wounds. So we're waiting for an update. In less than an hour, we are supposed to get an update from Johns Hopkins Bayview about what exactly uh, happened to those four people, what their conditions are, as well as maybe an explanation for the increased security that's here. So we'll all keep. You, uh, we'll keep you updated on that. That update is set to happen at 2.30 this afternoon. I thank you, Devin. About an hour from now. Something, um, something nice, you know, uh, brothers and sisters in blue, as we, as we hear yes. them say. Anne Arundel County Police tweeting out, uh, we know all too well what our brothers and sisters to the north are going through. Prayers to the victims, their loved ones, and the first responders who will undoubtedly take the images they are forced to see home. Absolutely. Very and I was poignant. seeing on Facebook and other places in social media, family members of Hartford County Sheriff's deputies saying, can we not get a break? No. It has yeah. been a tremendous amount. Really? of emergency situations and tragedies that they have ha had to deal with um, last year and when two sheriff's deputies were killed in uh, previous years. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going back now to Rick Ritter, who is uh, also at the scene and has been all morning and um, just talking about all of the law enforcement that responded there physically today, Rick, as well as those who uh, have the Hartford County Sheriff's Department in their, in their, ma their thoughts today. Well, I can tell you, just coming to the scene this morning along I-95, we saw several dozens or so unmarked police cars racing up 95, trying to get to the scene. Even when we pulled off the exit and we got closer to the shooting, still dozens of unmarked cars trying to get in there with their lights and sirens, racing up to the scene. So uh, a tremendous response it's been in Hartford County Sheriff and Hartford County Executive Barry Glassman talking about that this morning, about how great this response was. Deputies arriving in EMS as well within about five minutes or so after the shooting was first reported. So he had said, County Executive Barry Glassman, that they did such a great job of rendering aid, hopefully stopping this situation before it could have been a lot worse and getting these people the help that they need uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the sheriff spoke a little while ago, about an hour ago or so. We're hoping to get another update here within the next hour. But here's the latest from the sheriff, the latest information that we have right now. We have set up a family reunification center working with the county executive and our county partners at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. And, and again, this investigation is very early. Um, I and our office will be happy to give you more information as it becomes available. Again, I ask you to uh, keep the uh, victims of today's uh, tragic event in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, and I also you know, have to uh, thank our fellow first responders. We have responders here from the federal government who were on scene within minutes, the FBI, the DEA, ATF. Uh, state police, MDTA police, natural resources, the local municipal departments of Aberdeen, Haverty, Grace, and Bel Air, uh, you name it, as we've seen, unfortunately, in our community before, when something like this happens, uh, you can't have enough police and you can't have them fast enough, and we are very fortunate here that everyone works so well together and responds so well together that we were on scene and able to get as much aid in as quickly as possible.
You heard the sheriff there listing off a slew, listing off a slew of agencies that are now involved in this investigation and helped respond on the scene earlier today. Of course, the ATF, the FBI, they're now going to be digging into the suspect's background. Now the lone suspect is in custody, but in critical condition, trying to find out more about exactly why this happened, digging into cell phones, computers. It's going to be a very lengthy investigation. Obviously, a lot of people out there want answers. They want them now. Not always the case with these investigations. They can take hours. They can take days, maybe even weeks until we find out exactly what took place up here in Hartford County. Back to you. People working in this workplace. There have been difficult hours for family members of loved ones who work there. I was corresponding just quickly on Facebook before I came in today with a woman who had posted publicly. She said, does anyone know where my brother is? So I messaged her. I said, and it was an hour or two ago. I said, have you heard from him? And as I'm on Facebook message with her. She said, no, I have not. She messaged a coworker to see if they could find him. And then right when I was typing back, she said, he just texted. Oh, thank goodness. She said, thank you, Jesus, he is fine. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, and that was three or four hours after uh, yeah, the initial yeah, yeah. shooting. So and it's just horrible. And multiply that by the thousand people who work in that facility. Yes. Even if Even if you knew that your loved one is a totally other part of the building. Correct. Because this is a huge facility, that, uh, and it was an adjacent support building where this took place. The Shooting, you'd be scared to death. I'm going to say it again because for this woman and her friends yes. and who may not know, the hotline 410-838-5800. 838-5800. That is the official Sheriff Department hotline. Don't call any other number. Call that number and they should be able to give you what information they have. Once again, they have the job of identifying who these victims may be because the right. first desire is to save their life, then to figure out who they are, then to notify the family and then to also interview all of those other people who were in the building. We're going to go right it. to Mike Halgren with the uh, update from Mike. He is very close to the scene. Mike? Yeah, we, we just wanted to show you just a moment ago an, another school bus left the scene here. Uh, it was not full. It probably looked like maybe there was eight or nine people inside that school bus. This is the fourth bus that we've seen leaving the scene. There were three that left uh, the scene much earlier today and then they had brought in another school bus. So uh, they are taking more people out of here. It's a long process, right? So this was, you know, 9-11 when police first arrived on the scene this morning. And now so many hours later, we're finally seeing yet another school bus uh, leave the scene. And while there's no danger to the general public here right now, police continue to investigate what happened and they continue to be a presence in the building. And we're not just talking about uh, the Harford County Sheriff's Office, but we're talking about multiple law enforcement agencies, including federal law enforcement agencies. So they have to secure that, you know, clear that scene, secure that crime scene. This is all part of the ongoing investigation into a lone gunman who came, or we don't know if it was a man or a woman, but a lone suspect, an armed suspect who came here this morning and opened fire, um, killing multiple people. We don't have an exact confirmed number from the sheriff's office, but killing multiple people and wounding multiple people. We know at least four were taken to Johns Hopkins Bayview. Others were taken to trauma centers all across the area. Uh, one of several high-profile shootings that we've had in the Harford County community. So we're continuing to keep an eye on this investigation. Um, but uh, we did see that that last uh, school bus leave the scene here, and we're seeing, um, you know, an, an outpouring of support for those people, those families who were affected by this. A very emotional day here at what remains uh, still, uh, you know, a, a scene with a lot of police officers here at this very large large distribution center. They've been telling us they're going to reopen the, the roads around here. It has not happened yet, but they're, they're slowly trying to get things to go back to normal. And, uh, you know, we're still seeing a presence out here and hoping to get more information about that suspect in this case who is in critical condition at a local hospital. We don't know which one, but we've talked to so many people out here uh, who uh, were just, you know, uh, traumatized by, you know, what they had seen um, and, and just the, the large, such a large response. They didn't know what was going on initially. Thankfully, right now, there's no further threat, but uh, they're, they're going to be releasing more information about this investigation and we're going to continue to stay here on the scene and bring you what we can.
Before you go, um, earlier, much earlier, you talked about that gray Honda Civic that they put crime tape around and took out of the scene. Is that the sure. only vehicle you've seen them seize as evidence? Because that might tell us something. Yes. Oh, and it, it is. Oh, and we're seeing... Oh, here, maybe they're starting to open up the, the uh, road here. We see um, several state trooper vehicles that are coming here to the scene. I think they're starting to open this up for traffic. So just by the way, uh, a, a, a small step toward some normalcy here. You start to see uh, cars moving uh, on, uh, on this road here in front of this facility. But yes, we saw, so it was a gray Honda Civic. It had crime tape uh, like draped around it, and then uh, we saw them tow that away. Um, I don't know the connection to it. I don't know, you know, whether it, it involved the suspect in this case, whether it was something involving, um, you know, a victim. We don't know. Uh, but it was just an observation that we saw out here earlier today. And uh, again, now they're starting to reopen the road here in front of this. So that's another sign that things are, you know, slowly returning to normal here at the scene. All right. Well, that is that is a positive sign, especially for people who work there. Absolutely. And who can go home and tell their family they're okay. Correct. And for the others who are at the uh, Family reunif Reunification Center, they can then um, touch base with their relatives right. and try to get back to some And that's where, that's where Kimberly is. Okay, people fantastic. Go, yeah. Have you seen families show up, Kimberly? Have you seen people go in? Well, Denise, just to put this into perspective, you can see how far we're actually pushed back from where families are meeting each other. It's all the way down the road. But what we have seen, and what I can tell you, is that we've seen a couple of those yellow school buses that Mike's been talking about um, leaving the scene, busing people here. We've seen a couple of those coming out. We also just saw a few minutes ago a uh, Harford County Sheriff's Office van that looked like it was just full of people. So not sure what's happening with that, but we have seen a lot of folks coming and going. And I do want to touch on something that Mike was just talking about. He was telling you guys about watching law enforcement attempt to secure this scene, this massive scene, this distribution center of a thousand employees and the surrounding areas and talking about the lengthy process they have to go to to secure that scene so that they can investigate and gather evidence. Now in the reverse, it will take some time I would think from experience, from watching other situations like this unfold, it will take some time when they reopen that scene to people. And in the meantime, a lot of these employees, they may have their cars locked inside that crime scene tape. Who knows what kind of personal belongings they may have left inside their workplace when they were either escorted out or asked to leave. So that's why this is so important to have this family reunification center and to have that hotline set up for those folks who may not have left uh, with a car or a cell phone or any of those things they can come here you can call that number in order to reconnect to find your loved one your family members your friends who may have been inside so again this is in haver de grace this is on level village road at the fire station down here now authorities are asking that you not call the volunteer firehouse for information again you can call that hotline there is a hotline specifically set up for family members for friends looking for their loved ones the information for that is listed on our website at wjz.com we have seen other entities show up you to know support what? Hey, the people uh, the people who survived this shooting uh, we're going to speak with the Red Cross here momentarily, and we'll be bringing you any information they can provide as soon as we do that. But for now, back to you. I thank you, Kimberly. And we will come back to you in just a few moments. Absolutely. For now, we're going to go over to Jessica. She's in the cube following what's going on about this shooting on social media. Jess? Yeah, Denise, we have been talking all day about what a huge role social media plays in this type of coverage of these horrific events. Governor Larry Hogan just tweeting now, the First Lady and I are grieving for the loss of life in today's shooting in Harford County and praying that those who were injured fully recover. I remain in close contact with Harford County officials and state and local law enforcement as they continue to investigate. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens today, Don Martindale, the defensive coordinator, saying our thoughts and prayers are with the people in Aberdeen. It's a tragedy. Let's take a listen. Tragedy. We don't know the ins and outs of what happened, but you know, we've seen the news just like 
Okay, and my sympathies go out to the victim's family. This is from Andy Harris and friends of the shooting today in Aberdeen, Maryland. We are praying for your well-being and are extremely heartbroken by this tragic event. And Travis Hash, the news coming out of my hometown of Aberdeen today is sickening. Political debates will be sparked, but I think the greater question is why do people want to shoot others in the first place? We may or may not have a gun problem, but we certainly have a humanity problem. And as we've been saying, this is the third shooting here in Maryland in a public space since March. And uh, our crews were at this scene uh, just 11 months ago in Edgewood. So Mary and Denise, unfortunately, becoming all too familiar. Back to you. Absolutely. I like that phrase, a humanity problem. Correct. And I know that the sheriff said when he started his press briefing, he said, here we stand, another tragic event in Hartford County, stood here before, standing here again. It's, it's very difficult for even them to, to conceive that we are dealing with another workplace tragedy. Yeah, and Sheriff Gaylor, who's a terrific uh, person and very devoted to his county, uh, knows that it, it is not a violent county it's not no, like it's I you know, know. it's, it's a, know. a beautiful place to live and to raise your family and your children and it's just that as i've been saying all, all morning a person with a gun can create a lot of tragedy and some of those Heartbreak. victims are being treated at hopkins bayview where devin bartolotta continues to report from for us today devin Mary, so far we know that four people were brought here to Hopkins Bayview. They told us earlier they were prepared for as many as they could really handle. They say as soon as they heard there was a mass shooting, they were prepared to triage patients and get them in to treatment. They ended up getting four people here. They say that all of them had gunshot wounds, but right now we do not know the seriousness of those injuries. But we do know that there is some extra security out here. We've been talking about it all afternoon. And here it is behind me here. There's two vehicles. Here, these are both Johns Hopkins vehicles that are kind of blocking the roadway here along Mason Lord Drive. And on the other side of that security vehicle, there are two security guards that are wearing bulletproof vests that say they are with the special response unit. They've been kind of walking around, rerouting traffic away from this area. So far, we do not know why, and we also don't know where the suspected shooter is. We know that that person is in critical condition and is in a hospital, but the hospital here at Bayview could not confirm whether that person was here. In less than an hour, we are supposed to get an update from them on the conditions of the patients here, and we'll also be asking them about the increased security out here at the uh, medical center. And um, that's also set to happen at 2.30 here at Bayview, so we will, of course, keep you updated on that. All right. Have you seen uh, any activity in terms of family members as though perhaps people have been notified? We have not really, it's, it's, Dr. Fang said earlier, it's business as usual inside, and that's really what it looks like out here. It does not uh, appear to be anything more than a regular day at the hospital if you don't count the cars behind me here. We've seen some people in and out, some that look like patients that are unaffiliated with this incident, kind of trickling out, people just waiting, you know, uh, on the phone, whatever. But no one out here that seems to be re reuniting with a family member that's injured. But there are, of course, other entrances to this hospital, this medical center. Here, so this, we're, we're not quite sure if those people have been notified yet, uh, or whether or not even the people who are in this building live in the state. So there's a lot of unanswered questions here, a lot of information that we are still waiting for. Thank you so much. We'll continue to check back in with you. And frankly, that's why we're staying on the air because we are awaiting another press briefing from the Hartford County Sheriff's Department. They weren't able to say that much during that initial press briefing and there's still so many unanswered questions that hopefully in this next one they can um, answer some of the vital questions here yeah what they did do which was very helpful was that there was such an enormous amount of rumor going Correct. around that at least they did clarify everyone was saying a certain number for dead they have not said how many have died they did use the word multiple and they used the word multiple for injuries as well um, also there was concern whether the suspect was still at large they did confirm the suspect was in custody and again in critical condition they also said interesting interestingly that it was uh, a lone uh, gunman and that no officers 
uh, fired. No officer fired their weapon. Um, so that would imply, but that's all it is, is, a, is a, they, it implies that perhaps it was a self-inflicted wound. Right. And they we'll would not verify that. that. Correct. And yeah. we may not get that information in the next few minutes either from them when they, when they have their next briefing. But the difference, Denise, and I know that you and I did some of the live coverage 11 months ago when there was the workplace shooting at the absolute um, advanced granite solutions rather in Edgewood the suspect was not in custody right. until hours and hours right, later and right. so that was uh, the critical difference here is that there was still fear within the community many many places remained on lockdown people did not know at that point that he would had driven to Delaware but I know that you and Jessica were talking about um, how close 95 is to mm -hmm. this area and um, in that situation the suspect did go into Delaware for another domestic related situation up there he was sentenced to 40 years in prison in Delaware and will serve uh, trial here as uh, well. Rodney Prince? Yep, oh, Rodney yep, Prince. Yep, yep. Um, you, you're looking from our chopper, who has been doing a terrific job, who's ever at the controls up there all morning long. But that is the facility where this shooting took place. <coughs> Excuse me, it is a Rite Aid distribution center. It took place in a building that is an adjacent support building, but the entire center has had to be evacuated and searched in order to be able to guarantee that there is no threat left to anyone so that workers can go back eventually back to the job that's um, right and th it, their day has been disrupted as well that is the enterprise business park it has several businesses including Zenith freight lines true air Clorox company and Maine's paper and food and I know when the chopper went close in on some of these you could see some of those were Maine's paper and food uh, cabs, trucks in their cabs there as well. So there are many, many businesses, um, more than a thousand employees in Enterprise Business Park uh, right off of uh, Perryman near uh, Chelsea Road as well. Yeah, wh what we wish we could tell you, and we cannot, is how many have been dead and injured and who they are. And of course, the big question, which we won't be able to answer if ever for you is why. But we can tell you at least that the threat is no longer present in the community. And it looked like when we were with Mike Helgren a moment ago, they're beginning to open up roads. Let's go to Rick Ritter, who's also on the scene, and see if there's any change in the security around you at this time. Rick? Well, Denise, Mary, I want to start with this. We are going to get some answers to these questions that we have been waiting for because I'm told there will be a media press conference at 3 o'clock. That has now been announced. So about an hour and from now, an hour and two minutes, we're going to be getting some answers to these questions that we have been waiting for throughout the day. I'm also told that they're possibly hoping if they get the information they're looking for within the next hour or so, this could be the last media briefing for the day. If they have all the information that they want to put out there as far as the suspect goes and an exact number on maybe how many people were killed and how many people people were injured in this heinous act here. So a media briefing 3 o'clock this afternoon, about an hour from now, we're going to have a whole lot more answers, which is certainly a good thing here. Obviously, the public dying to know exactly what is going on and what took place, why this took place, if we ever get the answer to that question, Denise, as you mentioned, which we may never get the answer to that question. So Chopper 13, they were over the scene a little while ago. They may still be up right now. Uh, people, dozens or so, were being evacuated out of this warehouse. The Rite Aid Distribution Center, where the shooting took place around 9 o'clock this morning. We know multiple people were killed. We know multiple people were injured. And we know that the lone suspect has been taken into custody and is in critical condition. We also know that no shots were fired by law enforcement here. And we've been chatting about the response all day. Carver County Executive Barry Glassman saying that authorities did such a great job responding to this. Unfortunately, they have a lot of experience with these tragedies. All right. Thank you very much, Rick. And uh, our coverage is going to continue in just moments. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. And hours after a workplace shooting is reported at 9 a.m., we should reset the stage for our viewers if you're just joining us now at the top of the hour. I'm Mary Bubala. And I'm Denise Koch. Um, the shooting that Mary was talking about took place at approximately 9.06 this morning. Within three minutes, there was tremendous response by the Hartford County Sheriff's Office. It took place at a very large warehouse facility in a Rite Aid distribution center, a building adjacent to a support building to that Rite Aid distribution.
distribution center. And uh, AP had reported earlier that three people were killed and multiple injured, but then the Harford County Sheriff's deputies came out and said that they were just saying multiple fatalities and multiple injuries. So that is where we are right now. We are going to go to Mike Helgren. He has been live on the scene since just moments after this um, call came out to update what you've been seeing, Mike. And I know you were just mentioning that some of the roads may be opening. They're open. You can see the big truck behind me. There is a long line of large 18 wheelers coming down the road here because this area has been closed off for so long. A large distribution center here. And uh, so they've been waiting to come in for hours now. And now we're seeing all those large trucks coming in. We've also seen some people leaving that warehouse. I talked to a woman named Vanetta, and we'll bring her to you later uh, when we can, we can get it fed into the station. But uh, she was in a building adjacent to where this happened and she said she was just so scared for her life they were making uh, messages over the public address system to you know uh, uh, stay in place and uh, she was trying to com she was communicating with her family um, including her sister Kim and they had quite a, a reunion here just outside uh, this uh, distribution center a few moments ago hugging each other and Kim said that she was going to put a bulletproof vest on and come here and get her sister. She was so worried watching the news coverage of this, worried that something had happened to her sister. Turns out her sister was like right in the building next to this. Um, but this was a, a huge scare for that family. We know tonight that other families are not as lucky as her. But, um, you know, she was just happy to be out of there, happy to be out alive. Her, her sister was just overjoyed to see her. Some of the emotions that we're now seeing. So we talked about maybe a small return to some normalcy here and, and part of that is uh, reopening the road here and again you're seeing more 18-wheelers um, uh, driving through here they had been blocked from coming in since shortly after this shooting around nine o'clock this morning more right aid trucks here a very large uh, uh, campus and they had to make sure that everyone was out of there we saw the final school bus leave about 15 minutes ago and uh, so there are, are still police here on the scene. They're not letting anyone in the actual entrance to the warehouse. However, we can tell you they've reopened the road and some people were allowed to go out and are being reunited with their families. Even here at the scene, I know Kimberly's at a reunification center, but some, some people are uh, reuniting with their families here at the scene. John, we should, I assume, imply from the fact that they're allowing those uh, trucks to go in that a number of the buildings have been cleared, secured, and they're allowing uh, business to go on. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I can tell you, uh, well, there's another big truck going here, but um, when, when that passes by, you can see that the actual entrance uh, remains blocked off. They've got cones, they've got an officer there, but at least they're, they're allowing traffic to go by here, and a lot of these uh, large trucks have been held up since, uh, since this happened when they started closing down all the roads in this area. So, uh, you know, a bit of a change there, but, but as for getting into that, you know, actual area and the entrance here, uh, they, they still have that blocked off, um, but, but some of these roads are, are, are reopening and, and people are being allowed to leave and, uh, you know, being reunited with their families, and it was a beautiful thing to watch here uh, just a few moments ago. Yes, that's great. Yes. Thank you. And certainly some tense moments for parents whose children were at the Church Creek Elementary School that was put on modified lockdown. That was lifted about an hour ago, but at 3 o'clock is about the time that um, the children would be getting out of school, so parents um, anxiously uh, getting together with them and giving them hugs and, and glad everything's okay there as well. Yeah. Um, he mentioned that Kimberly is near the family Reunification Center. Let's go back to Kimberly Eaton right now. And uh, I know you said you'd seen some school buses come and go um, that we assume were bringing people from the warehouse, Kimberly, right? Yeah, Denise, it's tough because we're pushed uh, back so far to give these family members privacy. So it's tough to say exactly how many people are here at this point. I spoke with someone who had been inside, and she said about 20 to 30 family members are still here waiting. And I just, just um, did just speak with my photographer Norris and he says he thinks as many as four school buses have already been here and we have seen some vans from Harford County Sheriff's Office that also looks like they were full of people leaving this area but this is where 
Uh, the sheriff's department, the county is asking that you come to if you are still trying to connect with a family member, a friend, a loved one. This is on Level Village Road, back down the street here behind us. In Havre de Grace is the Level Volunteer Firehouse. That is where a lot of these uh, folks are staging right now as they wait to find their family, friends, and loved ones. It's also where some agencies are staging to provide assistance to the people that may have been directly affected by this mass shooting. We just spoke with the Red Cross a few minutes ago. They were telling us uh, they got called out to the scene this morning, and they are now here to provide things like mental health care um, that, that will be so vital for the folks that may have witnessed this, may have been touched by this violence in any way. And not only are they here on this scene, they are also trying to connect with everyone who comes to this area uh, to, to give them information, to reach out to them later, to follow up as the days go on to see if they're not ready to talk today, if they're not ready to uh, meet with any therapists, any people providing mental health care today, if they would like to in the days to come. Because again, this is this is hours ago that this shooting began. This is still very new, and there are many, many people who may have been touched by this tragedy. You can see behind us right now, Bell Air Volunteer Fire Company come in. We've also seen uh, what appear to be police chaplains come in here to provide support. We've seen EMS crews. So there are multiple agencies here to help these people. But again, if you are still trying to connect with someone who you may, who you believe may have been touched by this mass shooting. They're asking that you come here to Level Village Road in Haver de Grace to the fire company, or again, you can call the hotline that's listed on our website. Either way can get you back in touch with your family and friends. All right, thank you, Kimberly. I, you. It is on our website. If you have a pencil and you're holding it right now, I'll just give you that number. It's 410-838-5800. 410-838-5800. Uh, if you have someone that you know or a member of your family who works in that center and you're concerned about their, their whereabouts. That's right, and hopefully those... Uh, reunifications are going on and people are seeing their loved ones and feeling better about what happened today. All right, we're going to go back to Devin Bartolotta. As we have been quoting the sheriff, Sheriff Gaylor, there are multiple victims and multiple injured, but we know at least that four of the injured are at Hopkins Bayview and that's where Devin is. Devin? Denise, that's right. We got an update from the head of the Trauma Medical Center here at Johns Hopkins Bayview. He said that four patients were brought here this morning around 10 a.m., about an hour after that shooting was called in. They were brought in as priority one patients because all four of them had gunshot wounds, but he really couldn't say much else. He could not tell us how old those people were, besides that they were all adults. He could not tell us male or female. He could not say whether they had multiple gunshot wounds or not, and could not give us the conditions. All of this is being because their families had not yet been contacted and police were working on that today, trying to notify their family members that their loved one was here and was in the hospital. Some of those people underwent surgery. So coming up in just about 20 minutes here, we're expected to get an update on the people that are here and the situation that's here. But I want to give you a uh, quick listen to what the doctor said earlier today about who is here. About all I can tell you right now is that we received four uh, persons from the incident this morning. Uh, they all came to us as a level two trauma center serving this part of, of Maryland. Um, they're all under our care. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation that their families have been notified that they are here uh, and have been notified of their condition before we can give you any specifics about their conditions. So really all I can tell you is that we received four patients with gunshot wounds earlier today. Um, to us, they're all patients. We weren't there, so everything we know is second, third hand, so I really can't comment on whether one or not is, is the shooter. Now, what you just heard there was, uh, you know, the doctor saying he could not confirm whether or not the shooter was here. We know that the shooter is in custody and in critical condition at a hospital, but we don't know which hospital yet. There has been some increased security. You just saw a security van drive right behind me here. There are some blocking the road down there, as well as some men in bulletproof vests that were here earlier. So there is some increased security, and coming up in about 20 minutes, we're hoping to kind of iron out some more details here about who exactly is here and why there is some increased security. We're going to send it back to you.
Thank you. Thank you, Devin. So that news conference in about 20 minutes and in about 50 minutes, we're supposed to hear again from the Sheriff's Department in Hartford County. Correct. For now, we're going to rejoin Rick Ritter. He is live near the scene uh, for any updates. Rick, we saw in uh, Mike Helgren's live shots that some of the streets around him have been reopened. Have you noticed any uh, change? Well, where we are, the media staging area, most of the roads around here have not been shut oh. down in terms of being further away from the scene itself, which is behind my right shoulder, probably about a mile or two, maybe even more down the road. So around here, roads have been okay, uh, but closer to the scene, obviously, some of those roads still remain shut down, but are opening back up here as we approach about hours later from when this initial shooting took place around 9 o'clock this morning. We know the next media press briefing will be at 3 o'clock right here in this parking lot, Old Philadelphia Road and Short Lane. Hopefully Hopefully we're going to get some answers to the questions that we have been waiting for throughout the day following our in terms of the suspect itself, whether it's a male, whether it's a female, some information behind why this potentially took place and also a specific number on how many people were killed and how many people were wounded in this tragedy. Uh, we talk about investigators needing time to do their job and right now you have better believe that they are going through every inch of this warehouse trying to investigate, see if there's any evidence still left behind that is going to be crucial to this investigation. Of course, just about an hour ago, they were still evacuating employees out of this warehouse, a warehouse that we're told a Rite Aid distribution center where more than a thousand employees work. So we know multiple people were killed, multiple people were wounded, and about a thousand employees work inside this warehouse. We heard from the Hartford County Sheriff and the Hartford County Executive, Barry Glassman, a little while ago. Here's what they had to say. I followed this probably from the moment the call came in on our dispatch uh, and listened to the radio transmissions. Uh, unfortunately, in today's world, we have active shooter drilling and drills, and I can tell you and tell our Hartford County citizens that every agency performed at the top of their profession, and the response from all our allied agencies was great. Our volunteer fire and EMS system responded with medical units, so I am thankful to all the agencies that came out to help us today uh, to get through this, which is becoming a, a too often occurrence, not only in Harford County, and we will continue to talk about the response throughout the day. Deputies arriving within five minutes after the shooting took place, after the first call came out this morning. Obviously, a slew of agencies responded, and unfortunately, they have far too much experience in all this. Three mass shootings in three years right here in this district, District 34. Of course, the other one taking place about 11 months ago, literally about seven miles away from here where this shooting took place this morning. Uh, another unthinkable tragedy one Hartford County is becoming all too familiar with. All right, thank Thanks, you, Mike. Uh, excuse Rick. me, Rick. I think we're going to go to Mike Helgren right now, and I think you finally, have you been able to talk to some people who are finding their loved ones, Mike? We did. We're efforting to bring that to you. I'll just give you a little description. Uh, there was a, uh, a woman named Kim whose sister was just allowed out, and she said when she first heard the news of this, and she knows her sister works at this Rite Aid distribution center, she said there was just a knot in her stomach. She was sick. She didn't know what was happening. She was so worried for her sister. Her sister, Vanetta, actually works in a the larger building that's next door to this support building where the actual shooting happened and uh, but her, her sister was just allowed out of here and she says thank the Lord I said I, it was nerve-wracking I was so scared because they weren't getting a lot of information she was trying to be in touch with her family members trying to calm them them down but she was scared she said uh, you know she's just glad that she got out of there with her life that she wasn't wounded and injured as we know there were multiple fatalities multiple people okay. wounded in this and and uh, right now here at the scene, um, the road is reopened. A number of those big 18-wheelers, we were, were telling you, they, they've been uh, bottlenecked, blocked up here while they got through here. But they're still not allowing people to go uh, into the actual warehouse area. That's still um, a crime scene, still part of this investigation, which we're going to learn more about that at 3 o'clock today. Now, uh, we did speak to um, another woman who was uh, here earlier today, um, couldn't get to her home, uh, was very concerned. And this is what she told us, just a, a, an example of uh, what, what things were like as this was all unfolding after 9 o'clock this morning. It's been absolutely crazy. Everything's cut off. Uh, all the roads are cut off. Um, they're not even supposed to let cars down here, and they're just using any larger vehicles they're letting through. But uh, 
they're telling some people to divert through the graveyard somewhat, but there's so many cars that I think I counted at least 13 ambulances, and that's that was just when I was counting. And they put in a, a lot of emergency vehicles, there's like three choppers, they're still looking, it's still investigating. So uh, that was just a description of what it was like around 9.30 here this morning. And just very chaotic for the other people around this area who live in this community who were so concerned about what was going on and so stunned that this would happen here. Uh, a lone suspect in this case using a handgun, according to police, to pull off this tragedy. That person at last update was in critical condition at a local hospital. No word on the motive in this um, and we're going to try to bring you more sound with people as they are reuniting with their families here uh, but uh, you know I mean you can see there's still a police presence here they were able to evacuate people out over the many hours that this has been unfolding with four different school buses bring some of them to that reunification center where Kimberly is right now um, and uh, you know but, but th for those people who live through this they were they're never going to forget those moments uh, and uh, you know that gunfire that they heard as all of this unfolded police again saying that they got here within five minutes were quick to respond have that training but uh, you know it, even though uh, you know they have that it is still horrific for those people who've had to experience this for now we're live here uh, across the street from the distribution center and we'll send it back to you on TV Hill you know Mike uh, covering this living through this even living in this society it's easy to get a bit calloused but we have to remember that every single one of those victims has a family has a life and uh, brings heartbreak with what they're living through and our our great media partner the baltimore sun uh, one of the reporters just put a statistic that really knocked me over there have been three workplace shootings in this country in the last 24 hours Correct. this one and another one in wisconsin yeah. and one in pennsylvania within 24 hours so it's easy to sort of go oh it's another shooting it's another shooting but these are human beings with lives and loved ones and this reverberates as he just said reverberates through their entire families through their entire universes absolutely can't and forget that. and mike is going to stay with us because we're trying to get this sound of the kim who you just interviewed so our viewers can um hear her relief as well and as her describe the knot in her stomach as well but i know denise and mike we've all gone through active shooter training in our workplace and you learn the steps you run, you hide, or you fight. I mean, that is now in our collective knowledge yeah. of, of working in America these days. Um, but you never expect it. And, and we, we never. Can't. Yeah, yeah, and we can't get to the point where we just sort of say it's another shooting. No, I, I know. I mean, it's, it's, I told you this when you have young people in your life, they sort of take it for granted now. Oh, it's a shooting. Uh, that's that's horrible. Correct. Really. That's horrible. Mike, we now can uh, listen to Kim if you want to talk to us again about who she is. Sure. Sure. Uh, basically, this is Vanetta, uh, who works here, and Kim is her sister. Uh, and sh they both, you know, well, Vanetta was living this. Kim was waiting for her, trying to, she said, I would come up here with a bulletproof vest if I had to. I was going to get my sister out. And uh, they just reunited here a few moments ago. Let's take a listen. How does it feel to be out? Oh my God. Oh, so good. I'm, I'm so glad I'm out of there. You know, because it's devastating to work like that. And, you know, other people know people. I don't, I'm, I'm a two-month-old, a two-month associate. And, and I'm, you know, I'm really fresh. But people have been there for years and they know people. So everyone is just walking around mooping and, you know, yes. grieving for the people that's in liberty. Did you hear any of the gunfire? No. No, I didn't. Actually, I'm glad I didn't because I, I would have been there. Like, could you share your name or you, if you want to? Uh, my name is Vanetta Johnson. <laughs> Vanetta Johnson. And, yes. And, and you this is my I'm older Kim. sister. She yes, came I ran away to get my sister. How, how emotional was this for you? I cried for a while and my mother listened to my mother, so it was like, is my sister here or is she not? I can't get in touch with her on her phone. I can't get in touch with the warehouse worker, so the next thing to do is just ride out here and come get her. And that's what I did. I mean, we've so, seen too much of this. Yeah, too much, and it's just it's just not enough love out here, if you ask me. I can't put my mind, I can't say how, why they think like that, but I'm just glad my sister was okay. 
what's it like to see her right here? Hey, I ran to her. We might not talk every day, but that's my god dang old sister. You understand that love is real, and that's, that's, and that's, that's all. Right so we came and got my sister. I don't know what I did, but I was going to put a shield on to get her. You understand? So I'm glad that she's Wait, here. Tell, tell me what happened. You've been waiting for your sister all morning? Yeah, and I've been calling, and when we talked to her, they said that the, um, when, on the overhead pages, like, don't believe the rumors, there's no shooting. I'm like, yes, it is, Vanetta. I'm rotting out here. I'm on my way to get you. At first, we were going our way to Harvard's Community Center, because that's what they were saying, go. And then they were saying, go to a firehouse. So I was like, we're getting a run around, and I just don't know if my sister okay until I got to talk to her, like, 40 minutes ago. What did so, you guys talk about what happened? I said, Vanetta, do you know there's a shooter out there? She said, ain't no shooter out there. I said, yes, it is. It's Black Dog. We can't get to you, and I'm trying to get to you. And she, that's when my mom had to call the, the job and get them to release her child. So, when you saw this unfolding on TV, what were you what were you thinking? I stopped what I was doing. I dropped everything. I was like, my sister works out there. I need to get to her. Like, this can't be real. It's a nightmare. So I had butterflies in my stomach. I felt sick. So it's like a feeling of what if or what if not. So it's like unpredictable because I didn't know how to feel. So uh, Kim and Vanetta, that's just one family touched by this raw words and emotions. Uh, and she got out of here alive. Think about there are people who died here today, people who are injured in this and what those families are going through. But, but it just gives you just an idea of uh, how chaotic, how emotional this was for those people, the many people who work here today, what they have been through. And that's just another aspect of this, you know, uh, in addition to the investigation into if we ever figure it out, why this happened here today, why this person opened fire, but the impact on so many lives lives here in Harford County today. Absolutely. Yeah. Mike, well put, thank Mike. you. I'm glad that we got to hear from Kim. Yeah. She, that, that was, there was a happy, pure joy and a relief. happy reunion. Just quickly, Mary, I just found something here I think people should know about uh, because Mike was talking about how people are being allowed to leave. It says, right. and this comes from the Harford County government, uh, Vanessa, so this is, this is real. Okay. It says, as personnel of the Perryman facility, the one obviously that's involved, are reunited with family at Level Volunteer Fire Company, please note that they will not be able to return to the Perryman facility or its parking area until the sheriff office clears the scene for access so if you are okay. out there and you're going to try and find your family member let them know they can't go back and get their car they can't go back right. and get anything they had to leave behind until that entire area is cleared that could take 24 okay, hours but that's easily. good information because yeah. we don't know did Vanetta drive to work today it looked like right. she was just walking out with her sister so right. good information we are gonna head back to Rick Ritter he is in the media staging area as we inch closer to the latest uh, briefing that's coming up hopefully at three o'clock today. Rick? Yeah, Mary, we're hoping in about 35 minutes or so there's going to be another media update here, I'm told, at 3 o'clock. So hopefully we can get some answers to these questions we have now been waiting hours for. But so many people reaching out to us on social media, even on my Twitter account, asking more questions. You know, why did this happen? What is the suspect's identity? Obviously, that stuff's going to take a, take a while for it to unfold. Investigators, they're in that warehouse right now, combing through every inch of that place, trying to gather more evidence. We also talked about the ATF and the FBI being involved in this investigation and also digging in to the suspect's cell phones, computers, family, friends, trying to find out more information about why this unfolded. Chopper 13 was over the scene a little while ago, getting video of, you know, dozens of employees who were being evacuated from that warehouse. The call came in around 9 o'clock this morning, and we've been talking about the response all day long. Deputies responding within five minutes or so, getting to that scene very quickly, although still multiple people were killed, multiple people were wounded in this situation, and the lone suspect has been taken into custody, but is incredibly Critical condition. So we are expecting an update here in about 35 minutes or so. Three o'clock. This is the media staging area here off Old Philadelphia Road and Short Lane. Hopefully, we're going to get some more information and more answers to these questions we have been waiting for. Important to note here: law enforcement said that no shots were fired on their end, and that it was a lone suspect with what they believe was a handgun who is now in custody and at last check is in critical condition. Right, and that will be updated as well, we think, um, at, again, in about a half hour, um, whether that, cu that suspect has survived and um, who they, he or she may be. Correct, and the circumstances of their injury, we're still waiting for answers to that as well, but at right. least somebody is in custody. And 
important. No shots fired by officers. Correct. So that's correct. Insightful. All right. Um, very quickly, because we never know. You may have just tuned in and just catching up on some of the facts here. If you know someone, <coughs> excuse me, who was working in the facility that was involved in the shooting this morning, the there is a family reunification center. Uh, it is at 36. 33 Level Village Road in Haverty Grace. That's about nine miles away from that facility. There's also a number. You can find it on our website, WJZ.com. But if you have a pencil, it's 410-838-5800. 838-5800. But as we saw from Mike Helgren with Kim and her sister Vanetta, some of the employees are not being bused to the reunification center. She, Kim was able to find her sister right there on site. Let's go back to Mike Helgren with more on what is happening there now that the roads are open and employees are leaving. Mike? Sure, an update, Mary, from Har Harford County government is that uh, they still have not reopened this facility, so all the workers who had cars parked in here are not going to be able to get them. So while they're taking them over to where Kim, Kim is, to that reunification center, they're not going to be able to come back here to get their personal belongings or their vehicles right now because they are still processing this crime scene. So still, uh, while there's no threat to the community, it is still an act of crimes or still a crime scene that they are still working on and doing investigative work here um, and as far as what we're hoping to hear from this next briefing more information about this suspect and also about the number of victims in this case because we don't have a firm number as we'd reported earlier from the Associated Press they said three three had died however um, the sheriff officially is saying multiple wounded multiple fatalities and we also know that they were taken to to several different hospitals, trauma centers in this area, including Johns Hopkins Bayview, where Devin is, where we uh, heard from the doctor there, uh, and, and you know he talked a little bit about the four victims taken there and, and how they respond to tragedies like this. Uh, however, um, you know he didn't. He, he obviously is not giving out you know personal information or exact information about injuries, other than these were were gunshot wounds, um, and so. You know, uh, emotions are still running high in this area. People have a lot of questions, um, but as le at least from the scene, what we can report is that they've reopened roads, the facility and the parking area remains closed down here. They're still trying to reunite families with each other, and the police are still uh, investigating this and trying to get to the bottom of this, and they have released very little information about this suspect, but did tell the public that hey, you know, you don't have to worry. There's no threat here right now. Yeah, we, we want to remind people who are watching us right now that um, the video that you're looking at right now, not... Mike, he's live, but the other video that you were watching, that was from a while ago. Our chopper is refueling right now. So that if you see people who are slowly coming out, those people very well may have left already. Uh, this is file video from earlier, but it does give you a real sense of what an enormous uh, facility this is and what a challenge it is now for law enforcement to go in and search for evidence and secure the scene. But it appears as though uh, they have done it just enough to have opened at least the road where Mike is and a number of the other roads as well. And behind Mike, we saw not too long ago a Rite Aid truck roll out along with the Maine's paper company trucks roll out. So there were drivers there waiting for hours to, to get on the road, and we see that is now happening. True Air, Clorox Company, and Zenith Freight Lines also within that enormous facility with hundreds of workers. Yeah, that video you're looking at was taken earlier today, but you saw how people, by the time this video uh, was captured by our chopper, um, the all clear had been given in terms of the danger, so people were casually leaving buildings, I'm sure being interviewed as they left, being identified, and then a number of them were put on school buses and taken to the reunification center. Others, uh, as we saw from the woman that Mike just talked to, were allowed to leave the facility through a gate and be picked up by a family member. A very happy very family happy. member. And we hope there are many of those yeah. reunions going on, whether they're at the site or in um, Haver de Grace, where they were told to go as well. That That's the best part of what's happening today. Yeah, it goes without saying, and it will be said again by everyone from, from law enforcement, um, 
all the way and to the governor. It will go uh, to each and every one of us who live in this state with you, that if you had a family member who was impacted by what happened today, injured, or killed, we are so sorry. And we are so very sorry. And stay with us. Our coverage of this workplace shooting continues. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. And thank you for continuing to stay with our coverage of this workplace shooting that started just after 9 this morning. That's right. We've had uh, our reporter was first on the scene, Mike Helgren, and he has been there ever since. And we also have a reporter at the Family Reunification Center. If you are just joining us at 2.30 and you're thinking what's going on or what has been going on, it was a shooting at the Rite Aid Distribution Center at a building adjacent to it in a very large industrial park. Uh, at this point, all we know is that there were multiple victims who have died, multiple fatalities, and multiple victims who were injured. Multiple is the only word we're being given officially. That's right, and one of the injured is the suspect. We are told that suspect is in critical condition, and they do say is in custody, but is hospitalized at this point. So this late in the day, the situation uh, is over. Uh, there is no danger to the community. The buildings themselves, it appeared, have been secured. And now it's the time for the family members to find each other and know they're OK. And that reunification center is very close to where our reporter Kimberly Eaton is standing right now. Kimberly? And Denise, I know. Um, at this point in the day, as we're waiting on information, we can sometimes sound almost like a broken record, but this is something we cannot say enough. If you are still trying to connect with a friend, a family member, a loved one who may have been impacted by this morning shooting, this may be where you want to be. This is where the Family Reunification Center is set up. This is on Level Village Road at the Volunteer Fire Company just down the way here. There's also a hotline you can call to get more information on that. That, as we have said, and I'm going to say it again, is posted on W. WJZ.com, but the hotline and the center are specifically set up for people to come and reconnect with their family members if you think that they may have been impacted in any way by this shooting. Again, this is at the Volunteer Firehouse, and I know Denise has said this um, early on and throughout the day. Um, that the violence that we've seen here today is in no way a reflection of the Harford County community. Every time we come up here, the people could not be more pleasant, and that is what we're seeing now, people who just want to help other community members. We've seen local church members show up here. They want to go in. They want to help provide the mental health care and the support for uh, people they don't even know, strangers, but their neighbors in this county. And we've also talked to some of the agencies that are here in an official capacity. We've seen um, EMS and, and different volunteer fire companies assisting here. We've seen the Red Cross here on scene. They're doing things like making sure that the people who are here waiting for their family members or are even being bussed in still from the scene, they are making sure that they have things like food and water, that they're staying out of the sun as it's getting hotter out this afternoon. But they're also providing some longer-term resources Listen to this segment from our interview with the American Red Cross. I think the nice part is that we're able to be on site because of those partnerships to be able to have the conversation now if they're ready, or we will follow them through with casework um, till they are ready to have the conversation or until they say they do not need to have it. So our caseworkers not only work today, but into the future until our, our individuals find their new normal. Were you guys out here when the Edgewood shooting happened as well? We were. We were. It's a frustrating experience to see the repeat, and it's it's heartfelt to know, and it's heartfelt to the community. Our hearts go out to everyone. It's heartfelt to know that we have systems in place to manage such situations. It's a, a shame to need them. And Kimberly, we're back live with you. One moment here. Okay, no problem. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, we're we're hearing from um, we're hearing from someone that. Uh, about the different buildings that were evacuated this morning as police were working to clear the scene. Again, they, these are folks that are here to pick up their loved ones. And as they leave, again, we've seen different churches, different groups come in wanting to help the people that have been impacted by this. We also spoke with a bishop from a local congregation just a few minutes ago. He says that some of the folks who work at Rite Aid uh, Distribution Center, that they are members of his congregation. He doesn't know in what capacity they may have been affected today. He doesn't know if they were even at work today, but he dropped everything he was doing on this Thursday afternoon to come provide 
any assistance he can if it's that kind of mental health care that the Red Cross is looking to help folks out with or if it's just a shoulder to lean on and he is he did get past the barricade he is in there right now it just speaks to what this community is going through but also how they are already working to help each other through what could be a very long healing process Denise Kimberly. Uh, yeah thank you Kimberly yeah that healing process as we uh, heard earlier other police departments are reaching out to the Hartford County Sheriff's Department saying mm -hmm. we know that you will too will be suffering from what you saw today um, we actually have the Hartford <laughs> County Sheriff reaching out for an, in a different capacity it sent out a tweet just minutes ago saying if you have information that could be helpful in the investigation of today's shooting please call that number we've been giving out mm -hmm. which is 410 8 Three eight fifty eight hundred to pass your contact information to detectives. So they are looking for help and input from the community, uh, employees who may have witnessed it or know people who were involved, injured, hurt. Uh, they need some more information. And write that number down because as you learn more about the identities of uh, perhaps the suspect uh, or some of the victims, that may trigger some information that you, that you don't know you have, Correct. but that you have right now. All right, so again, we are waiting to hear from Hopkins Bayview um, in a few moments about the four victims who were taken there. Uh, they were taken there, we're told, because that was the closest trauma center to the, the scene of the crime. And also we're waiting in about 20 minutes, we're told, we will hear from the Harford County Sheriff's Office again. They say that they will give us an, a briefing uh, in just, we're, we're hoping, around 20 minutes. For now, we're going to go back to Mike Helgren. He's been live on the scene for several hours as this continues to unfold and change. Mike? And Mary, the Harford County Sheriff's Office, as you were saying, is asking for information. Anything is going to be helpful here as they try to piece this together. After the other workplace shooting uh, 11 months ago, uh, the suspect in that case, Roddy Prince, who has yet to go to trial, I, I talked to his sister afterward, and she said that he had uh, a long history of mental health issues, that there were several warning signs, that she was scared of him. And so, you know, uh, she said, Immediately after this happened, police contacted her family. They were worried about who was going to be the next victim, and he went up to Newark, Delaware, shot a man at a car dealership he'd had a previous beef with. So, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's important in those critical first, uh, you know, hours after this to try to get as much information as possible. Uh, let's go right now to Johns Hopkins Bayview, where doctors are providing an update on the four victims who were brought there earlier today. Um, oh, that's going to happen in just a moment. That's going to happen in just a moment. Johns Hopkins Bayview holding that press conference. But again, I was talking about Roddy Prince and the, the suspect in the other shooting who has yet to go on trial here in Maryland. Um, and so trying to piece... And I'm the trauma medical director here at uh, Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center. Um, just as an update from this morning's earlier uh, briefing, uh, we did receive four patients this morning from the incident up in Aberdeen. Um, all four of them came to our trauma center with gunshot wounds. Uh, I can tell you now that two are stable uh, and doing well, and two were very seriously injured. Um, and we're still awaiting confirmation that all their families have been notified of their uh, presence here and their injuries. So are there any uh, other questions? I wasn't there, so I couldn't tell you. Again, I, I wasn't there, so I can't tell you. They're all patients to us, so we take care of them and the injuries they have. Of the two that are stable, have they been able to tell you anything or say anything about what happened this morning? I believe that they spoke to authorities about what happened to them, um, but I didn't ask them specifically about the event. Um, they were injured uh, pretty much t torso. Uh, there, there were some significant injuries. Are there any more surgeries coming up for any of these patients? Uh, I think that's that's uh, up to them to disclose whether or not uh, you know what their care will entail. I want to be respectful of of the patients and their privacy and their families' privacy. The two that were seriously injured are they in the ICU unit we talked about earlier? So they're undergoing care. Are any of the patients still in surgery, or is everyone out? 
everybody's out of surgery. Can you tell us if there are men, women? Uh, again, I'd, until we know all the families have been notified, I don't want to give additional uh, details like that. Has anyone shot multiple times? Um, as best as I recall, each had a single gunshot wound. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. When there's an incident like this, is it common practice to have on security present kind of them as well? So, I mean, I think until we know the events and the motivations, it's always good to be cautious and have security for uh, their safety and also for our hospital personnel's safety. Uh, it is possible. So again, uh, since the events were not, uh, or details of the event were not known, for again the patient safety and hospital safety, uh, we had additional security that was present uh, beyond what is normally here. All right. So uh, I don't know that we're going to have many more updates, but if uh, there's additional questions, you can refer to hospital media relations. All right. Thank you. We're going to go back to Mike Helgren after just hearing from Dr. Fang at um, Bell, uh, Hopkins Bayview talking about some of the injuries involved there, Mike. I know you were listening along as well. Um, it sounds like four patients, two are now stable. Everybody is out of surgery and recovering. Yeah, two stable, two seriously injured. You said there were some injuries to the torso. Each one had a single gunshot wound, but you heard him multiple times say he wants to be respectful of their privacy and not provide too much information. We also don't know whether all of their families have been notified. He also talked about the security situation and something that Devin had been talking about as far as security at the hospital. And uh, he had said that they have additional security there more than they normally would have because he said until they know all the motivations in this. They think it's important to make sure that they have proper security for their patients and for their staff there at Johns Hopkins Bayview. Uh, no other hospitals that I'm aware of have, have held any press conference or have, have provided as much information as JHU Bayview has, but we know that uh, that's not the only hospital that has been treating patients who were wounded in this, and we still don't have an exact number of victims uh, because the Sheriff's Office didn't provide one at the last update, but May at this update that is coming up. So the four victims there at JHU Bayview, and there were other facilities where people were taken. We do not know where the suspect was taken. Now they've described, the sheriff's office has described the suspect as being in custody, but in critical condition and receiving treatment from a gunshot wound. They say that an officer did not fire at the suspect, but the suspect was wounded here at the scene and was in critical condition at last update. It's unclear whether the suspect has been cooperative or even been able to speak or whether investigators have tried to speak to the suspect at this point and what they've been able to glean about the motivations in this. But a brief update from Johns Hopkins Bayview and, you know, we're hearing from him that two people were, were very seriously wounded in this and um, they are all out of surgery, but he didn't know what the next steps were or you know, provide much information about the prognosis because he wanted to respect the privacy of the families of those who were injured. Back to you. And Mike, if you can stay with us, some of that notification may still be ongoing, and we certainly understand that as sure. well. You witnessed, though, a, a very nice reunion between two sisters, um, Vanetta and Kim, who were just elated to see each other. But just describe the worry that Kim spoke about, the knot in her stomach, not knowing for hours whether her sister was okay or not. Well, as so many uh, other people had, she'd been watching the news, and she knew she knew that her sister worked here at this facility, and she was just shocked because you know who. Yes, we've seen a lot of mass shootings, but who who thinks it's going to happen where they are? And uh, she said she just wasn't getting a lot of information, was worried that her sister was possibly one of the victims. Thankfully, her sister wasn't, but uh, you know she actually wanted to come here to the scene, and she 
you know, was going to rescue or you know, try to get in contact with her sister. She was bound and determined. And as soon as that road opened up, they were reunited. Let's listen uh, uh, again to uh, what both of them had to tell us. How good does it feel to be out? Oh, my God. Oh, so good. I'm so glad I'm out of there. You know, because it's devastating to work like that. And, you know, other people know people. I don't, I'm, I'm a two-month-old, a two-month associate. And, and I'm, you know, I'm really fresh. But people have been there for years, and they know people. So everyone is just walking around mooping and, you know, yes. grieving for the people that's in liberty. Did you hear any of the gunfire? No. No, I didn't. Actually, I'm glad I didn't because I, I would have been there. Could you share your name or you, if you want to? Uh, my name is Vanetta Johnson. <laughs> Vanetta Johnson. Yes. And, and you all this is my I'm older Kim. sister. She yes, came I ran away to get my sister. How, how emotional was this for you? I cried for a while. And my mother, listening to my mother, so it was like, is my sister here or is she not? I can't get in touch with her on her phone. I can't get in touch with the warehouse worker. So the next thing to do is just ride out here and come get her. And that's what I did. I mean, we've seen too much of this. Yeah, too much, and it's just it's just not enough love out here, if you ask me. I can't put my mind, I can't say how, why they think like that, but I'm just glad my sister was okay. What's it like to see her right here? Hey, I ran to her. It's, it's, we might not talk every day, but that's my goddamn old sister. You understand that love is real, and, that, and that, that's, that's that's all. Right so we came and got my sister. I don't know what I did, but I was going to put a shield on to get her. You understand? So I'm glad that she's Wait, here. Tell, tell me what happened. You've been waiting for your sister all morning? Yeah, and I've been calling, and when we talked to her, they said that the, um, when, on the overhead page, like, don't believe the rumors, there's no shooting. I'm like, yes, it is, Vanetta. I'm rotting out here. I'm on my way to get you. At first, we were going our way to Harvard's Community Center, because that's what they were saying, go. And then they were saying, go to a firehouse. So I was like, we're getting a run around, and I just don't know if my sister okay until I got to talk to her, like, 40 minutes ago. What did so, you guys talk about what happened? I said, Vanetta, do you know there's a shooter out there? She said, there ain't no shooter out there. I said, Yes, it is. It's Black Dog. We can't get to you, and I'm trying to get to you. And she that's when my mom had to call the, the job and get them to release her child. So when you saw this unfolding on TV, what were you what were you thinking? I stopped what I was doing. I dropped everything. I was like, my sister works out there. I need to get to her. Like, this can't be real. It's a nightmare. So I had butterflies in my stomach. I felt sick. So it's like a feeling of what if or what if not. So it's like unpredictable because I didn't know how to feel. So, again, her uh, raw emotions after leaving here, and we actually had heard them, you know, that when they were reunited, we heard the this, this screaming just right across the way from us, so we, we ran over, you know, we wanted to, to see what that was like, um, and they were very gracious to speak to us, and as I said earlier, it's just one example of one family who's been impacted like this, and there are still a lot of questions about why this would happen, and hopefully the Sheriff's Office will provide some more information, as we told you just a few moments ago, they are asking that anyone with information call them because they're looking for any piece of this puzzle that they can help put together here. And I'm sure, you know, they got a lot of information, but they're looking for just anything that can help shed some light onto this motivation into why this happened. So, you know, they're asking that people call them uh, if they can help in this investigation and might have some information that could piece this puzzle together. And we hope to learn more. What is it? It's uh, 240 now, so right around 3 o'clock, we're hoping to learn more information about that suspect who has not been named as of this point. But is okay. in custody in the hospital. Mike, thank you. Yes, most definitely. We are now into almost our sixth hour of coverage of this since this terrible tragedy unfolded. We've gotten a number of briefings from a number of different agencies. Let's go back to Devin Barlotta now, Johns Hopkins Bayview, uh, where there was just a news conference a few moments ago. Devin? That's right, Vic. We've been out here all afternoon. We know that there, we have known all afternoon that there are four patients from this incident that are here at Johns Hopkins Bayview. And now we have a little bit of an update on their conditions. Two of those people are stable, and uh, we know that they will possibly be released soon. We also know that police have talked to them a little bit about what happened there. Two, uh, another two of those people are seriously injured. Uh, Dr. Fang says that there were very serious injuries here. Each person had one gunshot wound. Um, some of them were in the torso 
However, uh, there are people still undergoing care here. We know everybody is out of surgery so far, uh, but they're still working to contact families. Police are on that end. They're trying to contact the families of these patients here so that they know that uh, their loved one is here and receiving care. And uh, we also are trying to figure out uh, whether or not the shooter is here. That's something we've been waiting for an update on all day long. We were hoping that we would hear more about that here. We know that the shooter in this situation or the suspected shooter is in critical condition and is in a hospital. We don't know which hospital, and the doctor today would not say, understandably distancing himself from the police investigation here. Some of that information is going to have to come from police, and as Mike said, we're going to have an update from them in about 11 minutes here. So we're still waiting to find out more details about the shooter in this situation. We still do not know the names, the ages, the genders, or much else about the patients here, only their conditions, too stable, too in serious condition here. Those are likely to change in the coming coming hours and coming days. However, Dr. Fang said that they are unlikely to be giving us more updates in the future as to these patients' conditions. Devin, uh, based upon um, what you've learned there at the scene at, at Johns Hopkins uh, Bayview Hospital, have you been able to determine based upon how they triage the patients or the worst of the cases sent there uh, as opposed to other facilities? We do know that other facilities were at least on alert for other patients to be coming in. Uh, we were told that they were prepared and ready as soon as they heard that there was a mass shooting to intake many patients and they were ready to triage them and get them into treatment as soon as possible. When they only got four patients here, they say that after they started treating them and getting them into surgery, getting them where they needed to be, it was back to business as usual here. So they were prepared for a mass response to this uh, situation and they were they only received again four patients here, so it, this could have been a, a much bigger situation had they received more. Sort of a sad situation that they have to be prepared, but we're glad that they are. Correct. Uh, because we've had way too many of these things happening, you know, too many shootings, uh, too many cases where multiple uh, cases of injuries uh, have occurred. Absolutely. And Hartford County Sheriff's Department is cautioning people to follow them on social media or watch the news. And we're reporting what they are giving to us, and we're waiting for a press conference from them because there are rumors and they want just people to have the facts. They also asked mm, 20 minutes ago if you you know anything about the shooting to call 911 to have detectives take your name your contact information so they can continue this investigation no detail is too small in a case like this yeah, so if, if you saw anything you're in the area whatever let's go back to Mike Calgren who's been at the scene all day and as we await uh, more information coming in uh, Mike are you getting a sense now that things are have calmed down dramatically and uh, what's next in this investigation yeah, they are, uh, Vic. I mean, while you well, you can see this big rig behind me, they have a lot of these trucks that uh, had been bottled up while they had the roads closed for quite some time. They're letting through now, but they still have the actual facility where this happened is closed off so people can't go back and get their cars at this point they can't go back and get their personal belongings that'll come later because they're still processing the crime scene here um, if we can go into real quick a little bit of a timeline 906 is when the sheriff's office says those first calls for help came in and then they said they were able to respond within five minutes so by 911 and then other agencies also responded quickly uh, the ATF FBI other federal agencies responded and other law enforcement neighboring law enforcement agencies responded they were able to get some of the victims we know to Johns Hopkins Bayview four of them we also have heard that uh, there is at least uh, one patient at Christiana Hospital in Delaware and we don't know as Devin was telling you we don't know where the suspect is but we know the suspect was injured uh, and is in critical condition maybe we'll get an update on that later but they brought in uh, four different school buses to try to evacuate people who were inside and try to clear this scene. They brought them to a reunification center. We saw the medevac, the medical helicopter come land here, take some a, a or a patient or more and, 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 and fly them off to help. And another aspect of this, Governor Hogan uh, had pledged to work with county officials to provide all the support that he can. And right now we are hearing from Governor Hogan for the first time. Here's what he had to say moments ago. 
I, uh, I have been in touch with uh, County Executive Glassman and uh, Sheriff Gaylor and Maryland State Police and other state agencies are assisting. And I just want to uh, say that my prayers are with uh, the victims and uh, the people that were injured and their families. So Governor Hogan speaking just moments ago, and the county executive here had said the same thing, that he briefed the governor, and the governor offered to provide any help that he could immediately after this tragedy. We've heard from a number of lawmakers um, with prayers for the families who've been touched by this, those who died, those who were wounded, also some uh, talking about gun violence, making comments about that and about how there have been way too many of these happening here in this county, just three in recent memory right here that were of high profile. That's not even to take into account uh, what we saw uh, you know, in Annapolis with, after the, with the Capitol Gazette shooting and then the Great Mills High School shooting in Southern Maryland uh, where we, I was also at that scene and it's just tragic to see this again uh, happening again and it, it bears repeating just again um, that we there's no danger here to the public and I think you asked me at the very beginning you know how did do you notice a sense that things are you know maybe a little less chaotic or or, or something of that nature and, and really when they started reopening all these roads you could really tell that um, you know that that okay you know they, they're still processing this crime scene but you know that that they're allowing people a little bit closer here and um, they're allowing you know they allowed people to leave and very relieved people from what we understand is this happened in a there's a there's a larger Rite Aid building and it happened in a smaller adjacent support building um, still they had to, to go through that building and, and make sure that there was an all clear and had asked people to call the emergency number if they were still inside we presume they've gotten everyone out now. A number of them have gone to that reunification center, and we're waiting for an update from the sheriff's office momentarily where we expect to get more information about the suspect and about victims. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. As you can imagine, in a situation like this, uh, social media plays an active role in terms of disseminating information and, unfortunately, Absolutely. disseminating misinformation. So it's going to be very important to pay very close attention to official sources uh, for information coming from cases like this. Let's go to Jessica Kataria. She's in the queue. She's been monitoring some of uh, the social media. What's being said right now uh, in, uh, uh, about this particular case? Jessica? Well, Vic, Harford County government tweeted out just a short time ago as personnel of the Perryman facility are reunited with family at Level Volunteer Fire Company. Please note, they will not be able to return to the Perryman facility or its parking area until the sheriff's office clears the scene for access. Please continue to avoid that area, and that might answer some of the question as to why it took family members so long to hear from loved ones. Uh, perhaps they don't have their phones or other ways of getting in touch. Harford Sheriff tweeted, if you have information that could be helpful in the investigation of today's shooting, please call 410-838-5800 to pass your contact information to detectives. And finally, one from uh, Elijah Cummings. I am praying for the victims and families in Aberdeen, and I thank the first responders for their immediate action. It is absurd how often we must say this, but we cannot allow these mass shootings to become our new normal. We must keep fighting to stop this. So certainly uh, a lot of emotion today surrounding this, and of course our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of the loved ones uh, who were victims of today's shooting. Back to you. Most Absolutely. Jessica, thank you. I know, Vic, I was telling Denise earlier before I came in, I was on Facebook and I saw a woman post uh, a question just saying, has anyone heard from my brother? I can't get in touch with him. He right. works there. And I messaged her and we were messaging back and forth. And just when I was, I said, have you heard from your brother? And she said, no. And then she said, he just texted me. Right. He's alive. He's fine. Um, I just, I can't imagine the anxiety waiting hours not knowing about a loved one in, in a workplace shooting. Like Absolutely. This. And this, is, this was a remote location. You know, this is the kind of place where you would never imagine something like this happening. But unfortunately, nowadays, we realize it can happen anywhere at any time. Yes. And far too many people have gone through the anxiety of uh, going through these drills and preparing right. for just this type of thing. I mean, Hartford County knows it well. It was just 11 months ago that the, at Advanced Granite Solutions, they had the exact almost thing happen. The difference being, though, that 
that the suspect was on the run for hours and hours mm -hmm. afterwards. So the whole area around Edgewood was really on lockdown for much, much longer than in this situation where the suspect is in custody, hospitalized right now, we are told, in critical condition. And we've had and just the, the first, we've had three mass shootings in Maryland this year. So we've been talking about the one at Great Mills High School, the one you're talking about now right. in Harford County, of course, the one at the Capitol Gazette. So um, as uh, Congressman Cummings says, we cannot allow this to become the new norm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we are told we are just about uh, four minutes away from the latest press, pressing, press briefing from Harford County Sheriff's deputies. And we'll get the latest information for right now, though, we're going to go to Kimberly Eaton. She's been um, witnessing some of the, the family members arrive at the reunification center, hoping to see their loved ones. Kimberly? And Mary, we've been here for a few hours at this point, and within those last few hours, we've watched a lot of people drive down here, drive down Level Village Road to the firehouse that has become the reunification center. Um, and now we're starting to see people come out with more people in their cars, seemingly folks that they have been looking for and that they've been now been able to pick up from the reunification center. We've also been talking to some of those folks as they come out. And we've heard from uh, two different people at this point telling us that they've heard from their loved ones who weren't here but who were at work today that this shooting may have happened in one of the sub buildings on the Rite Aid property. They're saying that they were hearing from their loved ones that it was not in the main building but rather one of the sub buildings. So I know we've been saying uh, a thousand people work at this facility, but how many people were in that building? We're still going to wait to have to learn from investigators, and we're going to have to wait to confirm if that is the case. But again, we have heard that from two separate people. They also told us that their loved ones are safe this afternoon. We also uh, we also spoke with a gentleman who came here. He had worked at Rite Aid for eight years. He has been retired, but he came here to check on his former coworkers, people that he knows who still work at Rite Aid. Again, he worked security there for eight years, so he has some deep connections. He tells us it was a great place to work, but as Vic said, uh, truly in this day and age, we have seen that this can happen any place, anywhere. But again, lots of stories coming out of this and lots of people with questions and still waiting to connect with their loved ones. So you can come here. This is the Family Reunification Center. You can see it down here behind us. This is on Level Village Road. And again, I know we have said it, but this is important information, so I'm going to say it again. There is also a hotline you can call that will give you more information on how to reconnect with your loved ones. That is posted on WJZ.com. But again, this is still open. There are many resources down there. We've seen the buses come in here. There are lots of folks down there. So if you are still trying to connect with a loved one, this is a place you may want to be. Vic and Mary. Okay, Kimberly, thank you. thank you. That hotline is also the place if you have any information to call 410-838-5800. Okay. Let's go back to Mike Helgren. He has uh, been at that location uh, right outside the, the place where it all took place this morning. Uh, Mike, uh, of course, we're waiting on a news conference right now. What information are you expecting to hear uh, from the sheriffs um, when this news conference does take place? Mike? Vic, we're hoping to hear more, obviously, about this suspect. We don't know if police will name the suspect. Uh, all we know right now is that it was a lone person with a handgun who was injured, not by police, and who is in critical condition. So more information on that, uh, more information about, about the motive, and exactly just some details and how this unfolded. I mean, we know where it happened. We just don't know the, the, the how. Was it outside of the building? Was it inside of the building? Uh, and and, and you know, did the person, does the person, what good connection does the person have here? I mean, is it someone who, you know, worked here, has a tie, ties here, a disgruntled person? We don't know. So, you know, it would be, it would be uh, to put this together, and, and it'll eventually come out, but, you know, hope to hear more about that. And then uh, maybe some, some numbers on exactly how many people were wounded or who died in this, because the, the number, we, we've just heard multiple people wounded and multiple fatalities. We haven't gotten an exact number, and uh, authorities maybe will provide that information and more information about the extent of the injuries, although we did hear from Johns Hopkins Bayview about two people who were seriously injured and uh, two other people who are stable right now. And... Um, <clears throat> 
So right now at, at the scene here, what we can tell you as we've shown you for the past 45 minutes or so, roads have been reopened, but the facility itself remains closed down as police continue to investigate here and process this crime scene and uh, you know try to figure out what happened. And then they're also getting assistance from their federal partners as well from the ATF, FBI, all of those resources going into this. And we heard from the governor just a few moments ago uh, how he had been in touch with the county executive and offer the full support and services of the state of Maryland, whatever is needed, uh, whatever resources are needed to help in this investigation as they try to piece together what happened. We understand that uh, we're getting closer to this news conference that we've been waiting on for some time now. Uh, Sheriff Gaylor is approaching the microphone along with a number of other associates as we look there, Harford County officials. Let's listen in. And our county executive, Barry Glassman, to provide updates on this morning's shooting. First, I would like to just thank all of you for your patience. This has been a very active and fluid day. A lot of information has been flowing through. Some of it's uh, misinformation, and we've been working very hard to get you accurate, up-to-date information information so I thank you for your patience and with that here is our sheriff Jeffrey Gaylor good afternoon I'll start off by echoing, echoing what Christy just said you know thank you for your patience I, I know everyone has a job to do and it's often tough uh, to try to get information and it's hard on us trying to we want to provide factual information we want to be uh, aware and conscious that there's families out there who are hearing the most devastating of news that they could possibly hear and we want to make sure that it, it doesn't get out ahead of us uh, and before we have a chance to tell the families and we don't want them watching it on TV or reading it somewhere on social media so I thank everyone for their patience and understanding. Um, I also have to, again, stand before bank microphones and, and thank the allied agencies, um, so many of whom are here represented behind me, but our, our partners from the FBI, the ATF, the DEA, our, our federal partners, the state police, Natural Resources Police, Transportation Authority, uh, Maryland uh, Department of Transportation Authority Police Department, uh, Haverty Grace, Aberdeen, and Bel Air, our local municipal agencies who all responded uh, out here uh, and, and in fact, we're some of the very first cars on the scene from the municipal agencies within that five minutes I spoke about earlier. Um, this is a great partnership that we have in our county, and, and unfortunately, we've been uh, impacted by more than our fair share of these types of events. And uh, it, it, as tragic as they are, we, we know and we have seen that they can happen anywhere in a moment's notice, and, and they do, and they're devastating to the communities where they occur. Uh, a basic recap of what I spoke about this morning, that at 9.06 this morning, the call dispatch uh, received a, a call of shots fired at the Wright House Distribution Center, uh, located at 1501 Perryman Road. Uh, immediately, police officers from across the county responded uh, and were on scene in approximately five minutes. Law enforcement, fire, and EMS units uh, quickly paired up uh, and went into the um, warehouse area, to the office area, into the warehouse area to uh, look for the suspect and to look for victims and provide treatment where uh, appropriate. At this time, I can confirm that there are seven people who have been shot in today's incident, including the shooter. Three people are suffering uh, from injuries which they are expected to survive. Uh, three uh, others are victims of our shooter who lost their lives here today. Uh, two at the scene and then one at the hospital. And the fourth loss of life is the victim. Uh, the, I'm sorry, is the suspect, our, our shooter. The uh, victim's names, we are not in a position to release at this time. We still have to make notifications and that's still a process that's ongoing. So we uh, are not prepared to release the victim's names. We will get them out as soon as is possible. Our suspect is a lone female suspect, age 26, uh, who had a last known address in Baltimore County. Uh, she has died at the hospital from a fatal injury, self-inflicted gunshot wound. It appears, again, as I said this morning, that she was uh, armed with one handgun and several magazines. Uh, no shots were fired by any law enforcement responder. Our, our detectives are still working to establish a timeline 
but at this time, what we know is that the suspect was a temporary employee uh, employed here at the distribution center. She had reported for her work day as usual, and around 9 a.m., the shooting began striking victims both outside the business and inside the facility. We do not at this time have a motive for this senseless crime in, in the investigation. Again, even though we're hours into this, it's still early in an investigation of this size and scope. But over the last several hours, uh, our law enforcement teams, again, from all the agencies represented behind me, have been acti actively clearing and searching the 210 square foot facility. It's a massive building, and that's only a third of it. Uh, and they've been through all parts of the one building, 2,100 or 2,100, 2,010 square feet are all just Rite Aid. There's two other businesses that are equally big, and our law enforcement officers had to clear that entire building. Uh, at the same time, our detectives have been working tirelessly to interview anyone who was in the building or who might have information to help us further this investigation. I believe a short while ago we tweeted out uh, the phone number, again, that's being answered at the dispatch center if there's people with information that can offer us uh, related to the uh, incident here today to please reach out and so our detectives can be in contact with you. We are not releasing the suspect's information uh, at this time. I've heard that it's already out in the public. Uh, but from our standpoint, the family there has not been notified. Um, and again, the investigation's early, so I will not be releasing that name at this time. Again, we have a family reunification center set up at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. And, and as I said, this is early on in this investigation. And as it becomes, as more information, uh, I just ask you to be patient. As more information comes available, we will share it just as timely as we can. I'm going to ask the county executive to uh, offer a few thoughts, and then I'll take a few questions with the caveat that if I didn't mention it, there's probably very little I can speak about. Sir. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, as, I, as I mentioned this morning, we uh, uh, certainly thank our partners from around the state. Governor Hogan's uh, called and checked on us early this morning. I see Senator Cardin has arrived, and Senator Cardin called uh, to offer his uh, assistance. So we, uh, uh, unfortunately, we are become accustomed to this. I want to reassure Harper County citizens that, in fact, although this is the unpredictable, we train for the unpredictable. Our Sheriff's Department, fire EMS, all our allied agencies and our volunteers performed perfectly the day as they carried out their duty to isolate and bring this uh, incident to a closure quickly and safely throughout the community. So we drill for this and, and they performed at the top uh, of their game today to do that. We move on. We're going to re reunite the families and provide services to the survivors. Uh, work with Rite Aid. Rite Aid's one of our original distribution warehouses in Harford County and a partner that goes back over 20 years. And so we will work with them uh, to rebuild and uh, bring their facility back uh, both through human resources and through capital to make sure they have a bright future here. So our thoughts and prayers go out to those victims. As County Executive, I am grateful for the men and women that stand behind me, uh, that when I listen to the radio, risk their lives to enter a warehouse where they don't know if there's a shooter. They don't know how many victims they have, and yet they go in, uh, find the situation, and bring it to a closure. So to all of our public safety first responders, I say thank you to all of them, and to my partner, Jeff Gaylor, the sheriff. Uh, we unfortunately have perfected this, and I hope that we don't have to do this again uh, in the next 10 years or ever. But we've got a lot of problems in this country to solve to bring these kind of incidents to a closure. But thank you, Sheriff. Senator. Well, first, to the county exec, thank you for your, your leadership here in Harford County. Uh, on behalf of your federal delegation, uh, our offices have been in touch, Senator Van Hollen and Congressman Rupersberger, my office, uh, been in touch. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased that our federal agencies are working in cooperation with the sheriff and with the county, and we know that the FBI's been involved, we know that ATF's been involved and DEA's been involved. We just want you to know that we are here to partner with you 
to get as much uh, help as possible to understand what happened and to obviously reach out to those families, uh, the victims, uh, our hearts go out to them. As the county exec said, this happens all too frequently um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a tragic situation. Uh, we are so proud of the work of our first responders, uh, the work that they do, uh, entering uh, places where there is incredible risk and danger in order to bring as much calm as possible. So we thank our first responders and we want you to know that the federal team is here to work with the county, with the state, do everything we can to, to help in the investigation and to help the families. Suspect shot herself in the head. Is there any connection to terrorism at this point? Uh, no, uh, we we do not have a motive yet. So everything is being explored. Um, that will be explored, but that is not uh, high. I wouldn't say it's high on the like of uh, possibility scale at, th at this point in time. Can you say whether whether she started outside and then moved inside the building? Or Sort of the, the yeah, it's our understanding, and again, you know, I, I'm going to qualify this with the fact that um, this is early on in the investigation. Our detectives have so much work to do, but yes, we believe the shooting incident began outside and then moved into the uh, front of the building. You know where? Okay. Yeah, you work there. We do not. We have seven people who have sustained gunshot wounds today, including the shooter. We have six victims, two of which are going to. God willing, they will survive. Um, and then uh, three who have lost their. Am I doing the math right? Yeah. yeah. We have. Just what about the weapon? Yeah, seven, seven injured by gunfire. Four are deceased, including the suspect. Did the suspect say anything that anyone is aware of? And did it appear she was targeting? Nothing has been brought. I'll get it. About the weapon, yeah. Um, nothing, has, nothing that has been brought to my attention at this point. The motive, we are still trying to work on any kind of motive for it, so I don't have an answer for that right now. It, it, it was a single weapon, a uh, nine millimeter Glock, nine millimeter Glock. Uh, which was registered and owned by the suspect. We have one right here, sir. Sure. How did law enforcement take the shooter uh, She was uh, injured by a self-inflicted gunshot wound on the floor. She was um, in critical condition from the outset at the time we responded. So she was transported to an area hospital where she has since passed away. How sure. 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 had this uh, facility been the source of any other calls from your department? I mean, have there been problems there, perhaps involving the shooter or involving someone else? No, none that we are familiar with, and certainly none involving the suspect in this case that we're familiar with. It's a, it's a, the whole area here is a large business area, as you see. Um, so you know, the, the deputies and often our, our municipal partners and the state police are down in this area for different calls. Uh, obviously, nothing to this degree, but nothing involving uh, this. Nothing related to this incident or involving this suspect. How many magazines? How many magazines? Uh, uh, I believe there were two, uh, perhaps three. But again, and, and as I said, I'm going to qualify things with the fact that we are early into the investigation. How many shots fired roughly, do you know? I, I do not know. And this gentleman right here, sir. How many people were in the building that you cleared, or how many people were there at the time this shooting roughly? Obviously, I don't know how many employees are in, in the Rite Aid building. Do we have an idea? Um, throughout the three buildings that make up the complex, there were uh, probably more than 100. There were quite a few people. Uh, one third of that huge building is Rite Aid. So I don't know how many were in the Rite Aid building. Sir, we have one over here. Is John over there? Private security guards there, were they armed at all? I understand that Rite Aid employs private security, but we do not believe that there were any there at the time of the incident. Do we have was one right here? at the time of the shooting? She was a temporary employee. Uh, working her normal work day, I don't know what time that began, but re who reported for her normal work day today at the business. Any idea how she got access access with these weapons? I, I do not have an answer for that. Have one over here. She had key access to the building? I don't know if she had key access or the employees. Uh, I, I don't know how the access works for Rite Aid. Um, that would be a question for investigators as, as they work through or, or the company itself later on. Do you have how long has she been 
Um, we, we have ages uh, and, and the sexes. We're not going to be releasing that at this point. We will get that out through our public information officer just as soon as we can. We don't want people to see this and say, you know, a 26, and I'm, this is not the case, but a 26-year-old female, and then they, they, uh, they're missing someone who fits that description. So we are not releasing any information as to um, anything that could nail down the identity of our victims. You have confirmed that all those that were involved were right aid employees? No. Um, I, detectives may have at this point, but not that it's come to my attention. They were all in the Rite Aid building. We believe them to be all employees, but is that 100%? No, it's not. Do you, down here, sir? do you believe the victims knew the suspect in any, any relationship, or do you think I, it was a random just workplace shooting, trying to shoot up as many people as possible? I, I do not know how well they knew each other. She was employed there. Uh, apparently, it was not her first day, so there had to be some... Uh, some knowledge uh, of the suspect by the employees of that business. We have one over here, sir. Do you have conditions on the three people? Uh, I've just been told that they do not look like they're life-threatening injuries. Any surveillance, any surveillance cameras or footage that you can pull from on this? The, there's, there's cameras on the property and inside the property, which our detectives will be, um, you know, have looked at and will be obviously uh, analyzing very closely to try to get us a better picture of everything that took place there. I, I, I know nothing. In these few hours, I know nothing about how what, what security there is or is not. We'll take one more question. Was there, what, was what the hospital did? that the suspect died in? I, I'm not sure which hospital she was went to. Local or was it Baltimore? Trauma center. Local trauma center. Local, trauma center. Local, uh, local trauma center. So. Yeah. The the shooting was inside. I don't believe it was Harford. I, I, I do not yeah, know. Not the shooting was inside or outside? Just Both. There were, there were people shot inside and outside the business. We believe it began outside and moved inside. And this will be our last question. Are you executing a search warrant currently on your home in Baltimore County? There are multiple addresses associated with the uh, suspect. So we are chasing all leads as any police department who finds themselves in this unfortunate position of dealing with such a tragic incident. Um, you know, we will chase them as far until they end. Vehicles and homes, yes. And that's it. All right. All right. Thank you very much. You. We will get something out as soon as we can through uh, Christy Hopkins and our PIO office. Thank you. We do not expect another full press briefing today. We are watching Any a, a additional live information that we have will come out. Uh, office in Harford County recapping what was said there by Sheriff Jeffrey Gaylor. Uh, they have now confirmed that the shooter was a female, a 26 year old woman who worked there at the facility, a temporary employee, that the shooting began outside and moved inside. A total of seven people shot among those who died, the shooter who apparently shot herself uh, at the end of this melee. And they are not releasing her name yet. The sheriff did say that that's pending notification that her family does not know. So that that uh, information will likely come later tonight. Absolutely, and uh, the police officers also uh, indicated to us that uh, they had to search a more than 2,000 square foot area. There were three buildings there uh, involved that they had to go through meticulously uh, to make sure everyone was okay. More than 100 people total involved at the distribution center Correct. just for Rite Aid, uh, right. and uh, I guess plus uh, the additional building there. We also just received for the first time a statement from Rite Aid. We had heard that the distribution center has a long history in Hartford County, more than 20 years. Here is the statement from Rite Aid, and I'm going to read it for you. We are deeply saddened by the events that transpired this morning at the Liberty Support Facility, which is part of Rite Aid's Perryman Distribution Center in Aberdeen, Maryland. Local authorities confirm that there are multiple fatalities and casualties. Again, that coming in from Rite Aid. It continues on. We are continuing to work closely with authorities as they conduct their investigation. The facility has been closed and we are assessing when it will be reopened. Grief counselors will be made available to our associates and will remain available as long as they are needed. Yes, and of course we also heard from um, the uh, county executive there who said that um, the Rite Aid was their first distribution center and has indicated more than 20 years uh, they have been there. They've had a great working relationship yeah, with them. I just said a that, yeah. number of employees uh, uh, from Harford County work there. That's right. We're going to go to Mike Helgren now. He has listened to the news conference. He's been at the scene since uh, just after 9 a.m. when this all unfolded. Mike? 
Mary, there, there is a little bit of a discrepancy there. You, you heard from the sheriff that there were seven people shot, that uh, four are dead, and that includes the suspect. However, uh, Johns Hopkins Bayview had, had told us that there were four people there who are still recovering from this. Uh, but we know now for a fact that the suspect is dead, um, a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Uh, from what uh, police have told us, the weapon was a 9 millimeter Glock handgun and several magazines as well that was registered to the suspect who had multiple addresses in Baltimore County and that they are still going to those addresses trying to notify that suspect's next of kin as well and have not released a name and that the person who did this, according to the sheriff, showed up for a normal work day, was a temporary employee here, and then for some reason started opening fire and then it started outside one of the buildings here and then moved inside one of the buildings. Let's listen again to what the sheriff had to say. But at 906 this morning, the call dispatch uh, received a, a call of shots fired at the Wright House Distribution Center uh, located at 1501 Perryman Road. Uh, immediately, police officers from across the county responded uh, and were on scene in approximately five minutes. Law enforcement, fire, and EMS units uh, quickly paired up uh, and went into the um, warehouse area, to the office area, into the warehouse area to uh, look for the suspect and to look for victims and provide treatment where uh, appropriate. At this time, I can confirm that there are seven people who have been shot in today's incident including the shooter. Three people are suffering uh, from injuries which they are expected to survive. Uh, three uh, others are victims of our shooter who lost their lives here today. Uh, two at the scene and then one at the hospital. And the fourth loss of life is the victim. Uh, the, I'm sorry, is the suspect, our, our shooter. So again, the suspect, 26 years old, lone suspect, we don't know why she did this, and that is a big question that the sheriff said that he was trying to answer. He also said that Rite Aid does employ private security, but there's no indication that there was private security at the facility at the time that this happened. The county executive thanked the first responders for risking their lives and said we've got a lot of problems in this country to solve to bring these types of incidents to closure. Um, the suspect, again, shot herself in the head. And there were more than 100 people at this facility at the, the time. They are not releasing the victims' names at this point. Back to you. Mike, thank you very much. And, of course, the other thing the county executive said uh, in his statements was, and unfortunately, Harford County has perfected the way of handling mass shootings just like this. And he also went on to say, hope we don't have to ever have to do this again. No, I had seen some comments on Facebook from loved ones of deputies who just said, please give us a break. This is just too much for Harford County, for sure. We're going to go to Rick Ritter. He is near the media staging area and uh, was there asking questions to a just minutes ago. Rick? Mary Vick, still some unanswered questions. The identity of this female suspect has not yet been released. And of course, a motive, which is something they obviously don't know right now, and they may never know. But here's what we do know. Seven people total shot. That's including the female suspect. Four people dead, and that is including the suspect as well. The female, she has been identified as a 26-year-old with a last known address in Baltimore County, but her name has not yet been released. But again, seven people shot, including the suspect. Four people dead, including the suspect. And this all started around 9 o'clock this morning. The sheriff said she was a temporary employee at this Rite Aid distribution center. She showed up with a 9 millimeter Glock, he said, and that shooting started outside and then worked its way inside the warehouse where a total of seven people were shot, including the female suspect, who they said fired a bullet in her head, and then she later died at the hospital. So seven people shot, four dead, and Senator Ben Cardin, he spoke a little while ago, and he talked about how great the response was. He said, I don't like how they're so uh, often responding to situations like this, but what I do like is how prepared they are, and unfortunately, that has a lot to do with the three mass shootings they've had in three years. Of course, the other one taking place about 11 months ago. The sheriff, he had a lot to say, even though there were some questions that remain unanswered. Take a listen. Our suspect is a lone female suspect, age 26, uh, who had a last known address in Baltimore County. 
Uh, she has died at the hospital from a fatal injury, self-inflicted gunshot wound. It appears, again, as I said this morning, that she was uh, armed with one handgun and several magazines. Uh, no shots were fired by any law enforcement responder. Our, our detectives are still working to establish a timeline, but at this time, what we know is that the suspect was a temporary employee uh, employed here at the distribution center. She had reported for her work day as usual, and around 9 a.m. the shooting began, striking victims both outside the business and inside the facility. We do not at this time have a motive for this senseless crime in, in the investigation. Again, even though we're hours into this, it's still early in an investigation of this size and scope. That was Sheriff Jeffrey Galler speaking there literally just minutes ago. Obviously, it's still a long way to go with this investigation. We do know this was a 200,000 square foot building, the Rite Aid Distribution Center. Authorities say that she showed up this morning. This female suspect obviously was familiar with the building, a shooting that started inside and then worked, or excuse me, started outside and then worked its way inside the building with six victims being shot and the suspect later shooting herself in the head and dying at the hospital. Back to you. Rick, thank, you. thank you for that latest information. Right now, we're going to speak with Mike Carey. He works in a nearby building, very close to the Rite Aid Distribution Center in Aberdeen. And Mike, if you can hear me, we hear that one of the victims who was shot actually ran into your building. Yes, ma'am, he did. Yes, that's correct. Tell me about that. What you witnessed? Oh my God, he was he was shot in the legs. I didn't know what's going on. I didn't know what was going on. I thought somebody was, I heard gunshots in the parking lot. I thought somebody, somebody was chasing after him. My manager was like, shut that, close down the building, close all the doors, lock everything. And we, we, he came in, we, we sat him down, and like you see in the video, we were trying to help him, put pressure on the woman. He was saying that uh, all he heard was gunshot, pop, pop, pop. He tried to run out of the building, then he got shot on his leg, and he was just, um, he was just, you yeah. know, worried, you know, he was about his life. Mike, we see that in the video that you're providing that we're looking at right now, and we're also yeah. watching some of the other people who that are, I guess, filing out of the building. Uh, Emergency responders were right there when uh, applying uh, pressure, as you said, to his wounds, and an officer looks like he was asking him a number of questions. How quickly did all this happen? Oh my God! This, this this happened. He came in around like nine o'clock. This happened about thirty minutes later. I mean, like we had to wait down police officers, police officers to come to our building to come in and, and uh, help the guy that was shot because they they just get driving by. And Mike, what was he saying that he saw? What did he say? He said he only heard was gunshot. He he tried to run out of the building. He got shot in his leg. He was like, he, he was just, he, he didn't know what happened. He thought he was, he thought he got, he got killed. I mean, basically, you know, he thought, he, he, thought he, he, he was dead. But he came to our building and then we tried to help him, help him out, you know. We didn't know what was going on. Maybe we thought that somebody was chasing him out in the parking lot. Then it was just, it was just crazy. Okay, now the people that we see in this video too, uh, looks like they're walking away from the building. Tell us what we are seeing here. Well, they're being escorted by the police uh, so they can, they, they, they bump to a parking lot so they can get patted down and make sure they didn't have any weapons or, you know, they were, they were just basically searching for the suspect. And did you receive any orders or instructions from the officers there on the scene? What did they tell you to do? No, no. All the employees, they came into a conference room, but they were crying. And I was trying to provide them to, uh, you know, give them glasses of the water, what can I do to help? And, you know, I was talking to one of the employees that worked there. She told me that it was a, a temporary employee she was having. She came in, she was having a bad day. She wanted to pick a fight. And she just started shooting in the parking lot. She went inside the building, started shooting her co-workers. Then she, then she left, she got, up, she, she, she got her bill, which drove off, and she ran somebody over down on Paramount Road. It was, it was just, it was just, on a horrific day. I never seen anything like this. Did you see the vehicle yourself? No, I didn't see the, the vehicle. No, I did not. No, no. 
And was your workplace placed on lockdown? And how long were you stuck there before you could contact your loved ones? Oh my God, I was there for at least two hours of lockdown. But I mean, basically, all the employees from where they came, you know, came, they came next door and we were just, you know, trying to help them. And a lot of them didn't have any shoes. And I got a co worker that, you know, she gave one of the employees from where they, she gave her her shoes because she felt, so, you know, she felt so awful for her. You know, she was crying. <sighs> you know, she, so My it was just hectic. Mike, go back for a second. You, you you indicated that the the person who did the shooting got in a vehicle and left. Is that what I want to be sure I understood what you said? That's yeah, different. That, that, that's what I heard. She she got in the vehicle, she took off, and then she ran somebody over down the street. Okay. Because right. we do know that there is a vehicle involved, but that's a little bit different than what police have told us that uh, the suspect had critical injuries but we'll sort that out for sure mike we're so glad that you're okay um i can't imagine how frightened you must have felt knowing that there was an active shooter has your workplace done any education any training for you and your co-workers no no this is no this okay. is the first time this is something like this ever happened no i mean i have never seen anybody got shot before you know <laughs> Where are you right now, Mike? Are you at home? Or are you? I'm at home right now. You know, I was, I was stuck in traffic because they closed down the roads. I had to go through a, a graveyard, you know, just to get home. But I, it, it was such a terrible day. I feel sorry for. I feel bad for the victims. Uh, uh, my prayers are with, with, with their families. It, 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 it's sad, you know. It's just. What happened. Most definitely. And we feel badly for you, too, having to experience that. Yeah, uh, and, uh, just imagine. I'm at work. I'm at work. I'm working. I'm working in the office. You know, I'm, I'm in my computer at my desk. And then somebody comes, in, comes into your building saying that they got shut. Yeah, we know that right, the, the distribution center for Rite Aid is shut down. Do you know whether you will have to report to work tomorrow? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Okay. I know we were told to just go ahead and, you know, go home. I'm not sure. I went to hear from my, my employer, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll have to go back to work tomorrow. Okay. Mike Carey, thank you so much for what you did for the one of the victims involved yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, yes. We didn't, we didn't know what was going on. We, tried, we helped the guy, you know. We, you know the ambulance took, took forever to get, you know, to come and, and, and give him help. I mean, like, like you see on the video, you know, with the, one of our, our, my co-worker was applying to me pressure to the wound, make sure he didn't bleed out. Sure. It was just... Well, hopefully they saved a life there so okay. much. Mike, thank you so much, and um, we'll, we'll touch base with you again. Thank you. Okay, you're watching a live report that's been going on all day, this horrible shooting up in Hartford County. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. And welcome back. We are now several hours uh, away from what started at just after 9 a.m., a workplace shooting in Aberdeen, Harford County. I'm Mary Bubala. And I'm Vic Carter. We have a team of reporters who have been out on the scene all morning long. They were there very rapidly after uh, the shooting took place. We're going to go back now to Mike Helgren, who is outside the distribution center. And every time we come to you, Mike, we see that there are a number of trucks that have been able to come through. They're finally able to, I guess, yeah. get back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, distributing their uh, goods and wares there from that warehouse. Uh, this was a stunning news conference. Uh, what was the one thing that surprised you most about what Sheriff Gaylor had to say? You know, I mean, just more information on the person who did this. Like, a temporary employee showed up for work and open fire? I mean, wh wh what would drive someone to do that? And that's a question that he just didn't have an answer to at this point. I mean, they've been able, with the help of the ATF, to to trace that gun. They have the, the murder weapon, 9mm Glock, was registered to this woman, 26 years old, from Baltimore County. They're trying to track down more information about her. It sounded like they had notified her next of kin. I'm sure they're trying to track down anyone associated with her and interviewing people about any past incidents they might have had with her. Um, it doesn't appear, at least early on, or from what he was saying, that there were any past incidents that would have raised alarm or suspicion, but that may come out, whether there were any warning signs that may come out later. And that they, this is a massive facility, uh, more than, uh, uh, you know, 200 
thousand square feet that they had to, to comb through and try to find, uh, make sure that they got all the victims, all the civilians out of here who worked this Rite Aid distribution plant. And, you know, they, they, they were, uh, you know, more forthcoming. We did get a little bit better picture of this, but we still don't have the answer as to why. Uh, we do know that it started outside one of these buildings, and then the, the violence continued inside. This woman kept shooting. She had several magazines with her as well, shot herself in the head, uh, and then she didn't die at the scene. Rather, she died at the hospital, was in critical condition. They still didn't say which hospital that they had taken her to. Now, in addition to the sheriff, we heard from County Executive Glassman about these shootings. Here's what he had to say. Unfortunately, we are become accustomed to this. I want to reassure Harper County citizens that, in fact, although this is the unpredictable, we train for the unpredictable. Our Sheriff's Department, Fire EMS, all our allied agencies and our volunteers performed perfectly the day as they carried out their duty to isolate and bring this uh, incident to a closure quickly and safely throughout the community. So. We drill for this, and they performed at the top of their game today to do that. County Executive Glassman thanking the first responders and talking about, you know, what, what he's been through, the leader of this county, and he's been through this before. Uh, something the Sheriff's Office said that right now they're not able to nail down an exact timeline of how this happened. I mean, we know that the first calls came in at 9.06 and that police responded um, within five minutes to the scene here. But beyond that, we don't have a timeline as to when this person, this temporary employee, this 26-year-old woman from Baltimore County, was supposed to respond to to work we don't know you know we know that this person showed up as as normal and then um, what what triggered this and there very well may be surveillance video uh, from this scene that they are reviewing none of that has been released I haven't seen any of it uh, I mean this is a you know major company a major warehouse distribution center so you think that there would be security protocols we don't know um, exactly how things unfolded but we do know as I said it, it started outside of here. Um, so police indicated that they, we might not get a whole lot more information tonight, but they're still investigating this. And even though it seems like, well, we've been on the air for many hours, this is still early in this investigation. So more of this information is going to be trickling out over the coming hours and days. Mike, uh, we had a bit of a, uh, I'm not going to say confusing information coming from Mike Carey, the phoner that we did just a few sure. minutes ago uh, with this gentleman who indicated, he talked about the suspect possibly getting into a vehicle and driving away. Have you heard anything like that? And did you actually see the vehicle? I know that they, they had taken a vehicle away earlier today. Sure. Yeah, I mean, here's what I'll tell you. I, they, I, well, you didn't hear it from the sheriff's office, so they said they're trying to cut down on rumors. So, you know, keep in mind, if you didn't hear it from the sheriff, you know, I mean, you, you know, we don't know for sure. I can tell you that there was a Honda that was right here, just about at the corner where I am, or just, you know, in front of the facility, that um, had crime tape around it. And there was a, a large police presence around it. And then um, a, a, a maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, a tow truck came and they towed it away. I don't know what connection that vehicle had to this. It, it could have had a connection to the suspect. We may hear more about that. That's not something that the uh, sheriff discussed in his press conference. Um, we, we do know that, uh, uh, you know, the suspect, you know, turned the gun on herself and we won't get answers from her. And and uh, given the severity of, of her injuries, it's probably unlikely that she said much. But I don't know, you know, if she had any writings or social media presence, uh, anything. And that's something that, you know, authorities are going to be looking at, too, to try to piece together the motive and exactly how and why this happened. Thank you very much, Mike. And, of course, we will be coming back to you periodically throughout the rest of the afternoon. Let's go now to uh, Kimberly Eaton. She's at the reunif Reunification Center up at uh, Level Village Road where people have been uh, slowly reuniting with mm -hmm. people who worked there and were evacuated and taken there. Yeah, there have been uh, good reunions today from absolutely. lots of people who were so nervous about what was going to happen to their loved ones. Even talking to Mike, he was stuck in his building for hours. And sometimes you found that some of the family members 
didn't hear from their loved ones who worked there for uh, several hours and finally getting texts that they are okay. But lots and lots of worry and concern throughout the day for so many. Again, that area, just the Rite Aid, employs a thousand people in that distribution center. Now, the shooting took place at the Liberty Support Facility, which has a much smaller contingent of employees. All right, let's go down to Kimberly Eaton at that reunification center. Uh, hopefully, you've been able to witness some of these people coming together and, and finding their family members okay. Kimberly? Well, Vic, for the last few hours, we've been on the other end of Level Village Road. You might notice our backdrop here has changed a little bit. That's because as things have kind of calmed down here, we were able to come a little bit closer to where a lot of this reunification is actually taking place. This is the volunteer firehouse where authorities ask if you are still looking for a loved one, if you're still trying to reconnect with a friend or a family member, this is where you should be. And things have quieted down here a bit. Earlier today, we saw cars pouring in, um, some with just the driver in the car. Car, and then as the hours progressed, they were coming back out, uh, leaving this area with one, two, three people in the car. So a lot of people have been able to reconnect here with their loved ones. Everyone we've spoken with have said they were looking for someone and came here and found out that that person was okay. So that is the news, of course, that you want to receive today. But this will stay open. This is still open. You can also call the hotline that we've been listing on our webpage. And of course, in the last press conference, confirming... Um, hearing directly from the sheriff himself things that we have heard from some of the folks who have been here looking for their family members. A lot of them have told us that uh, they had heard from people who work for Rite Aid that uh, this shooting happened in a sub building and it, it, that seems to be the case. That's what we've heard that it was, uh, I believe, the Liberty Building. Um, so that has now been confirmed. We also spoke with a gentleman who retired from Rite Aid. He just happened to be back up here in Harford County visiting when he heard that this shooting had happened. He worked there for eight years. He worked security. He said it was a great place to work. Listen now to what John had to say. I worked here for eight years and retired. And uh, I was just concerned. And uh, one of my co -work or one of my uh, workers here was uh, there uh, when things uh, turned bad. And um, he, he needed a way home today, and I said, I'll help you. I'll take you home. How many years and even at the other end of the road behind the police barricades, as we were talking to folks, that is what we heard so much of today. He came here just to make sure his former co-workers were okay. He ended up giving that young man a ride home. We have seen people from local churches come here offering mental health care, spiritual guidance, just a shoulder to cry on. It really speaks to how this community operates. People willing to come, uh, to come here to take a break out of their Thursday afternoon to make sure their friends, neighbors, and strangers are okay. And, of course, looking for their family members. So, again, if you are still trying to connect with someone, this is the firehouse on Level Village Road. Road. You can also try the hotline listed on our website, WJZ.com. But for now, Vic and Mary. Kimberly, thank you. It has been a trying time for Harford County for sure. It was just 11 months ago that they dealt with a very, very, very similar situation. It was October of last year that Radhi Prince entered Advanced Granite Solutions. We were on the air with nonstop yes. coverage. Um, coworkers uh, shot there and Edgewood three were killed in that shooting as well. And a, of course, that situation was different because he was on the run for hours, ha having fled to Delaware, which at the time when we were in that coverage, I remember we did not know. So all of Hopper County is on edge waiting for uh, a suspect to be caught, and he later was in Delaware. Absolutely. Let's go to Rick Ritter, who is standing by now. He's been at the media staging area listening in, of course, to that news conference that occurred not long ago and giving us new information about what transpired. Rick? Yeah, I think that press conference wrapped up about 20 minutes ago or so, and I'm told that that will be the final update we are expected to get today. So that update again, kind of rehashing everything that we've heard now and the new information that we just got. A total of seven people, including the suspect, were shot in this incident. Four people have died, and that's including the female suspect who has been identified as just a 26-year-old with a last known address in Baltimore County. Still not releasing her name at this time, but we know she was 26 years old and was a temporary employee at the Rite Aid Distribution 
Convention Center. Authorities say that this started when she showed up for her work day around 9 o'clock this morning, and that shooting rampage began outside of the facility, and then the sheriff said it made its way inside the facility. A total of seven people, including the suspect, were shot in Hartford County. Obviously, this is all becoming far too familiar for them. This is the third mass shooting we've had here in District 34 in the past three years. The sheriff and the county executive, they spoke about that a short time ago. At 9.06 this morning, we called dispatch, uh, received a, a call of shots fired at the Wright House Distribution Center uh, located at 1501 Perryman Road. Uh, immediately, police officers from across the county responded uh, and were on scene in approximately five minutes. Law enforcement, fire, and EMS units uh, quickly paired up uh, and went into the um, warehouse area, to the office area, into the warehouse area to uh, look for the suspect and to look for victims and provide treatment where uh, appropriate. At this time, I can confirm that there are seven people who have been shot in today's incident, including the shooter. Three people are suffering uh, from injuries which they are expected to survive. Uh, three uh, others are victims of our shooter who lost their lives here today. Uh, two at the scene and then one at the hospital. And the fourth loss of life is the victim, uh, the, I'm sorry, is the suspect, our, our shooter. Now, this building is about 200,000 square feet. We know the female suspect was a temporary employee there. Uh, obviously, was probably able to maneuver herself inside and around that building, knowing what she was dealing with because this wasn't her first day at work. Again, identified as a 26-year-old female with a last known address in Baltimore County, but her name has not yet been released. So seven people total shot, including the suspect. Four people dead, including the female suspect. Obviously, this all taking place around 9 o'clock this morning when the sheriff says she showed up for a normal work day with a 9 millimeter Glock and the shooting starting outside the Rite, Rite Aid Distribution Center and making its way inside. So a 200,000 square foot building, uh, investigators certainly have a long way to go in terms of combing through evidence. And also it took them a while to comb through that building, making sure everybody was okay before that they could clear the scene essentially and open a lot of those roads back up. But if you're just joining us right now, again, seven people shot, including the suspect, a female suspect, identified as a 26-year-old from Baltimore County. We do not know her name yet. We do not know the motive behind all of this, and we do not have an exact timetable of how everything took place. The sheriff telling us that's still some information that they're trying to figure out at this hour, but the press conference that we had about 20 minutes ago or so, I'm told that is the final update that we will get throughout the day. That is the last information we will be receiving on this. I'm sure there will be a lot more information that come out tomorrow and in the coming days as well. Of course, as this investigation continues to unfold and authorities do their job, because again, we've been saying this all day long. The big thing now is now that they know that the suspect's identity of course, trying to climb into why she did this. What was the motive behind all this? Digging into cell phone records, computers, trying to speak with her family, her neighbors, even some of her workplace employees. Was there a problem there? You know, what exactly happened? Why this all transpired? Still, a lot of unanswered questions in all of this. Back to you. Okay, Rick Ritter, thank you very much. And of course, um, as he mentioned, a massive facility there. Uh, and they just ter did tremendous quick work in terms of securing the area, making sure that people got triage sent to the proper hospitals to get the treatment and that type of thing. Police obviously arriving on the scene yes. within five minutes. We're going to go back to, to Mike Helgren. And Mike, one of the things that struck me about this entire situation is how quickly uh, law enforcement was able to get information on the weapon that was used. And, you know, in the past, we have seen ATF on the scene of these mass mm -hmm. shootings. They were there today. And, of course, ATF also has that gun trace uh, rapid response team so they can track a weapon very quickly. Uh, so in this case, this is a weapon that was registered to the shooter, and the shooter arriving there with that 9mm Glock and multiple rounds, multiple clips. Um, and uh, so uh, it's interesting to see how quickly they're able now to identify weapons on the scene and get information out to law enforcement uh, who may be responding. Mike? Yeah, there was a large ATF presence here, and I don't know if they use this particular vehicle, but we'd done a story in Baltimore City about this NIBIN, I think that's the acronym, this van that they had, where uh, they have a, a, well, it's a trailer in the back, and they can fire the weapon, and they can see from the 
bullets, more information about it. They have uh, a whole, all these computers inside, and they can glean all this information from a weapon. And they were using that in Baltimore City with uh, the no large number of shootings that happened in Baltimore City to try to get more information when some act of violence happens. But yes, a large number of ATF personnel here on the scene, as well as FBI. And that was assistance that was invaluable to the Hartford County Sheriff's Office. And you heard the sheriff thank those uh, those other agencies who helped respond to the scene. And it wasn't just the federal partners, but also other law enforcement from around Maryland who came here today. And that's the same thing we saw uh, at the workplace shooting uh, just down the road here 11 months ago. The same thing we saw with the Panera shooting, um, you know, not, again, not that long ago. So uh, another aspect of this was the, uh, the paramedics uh, who, who come here to the scene also get training in how to deal with an ongoing emergency threat, a possible active shooter, and it allows them to respond to those who are injured faster and to triage those people even faster. And so, you know, as we see more of these, the law enforcement response changes and they get better at handling these unfortunate incidents. Now, as all this was unfolding, we were talking to various people here earlier today, and I just want you to listen in again to uh, one of the people we spoke to um, you know, a few moments after we got here to the scene. It's been absolutely crazy. Everything's cut off. Uh, all the roads are cut off. Um, they're not even supposed to let cars down here, and they're just using any larger vehicles they're letting through. But uh, they're telling some people to divert through the graveyard somewhat. But there's so many cars that I think I counted at least 13 ambulances, and that's that was just when I was counting. And they put in a, a lot of emergency vehicles. There's like three choppers. They're still looking. It's still investigating. So that was earlier today at the scene. We saw a lot of militarized vehicles okay. here. We saw several Sorry. school buses coming to evacuate people from the scene. Uh, the Harford County Sheriff's Office is also asking that if anyone has information about this woman, something that can shed light on what happened today, to call 410-838-5800. That's 410-838-5800 so that they can get that information to detectives. They're still trying to nail down a firm timeline establish a complete timeline as to what happened here uh, and, and, and how this all unfolded. We do know this person had access was, as a temporary employee. We don't know whether this person had a key card or, or how that works. Um, and that, that uh, it's, we, the sheriff said that Rite Aid does employ some private security, but it, it doesn't appear that they had private security here at the time. We don't know what their uh, security procedures are. That will be part of it. That was a, a big part part of what we saw in the Capitol Gazette shooting. Um, and, and just one line here from the Harford County Sheriff tweeted out 40 minutes ago, we do not have a motive at this time. So they're trying to, to get that together. They're still doing interviews. People who had their belongings here at the facility um, still uh, uh, are, are not allowed to, to get back in or get their vehicles yet. That will happen uh, in time because this is still a crime scene. Um, as the sheriff provided just some detail as to how that unfolded. It started outside of a building and then went inside. And we've talked to several people who were in neighboring buildings about how they were on lockdown, how frightening it was for them and their families hearing about what happened here. So, uh, you know, a lot yet to learn about this, but there's uh, definitely an emotional impact. This uh, community, again, shaken by a, another senseless tragedy. And Mike, thank you. We even spoke on phone with Mike Carey, who was in a nearby building, who helped render aid to one of the right. victims who was shot, it looked like, in the lower leg. And um, hopefully that is one of the injured that is in stable condition. We know the others were taken to Hopkins Bayview, and Devin Bartolotta is standing by there live now with the latest from um, hospital authorities. Devin? Well, Mary, what we know right now is that four people out of the seven who were shot today were brought here to Johns Hopkins Bayview for treatment. They were brought in around 10 a.m. as priority one, each of them with one gunshot wound. Later on, we did get an update from Dr. Fang. He's one of the uh, directors here, and here's what he had to say. About all I can tell you right now is that we received four 
uh, persons from the incident this morning. Uh, they all came to us as a level two trauma center serving this part of, of Maryland. Um, they're all under our care. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation that their families have been notified that they are here uh, and have been notified of their condition before we can give you any specifics about their conditions. So really all I can tell you is that we received four patients with gunshot wounds earlier today. Um, to us, they're all patients. We weren't there, so everything we know is second, third hand, so I really can't comment on whether one or not is, is the shooter. Now, two of those people that were hurt, we uh, heard, are now in stable condition. Two of them are still in critical condition, but we are still waiting for more details on those victims. Back to you. Okay, Devin Barlow reporting from Johns Hopkins Bayview. This has been such a traumatic day for so many people, uh, not just the people who have uh, uh, were affected and actually shot there. Of course, all the other co-workers, Correct. all the other people who were in businesses in those other warehouses and distribution centers are surrounding that building. Everyone affected by this. Harford County doing a, uh, an incredible job of responding to the scene within five minutes and, of course, also uh, rendering aid to those people who needed it right away, triaging the patients, distributing them to hospitals based upon their specific needs. Absolutely. And just talking with Mike Carey, who was in a nearby business and witnessing just an injured person, and then that injured person witnessing the shooting, which started, we know, outside of the Liberty Support Building, which is part of the greater complex of the Rite Aid Distribution Center, which has been part of that community for 20 years and employs a thousand people. So this affected so many in the wider community who did not know what was going on with their loved ones for several hours today. And of course, the mystery that remains today is the yes. why all this happened. Uh, a woman, 26 years old from Baltimore County, open firing today, injuring a number of people. Uh, this is WJZ Eyewitness News. Live from Television Hill, this is WJZ Breaking News. Deadly workplace shooting, a search for answers after a shooter opens fire inside a business in Aberdeen. Thank you for staying with WJZ. I'm Vic Carter. And I'm Mary Bubala. We continue to follow the breaking news from Hartford County, a deadly workplace shooting. The Associated Press reports that at least three are dead, several others injured, and we have updated information, of course, from the sheriff's deputy. A live look at the scene right now from Chopper 13. The scene is still active, but a far cry from when shots first rang out earlier today. Chopper 13 over the scene a little earlier as the SWAT team was getting ready to enter the Rite Aid distribution warehouse to clear it and make sure no other suspects were inside. And WJC is live with extensive coverage. We begin with investigator Mike Helgren in Aberdeen to explain to us exactly what happened. Mike. Vic, we got here just a short time after this all started unfolding. Uh, right after 9 o'clock this morning, here's what we know about the suspect. A 26-year-old woman who had multiple addresses in Baltimore County. She was a temporary employee at the Rite Aid Distribution Center. She showed up for work. The shooting started outside the facility. It moved inside one of the buildings. There was no motive at this point, but they're still investigating exactly why this happened. And they are looking at those addresses in Baltimore County. They're combing social media. They're trying to figure out more. Here's Sheriff Gaylor moments ago. Our suspect is a lone female suspect, age 26, uh, who had a last known address in Baltimore County. Uh, she has died at the hospital from a fatal injury, self-inflicted gunshot wound. It appears, again, as I said this morning, that she was uh, armed with one handgun and several magazines. Uh, no shots were fired by any law enforcement responder. Our, our detectives are still working to establish a timeline, but at this time, what we know is that the suspect was a temporary employee uh, employed here at the distribution center. She had reported for her work day as usual, and around 9 a.m. the shooting began, striking victims both outside the business and inside the facility. We do not at this time have a motive for this senseless crime. In, in the investigation, again, even though we're hours into this, it's still early in an investigation of this size and scope. 
So this was a 9 millimeter Glock that was used in the shooting. It was registered to the 26-year-old woman who they believe opened fire at the facility. It's unclear whether they ever got a chance to interview this woman or, or she said anything, made any statements, and whether there was any video of this. Now, it's a massive facility here, and a lot of people were bussed out and evacuated from the facility, but several of them just walked out after they opened the road here. And we talked to a woman whose sister greeted her here at the scene. Here's that exchange. How good does it feel to be out? Oh, my God. Oh, so good. I'm so glad I'm out of there. You know, because it's devastating to work like that. And, you know, other people know people. I don't, I'm, I'm a two-month-old, a two-month associate. And, and I'm, you know, I'm really fresh. But people have been there for years, and they know people. So everyone is just walking around moving and, you know, yes. grieving for the people that's in liberty. Did you hear any of the gunfire? No. No, I didn't. Actually, I'm glad I didn't because I, I would have been there. Could you share your name or you, if you want to? Uh, my name is Vanetta Johnson. <laughs> Vanetta Johnson. And, yes. And you are this there. is my I'm older Kim. sister. She yes, I'm ready to get my sister. Get How emotional was this for you? I cried for a while. Had my mother listening to my mother, so it was like, is my sister here or is she not? I can't get in touch with her on her phone. I can't get in touch with the warehouse worker, so the next thing to do is just ride out here and come get her. And that's what I did. I mean, we've so, seen too much of this. Yeah, too much, and it's just it's just not enough love out here, if you ask me. I can't put my mind, I can't say how, why they think like that, but I'm just glad my sister was okay. What's it like to see her right here? Yeah, hey, I ran to her. It's, it's, we might not talk every day, but that's my goddamn old sister. You understand that love is real, and, that, that, and that's, that's all. Right so we came and got my sister. I don't know what I did, but I was going to put a shield on to get her, you understand? So I'm glad that she's but here. Tell, tell me what happened. You've been waiting for your sister all morning? Yeah, and I've been calling, and when we talked to her, they said that the, uh, when, on the overhead page, like, don't believe the rumors, there's no shooting. I'm like, yes, it is, Vanetta. I'm rotting out here. I'm on my way to get you. At first, we were on our way to Harvard's Community Center, because that's what they were saying, go. And then they were saying, go to a firehouse. So I was like, we're getting a run around, and I just don't know if my sister okay until I got to talk to her, like, 40 minutes ago. What did so, you guys talk about what happened? I said, Vanetta, do you know it's a shooter out there? She said, ain't no shooter out there. I said, Yes, it is. It's Black Dog. We can't get to you, and I'm trying to get to you. And she that's when my mom had to call the, the dog and get them to release her child. So when you saw this unfolding on TV, what were you what were you thinking? I stopped what I was doing. I dropped everything. I was like, my sister works out there. I need to get to her. Like, this can't be real. It's a nightmare. So I had butterflies in my stomach. I felt sick. So it's like a feeling of what if or what if not. So it's like unpredictable because I didn't know how to feel. Perspective from one family touched by this, but there are some families who will not see their loved ones tonight and others who remain in the hospital injured from this senseless shooting here. We should also add that federal agencies were assisting in this investigation along with state police with Harford County taking the lead. Live at the scene, Mike Helgren, WJZ. Okay, Mike, thank you very much. Of course, there was a massive police response to the scene this morning, including local, state, and federal uh, authorities. Our live coverage continues now with Rick Ritter, also in Aberdeen, with more on the situation. Rick. And Vic, as you know, we have been here all morning, all day long, and even getting up here from 95 from Baltimore, dozens of unmarked police cars racing up to this scene with lights and sirens. When we got up here, that is when the situation began to really unfold, and we started to get more information here. It spoke about an hour ago, the Hartford County Sheriff and also the Hartford County Executive, Barry Glassman, giving us more details on exactly what unfolded here around 9 o'clock this morning. They say that's when the 26-year-old female suspect showed up for what was an ordinary day of work. A temporary employee showed up with a 9 millimeter handgun, a Glock that was registered to her. The sheriff says that shooting rampage began outside the Rite Aid Warehouse Center before making its way inside the building. A total of seven people, including that female suspect, were shot in this whole incident. Four people dead, including the 26-year-old female who has a last known address in Baltimore County. Now, the sheriff said that they are currently serving warrants at that last known address, along with some other addresses as well that they believe are associated with this suspect, but her identity has not yet been released. Now, again, the sheriff and the county executive, Barry Glassman. They spoke about an hour ago. Here's what they had to say. 
Unfortunately, we are become accustomed to this. I want to reassure Harper County citizens that, in fact, although this is the unpredictable, we train for the unpredictable. Our sheriff's department, fire, EMS, all our allied agencies, and our volunteers performed perfectly the day as they carried out their duty to isolate and bring this uh, incident to a closure quickly and safely throughout the community. So. We drill for this, and they performed at the top of their game today to do that. And it's Hartford County Executive Barry Glassman talking about how they're so prepared for this. Unfortunately, they have a lot of experience with these mass shootings. Three in this district alone in the past three years. The other one taking place about 11 months ago. Right now, you're taking a look at some video from Chopper 13 over the scene right now. Obviously, much different than it was earlier when dozens of employees were being evacuated from that building, from that warehouse, and being taken to the reunification center and also being interviewed because police, of course, want to speak with some witnesses as well, try to find out exactly why. This may have unfolded, and maybe any employees who possibly knew this suspect, the temporary employee, trying to find out what was the motive behind all this and why this shooting rampage unfolded. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Rick. All right, the warehouse where the shooting took place is massive, as we've been showing you, with more than a thousand employees. So it took a while for everybody to be safely evacuated. Our live coverage continues now with Kimberly Eaton live at the reunification center near the scene. Kimberly? And Mary, you said it took a while for people to be evacuated, and it's taking a while still for family members to reunite with their loved ones here because, of course, this is a lengthy and drawn-out process. But we just spoke with one woman. She came here to pick up her father, who works at the distribution center, and we were speaking with both of them. He speaks Spanish, so she was translating for us um, as we were asking questions, and she said that he was inside working when all of this started. She says that he heard the gunshots somewhere in the building. He thinks maybe the cafeteria, so he ran into a bathroom. He went into a stall, and he barricaded himself in there, she says, until he heard the gunshots stop. And at that point, he was able to escape. He also told us um, through his daughter that at one point, I'm not sure if it was when he was trying to get into the bathroom or if it was when he was trying to leave the building, that he saw uh, at least one of his co-workers badly injured on the ground. So just a horrifying, traumatic situation. We also asked what he knew of the shooter, of this woman. And he says he knew her uh, really only in passing. He knew she worked there, was a temporary employee. He also said he never suspected she would do something like this and another reporter asked why and he said well you're just coming to work that's not what you think is going to happen on your Thursday so um, so a, a, a lot a lot still in the in the process of this investigation but we also talked to a gentleman who worked security at the building for eight years he's now retired but here's what he had to say I worked here for eight years and retired and uh, I was just concerned and uh, one of my co -work, or one of my uh, workers here was uh, there uh, when things uh, turned bad. And um, he, he needed a way home today. And I said, I'll help you. I'll take you home. Yeah, and we've been seeing all kinds of support like that here at the Family Reunification Center. Again, this is still open if you're still trying to get in contact with a family member, a loved one, a friend. This is at the Level Volunteer Fire Company. There is also a hotline that you can call for information, and that number is posted on WJZ.com. But for now, back to you in studio. Okay, thank you very much. And four of the victims were transported by medevac to Hopkins Bayview here in Baltimore. That's where we find Devin Bartolotta with more on this. And she's been listening to doctors as they've been giving us briefings on the conditions of the people who were brought there. Devin? Vic, well, right now, police are still trying to get a hold of the family members of those four people who were brought here. We were told they were all brought here by ambulance this morning about one hour after the shooting began, all of them with one gunshot wound each. Now, two of those people are now in stable condition. They are talking to authorities, and the hospital says they may also be released fairly soon. Now, the hospital says two other people were in critical condition, but based on the numbers of people who have died that the police are giving us, one of those people 
people that was brought here may have died. What is unconfirmed right now, police still have not said if the shooter, who we now know is dead, was brought to this hospital. There was armed security here today. We saw people in, uh, in bulletproof vests walking around, but the trauma medical director said that this was all out of an abundance of caution for the patients and for the hospital. So, I mean, I think until we know the events and the motivations, it's always good to be cautious and have security for uh, their safety and also for our hospital personnel safety. Now, we have not seen any other family members coming in or out that are obviously here to, to reunite with their family members who are injured here at the hospital. Uh, the hospital says that they do not think they will have any other updates for us, and most of our information going forward will come from police. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much. Short time ago, we spoke with a man who helped a shooting victim who ran into his business. Let's hear what he had to say. Tell me about that, what you witnessed. Oh my God, he was, he was shot in the leg. I didn't know what's going on. I didn't know what's going on. I thought somebody was, I heard gunshots in the parking lot. I thought somebody, somebody was chasing after him. My manager was like, shut that, close down the building, close all the doors, lock everything. And we, we, he came in, we, we sat him down, and like you see in the video, we was trying to help him, put pressure on the wound. He was saying that uh, over here was gunshot, pop, pop, pop. He tried to run out of the building, then he got shot on his leg, and he was just, um, he was just... You know, worried you know, he was about his life. And Mike, what was he saying that he saw? What did he and say? He said he ordered her with gunshot. He, he tried to run out of the building. He got shot in his leg. He was like, he, he was just, he, he didn't know what happened. He thought he was, he thought he got, he got killed. I mean, basically, you know, he thought he, he, thought he, he, he was dead. But he came to a building and then we tried to help him, help him out, you know. We didn't know what was going on. Maybe. We thought that somebody was chasing them out in the parking lot. Then it was just, it was just crazy. Of course, this shooting caused a flurry of activity on social media today. Many people trying to make sure loved ones were safe. Denise joins us from the WJZ Cube with more reaction. Denise? Well, Mary, as you know, the Hartford County Sheriff's Office has been tweeting out throughout the day. They've been supplying what information they were ready to release throughout the day, frequently updating the public and the media on the shooting. And they say that if you have information that could be helpful in the investigation as you learn more and could help them in uh, know more about today's shooting. You're asked to call the number 410-838-5800. Again, 410-838-5800. We've been giving that number out throughout the day. Now, Representative Elijah Cummings tweeted, and I quote, I am praying for the victims and families in Aberdeen, and I thank the first responders for their immediate action. It is absurd how often we must say this, but we cannot allow these mass shootings to become our new normal. We must keep fighting to stop this. And then Governor Hogan also tweeting today, the First Lady and I are grieving for the loss of life in today's shooting in Harford County and praying that those who were injured fully recover. I remain in close contact with Harford County officials and state and local law enforcement as they continue to investigate. And of course, we will continue to bring you coverage and you can get more information when we are not on the air at any time by going to our website, WJZ.com. Mary, Vic? Okay, thank you very much. WJZ has the latest on the deadly shooting inside the Right Aid Distribution Center in Aberdeen. Three people are dead. Three others were wounded by the female shooter. The suspect also took her own life. She was a temporary employee at the facility. Police believe the shooting started outside the building and then went into the building. There is no motive yet. And still ahead on WJZ News at 4, our live coverage of the deadly workplace shooting in Harford County continues in just moments. WJZ Traffic is brought to you by Pizza Bowlies. Download the new Pizza Bowlies app and get a free medium cheese pizza. Conditions apply. Learn more at the new pizzabowlies.com. Hey, mister, did you fix what flooded my house? Sure did. Bust the water heater? Nailed it. What's next? Wrapping up the water cleanup. You do that too? We do both. Fair enough. Call Roto Rooter for plumbing and water cleanup. Yeah, we do both. Mom can't get to her doctor's appointments anymore. How am I going to manage this? Dad just isn't coping with mom's illness. Would counseling help? 
Families facing serious illness have questions. I'm not ready for hospice. I just need some advice. Who can I call? Gilchrist has answers. We are so much more than hospice. We are your support system at every stage of serious illness. Gilchrist. The sooner you call, the more we can help. Oh, mama, forget about your washing machine. Say, mama, you need a pro to get clothes clean. In by nine, out by five. Zip, zip, zip. It's the real deal. Maryland's crime rate has skyrocketed. Murders are up, opioid deaths are up, gang violence is up, and gun crimes are up. Brian Frosch's reaction? I'm not doing the job that I ran for. I'm Craig Wolf. As your attorney general, I'll work to tackle violent crime, the opioid epidemic, and corruption. I'm proud to have earned the support of Governor Hogan and over 21,000 law enforcement officers all across the state. It's time Maryland's attorney general focuses on making you and your family feel safe again. Hi. Hi. You're picking up your SUV, right? Yes. Well, we not only fixed the dents, but we added a few things. Built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi, Apple CarPlay compatibility, and a 7-inch diagonal touchscreen. We also painted it. Whoa. This isn't our car. It's a Chevy. You're right. This is the Chevy Equinox. All those features come standard. It's pretty much everything. Mine's not. What more could you want? Current qualified competitive lessees can lease this 2018 Chevy Equinox for around $199 a month. Or get almost $4,400 below MSRP when you purchase and finance with GM Financial. Wrong line. Nine of us. Hey, look who it is. It's Dr. Sandy Siegel. Guys, I want you to hear something. You know, Marty, for years we've been telling men that one in nine men will get prostate cancer. This year, it's my turn. You've led the fight against this disease. Helping hundreds, thousands. I can't believe it. You can believe I'm going to fight even harder now. We're going to help thousands more. Join the fight. Go to ZeroBaltimore.org. Closed captioning is sponsored by Home Life Remodeling. Now offering entire roof replacement with zero down and no interest for 18 months. Visit homeliferemodeling.com today and get your free evaluation. Well, WJZ continues to follow the breaking news out of Aberdeen today. Three people shot and killed inside the Rite Aid Distribution Center. Three others injured. The suspect is also dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Our live coverage continues now. Ava Jorbinette is in the WJZ Cube with new audio from moments right after that shooting happened. Ava Joy. Well, Vic, after this latest update, we heard from officials that this was a female suspect. They say she then shot and killed herself. But we're about to play some of those audio clips for you. Uh, there are communications between the first responders, the people who officials say were on the scene within minutes of the shooting. And we want to set the scene for you here. You're about to hear them describing the types of wounds that these victims have. And you'll hear them mention GSW, that's shorthand for gunshot wounds. And we want to warn you that some of what you are about to hear may be disturbing. We have the active shooter at Perryman Road. They have at least one patient with a GSW to the head that is still alive. Two number one females, gunshot wounds to the head. I've been advised by the sheriff's office. One more patient at the lobby. We got another medic at the entrance. Where do you want him? I need a medic right down here before the gates. I have one subject with gunshot wounds to the leg. Magazine recovered inside of the warehouse. I'm not sure if the county's aware of it. It is loaded. Nine millimeter. They're doing a final third sweep of the warehouse. It is reported we have no more patients. No more patients inside the warehouse. So you heard them describing the types of injuries that some of these victims had. They mentioned, unfortunately, gunshot wounds to the head. One person, they say, was shot in the leg. You also heard them mention that they recovered a 9 millimeter. They also said they found several magazines in this location. The suspect, a 26-year-old woman, they say her last known address was in Baltimore County. They say she was a temporary worker, showed up for work this morning around 9 o'clock, and then started firing. Once again, officials say six people were shot. There are six victims. Three of them died. Three of them survived, uh, were taken to the hospital. Officials say this 26-year-old woman who they have not identified then turned the gun on herself. I would enjoy just to uh, clarify some of what we heard just a moment ago. These are edited 
uh, clips from 911. These are actual officers on the scene and people who have called in and providing information, correct? That is absolutely right. So uh, we uh, in the news industry, we talk about Broadcastify. These are radio transmissions uh, between officials that are on the scene, first responders, ambulance workers. This is how they all communicate. And this was them telling each other where they were, what they were seeing, and the types of injuries that they were seeing. And earlier today in uh, the press conference, you heard officials thank all of the people, all of the first responders who were coming out to assist them. They mentioned the DEA, the ATF, the FBI, state police. And when you have such a massive um, convergence of all of these types of crews, this is how they get to coordinate themselves. And this is some of what we were hearing as they tried to help the people who were hurt. Gives us a unique insight as to what was happening at the time. It does. And uh, how people were able to communicate with each other. Uh, so quickly after the incident. Surely. All right, have a joy. Thank you. Well, earlier this afternoon, Rite Aid released a statement about the shooting. The company says, quote, we are deeply saddened by the events that transpired this morning at the Liberty Sh Support Facility, which is part of Rite Aid's Pyramid Distribution Center in Aberdeen. Local authorities have confirmed that there are multiple fatalities and casualties. And it goes on to say we are continuing to work closely with authorities as they conduct their investigation. The facility has been closed and we are assessing when it will be reopened. Grief counselors will be made available to our associates and will remain available as long as they are needed. They also say our thoughts and prayers go out to all those involved in this tragic incident as well as their loved ones. You can only imagine what what the folks at Rite Aid uh, oh, were I going know. through, hearing about the shooting at their facility. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and it is a long-time business in Hartford County, employing a lot of people. Sure. All right, coming up on WJZ News at 4, our live coverage of the deadly workplace shooting in Hartford County continues right after this. Tonight at 7 p.m., join WJC's Mark Viviano at the Brass Tap in Towson. See players, enjoy specials, giveaways, and a chance to be on TV as we tape WJC's Purple Playbook. Tonight, the Brass Tap at the Towson Town Center. When you have doctors working as a team for your health, you get the care you need to help you thrive. Visit kp.org to learn more. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. At Toyota, we know your many daily trips are as important as the destination, and all your precious cargo is top priority. Highlander is the perfect fit with plenty of cargo space. And with all these active safety features standard, we're always along for the ride. Now lease a Toyota Highlander for only $2.99 a month. Or buy one with $17.50 cash back. Highlander, what drives you? Toyota, let's go places. Such a nasty one. Shouting situation. match erupted in the center. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of all that? Me too. That's why I'm running for the U.S. Senate, to change the way Washington works. From health care costs to a lack of high-paying jobs, nothing gets done anymore because of silly partisan games. But a true outsider could change that. I'm Neil Simon, and I approve this message. Because Maryland, I'll never fight for a party boss. I'll only fight for you. Nissan's latest tech surrounds you with peace of mind. The 2018 Nissan Rogue Sport. Featuring rear cross-traffic alert, blind spot warning, and automatic emergency braking that can stop for you. Now standard on the Nissan Rogue family. Get a low $199 per month lease on the 2018 Rogue or get 0% financing for 60 months on 13 models. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. It's official. Everybody's listening. Of course they're listening. We're interesting. Monday, it's the start of Big Bang's final season. I want to look away, but I can't. Don't act surprised. It's clearly marked on the schedule. And anything can happen. I'm just worried that you'll grow distant and seek solace in the arms of a heavily muscled longshoreman. Where would I find a longshoreman? Along the shore. It's in the name. The Big Bang Theory's final season begins CBS Monday, followed by the season premiere of Young Sheldon. Hartford County shooting. 
Stay with WJZ. Well, I had a mix of clouds and sun. Lots of clouds gave way to some sunshine this afternoon. Temperatures a little warmer and also a little more humid. Right now, twilight from Waynesboro checking with 80 degrees up there and partly cloudy skies. 80 around the Baltimore region, 77 over in Rock Hall. Down in the eastern shore, 75 in Ocean City. Out to the west, about 79 up across Westminster. And 81 now in Hagerstown, 82 over in Frederick. We do have a coastal flood warning for those folks. It's really downtown Annapolis once again. High tide now, they're having some flooding, and again in 12 hours from now, more flooding expected along the bay there and many other areas along the bay because we have had east and southeast breezes pushing the water across the bay. Around the east coast, pretty quiet around here to the northwest of us, some showers with low pressure crossing across New England. That is going to drag a frontal boundary toward our region over the next two days. High pressure in control now, no problems. Tomorrow, also, we'll deal with some morning clouds and then some afternoon sun, but late in the day, some showers in the mountains. Then Saturday, we have to watch this front approach the region, maybe a few showers. As you can see, the chances of showers increase as we get into late Saturday. And unfortunately for the game here, Sunday, 4 o'clock, chance of a few showers across the region. Much cooler air temperatures back in the upper 60s. That's about it for Sunday and into Monday. Another chance of more showers, as you can see, 6 o'clock. So We'll be dealing with cooler conditions. The front looks like it's going to get pretty far south, but we do have a risk of scattered shower activity. Overnight tonight, increasing clouds, just like we saw last night, 65, kind of humid tomorrow. Humid in the morning, some clouds give way to some sunshine, up to 79 degrees. The next seven days, 78 on Saturday, but lower humidity. A nice afternoon, good morning for the parade. Sunday, a chance of showers for the Ravens, 69 down to 59. 69 Monday, 78, 81, 74. A risk of showers again each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and again on Thursday. Back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. Well, more ahead on WJZ News at 4. Our live coverage of the deadly workplace shooting in Harford County continues with new information about the shooting. What is hustle? Hustle is keeping lots of plates in the air. No, not those kind of plates. These kind. Meetings. Appointments.
News, a deadly workplace shooting in Harford County. Hello and thanks for staying with WJZ. I'm Denise Koch. And I'm Vic Carter. New information this hour on today's deadly workplace shooting. Now three people are confirmed dead. Police say the female shooter is also dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We have a live look right now from Chopper 13. It took hours for police to clear the building as a precaution. Let's go back to WJZ investigator Mike Helgren live on the scene in Aberdeen with the very latest, including new details about the suspect and we understand understand that she has now been identified. Mike? Our suspect is a lone female suspect, age 26, uh, who had a last known address in Baltimore County. Uh, she has died at the hospital from a fatal injury, self-inflicted gunshot wound. It appears, again, as I said this morning, that she was uh, armed with one handgun and several magazines. Uh, no shots were fired by any law enforcement responder. Our, our detectives are still working to establish a timeline, but at this time, what we know is that the suspect was a temporary employee uh, employed here at the distribution center. She had reported for her work day as usual, and around 9 a.m. the shooting began, striking victims both outside the business and inside the facility. We do not at this time have a motive for this senseless crime in, in the investigation. Again, even though we're hours into this, it's still early in an investigation of this size and scope. All right, we apologize. We lost Mike's signal briefly, but we will go back to him in a moment. Absolutely. We're going to go now to Rick Ritter. He has also been live there where we've been getting briefings from the sheriff's uh, office, including right now the new information about the identity of the suspect. Rick. That's right, Vic. The suspect has now been identified. The Hartford County Sheriff's Office putting out a tweet a short time ago identifying her as 26-year-old Snoshisha Mosley from Baltimore County. Again, the female suspect now being identified as a 26-year-old from Baltimore County with the name of Snoshia Mosley. Now, they say that she arrived at the Rite Aid Distribution Center around 9 o'clock this morning for what was an ordinary day of work for her. She was a temporary employee at this center. They say she showed up with a 9-millimeter handgun, a Glock that was ready registered to her, and that shooting rampage began outside the Rite Aid building and then made its way inside that distribution center. They say in total, six victims were shot and that Mosley killed three of them before turning the gun on herself. As you mentioned, we had a press conference here a little more than an hour ago. The sheriff and uh, Hartford County Executive Barry Glassman shedding some more light on exactly what transpired here earlier this morning. And we also heard from the governor. He's been putting out a lot of tweets throughout the day today, talking about how the state has been standing by, ready to assist in any way possible. We did hear from him on camera just a little while ago. Here's what he had to say. I, uh, I have been in touch with uh, County Executive Glassman and uh, Sheriff Gaylor and Maryland State Police and other state agencies are assisting. And I just want to uh, say that my prayers are with uh, the victims and uh, the people that were injured and their families. Again, the new information coming in literally just minutes ago is that the female suspect has now been identified as 26-year-old Snoshia Mosley from Baltimore County. Police had said this building was about 200,000 square feet, obviously a very large warehouse, if you will, so it took them a long time to get in there, comb through evidence, also search the entire building every inch to make sure that everybody was out okay, and that there were still no victims laying in there potentially. But a 200,000 square foot building, Mosley obviously was very familiar with it because this was not not her first day at work. She showed up today and was a temporary employee, and they say she had a 9-millimeter handgun, a Glock, and started that shooting rampage outside the facility before making her way inside. Also, the Hartford County Sheriff's Office urging anyone with information to please come forward. They are begging for witnesses who have, may have seen something, may know something, may know Mosley, obviously no motive figured out at this time, and why this all took place. But the Hartford County Sheriff's Office wanting to speak with those individuals and urging them to come forward. Again, the new information that just came in moments ago that female suspect now identified as 26 year old Snow, excuse me, Snowshia Mosley from Baltimore County. Police had said they were executing a search warrant at her last known address and other addresses that were associated with her as well. Back to you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. Worried family members rushed to the scene, some having to wait hours before being reunited with them. WJZ is live at the reunification center. Kimberly Eaton with more on this. Kimberly? 
And Vic, just shortly before we learn the identity of the shooter, we were speaking with a woman who came here to the reunification center to pick up her father. And he speaks Spanish, so she was translating for us. Um, he told us that he knew of the shooter. He knew of her only in passing. He did not know her personally. He did not know her well. But he knew she was employed there. He knew she was a temporary employee. And we asked, um, did you ever suspect that she might do something like this? And he said, no, we didn't. You wouldn't suspect any of your coworkers would come in on a normal Thursday morning and do something like this. We also learned a little bit about his experience this morning. He said he was working inside the building when he heard gunshots. He says he heard them coming from the area of the cafeteria. So he ran and he barricaded himself in a bathroom stall. And his daughter, um, speaking for him, told us that when the gunshots stopped, that's when he felt like it was safe to leave the bathroom stall and at least try to get out of the building. At some point, he says, seeing his coworkers, at least one of them gravely injured on the floor. So some very, um, some very traumatic moments that you can't even imagine unless you've been in that situation. So we've spoken with some of the agencies who are here to assist the people who have been impacted by today's shooting. Here's what the Red Cross had to say. I think the nice part is that we're able to be on site because of those partnerships to be able to have the conversation now if they're ready or we will follow them through with casework um, till they are ready to have the conversation or until they say they do not need to have it. So our caseworkers not only work today but into the future until our, our individuals find their new normal. Were you guys out here when the Edgewood shooting happened as well? We were. We were. It's a frustrating experience to see the repeat, and it's, it's heartfelt to know, and it's heartfelt to the community. Our hearts go out to everyone. It's heartfelt to know that we have systems in place to manage such situations. It's a, a shame to need them. Certainly something this community has seen far too much of. Uh, as of right now, the reunification center is still open. You can see it here behind us. This is the Level Volunteer Fire Company. If you are still at this hour trying to get in touch with a family member or a loved one, this is a place you may want to come to. There's also a hotline you can call. We've been telling people you can find that on WJZ.com. Also, authorities are asking that you not call the fire company itself. Rather, you can come here or you can call the hotline listed on our website. For now, back to you. Right. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to WJZ investigator Mike Halloran now live again. He's at the scene at Aberdeen with the very latest, including what we now know about the suspect. Mike? So we've been looking into her background. You know, Shia Mosley is her name. Police identified her a short time ago. Uh, 26 years old. Uh, if you look in judiciary case search, uh, everything that she has in there is recent. So in April, on April 30th, there was a civil claim filed against her by the Baltimore County Office of Budget and Finance. And then there was a traffic stop uh, on uh, August 28th. So just uh, not that long ago, a few weeks ago, uh, she got pulled over in the Parkville area and there was uh, another or there were a couple other entries from September 1st and September 2nd some some car registration violations there so nothing uh, very serious but she did have some recent contact with law enforcement over improper registration of her vehicle and improper tags things like that involving her car and she was pulled over in Baltimore County. So all that is from um, August 28th and then the first and second of this month. No acts of violence that we could find from her court records in Maryland at least right now. And the sheriff said that he was unaware of any immediate warning signs as they, as they have pr completed some preliminary aspects of this investigation. However, more will be coming out about this, especially as we learn more about her. She has a Facebook page, but much of that, when we looked at that, much of her Facebook page is private. What police have said is that she started uh, opening fire outside of the building. She's a temporary worker here, and then that continued inside the building. It's worth noting that this is the third workplace shooting in the country in less than 24 hours. Others happening yesterday in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. And it is the second to happen here in Hartford County in just the past year with Roddy Prince opening fire uh, on a granite business not far from here in Edgewood back 11 months ago. But again, Snowshia Mosley, she's the 26-year-old who police have identified. She shot herself in the head. She died. After 
at the hospital was in critical condition. We don't know whether she made any sort of statements to police or to anyone else before she opened fire. And the Hartford County Sheriff's Office says the motive at this point is unknown. Back to TV Hill. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, Mike. Well, a number of the wounded victims were taken to Hopkins Bayview Hospital. And that's where we find Devin Barlana, who has more on this part of the story. Devin? That's right, Vic and Denise, those people are recovering tonight. The hospital tells us that this morning around 10 a.m., about an hour after the shooting began, four people were brought here by ambulance. Two of them were, were, are now in stable condition. They have talked to authorities today, and they may be, be released soon. Two other people were in critical condition. We don't know if one of them was the shooter who later died at a hospital. We don't know if that was this hospital or not. Now, we were told that each of those four people had one gunshot wound each, but we do not know a lot of other details about them. We don't know how old they are, male or female. We don't know uh, where they are in the, uh, where they were in the building or whether they had any type of relationship with the suspected shooter. Um, tonight, the hospital says that there was extra security here as a precaution to keep everyone safe, but there is obviously no threat here at the hospital tonight, and they also say they won't have many more updates for us. Most of the, uh, most of the updates on the three or four remaining victims here at the hospital will most likely come from police. Okay, Devin Berlano reporting for us live. All right, now let's turn to the traffic. Christy Breslin is at WJZ Traffic Control with that for us. Hi, Christy. Hi, guys. Well, that area that the shooting is taking place in, that's actually a very heavily traveled area. A lot of warehouses, a lot of people work back there. So right now we do have um, our biggest closure right now is Perryman Road closed between Cranberry Avenue and Spasuchia Road. We also have Spasuchia closed between Old Philadelphia Road and Cranberry. Now, the problem is on Route 40, we're seeing some significant delays right now. As you can see, average speed only 24 miles per hour. The slowing is actually going to start at the Hayden Bridge. It's going to continue to Route 22. As you can see, there is what Route 40 looks like right now. That is Route 40 at the intersection of Bel Air Avenue. We also have a look at traffic coming from the other direction. This has really lightened up. That's Edgewood Road. What a lot of people are doing at this point is taking Route 7. Now, the best bet would be to take 95. Take a look at 95. There's a look at Route 22. Free and clear. No problems there. We still are having a couple of problems. The crash on the outer loop at Reisterstown Road that has just been cleared. A couple of other big accidents happening right now include Route 100 eastbound on the ramp to Waterloo Road and, of course, lots of delays on the Beltway. On the west side interloop, very heavy from 95 to Liberty Road and the top side is going to slow down from Park Heights Avenue to Lock Raven Boulevard. So we'll continue to keep you up to date, but that area in Aberdeen, very busy. Keep in mind, Route 40 is going to be busy. Route 7 is going to be busy. So if you take 95, that's actually going to be the best case scenario. Okay. Thank you very much, Christy. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, we'll be back uh, ahead with more on WJZ News at 4 on this deadly workplace shooting in Hartford County. It's coming up right after this.
far, there is no motive. All right, uh, straight ahead on WJZ News at 4, we will get an update on the forecast that's coming up next. We have a lot of low clouds that took a while to burn off this morning. Guess what? We'll probably see the same thing overnight into tomorrow morning as well. We've had some east and southeast breezes that have been bringing in some ocean air. Right now, temperature at the airport at 80. The dew point's higher than it's been in the last 24 hours, up to 68. Humidity up to 67%. East southeast winds off the ocean, not that strong, but enough to push the water across the bay. We have some flood advisories and even a flood warning for portions of Anne Arundel County. We'll show you that in a minute. Downtown Annapolis will see some flooding. They did already. They'll probably see some more early tomorrow morning. Right now, take a look at the uh, barometer. It's steady, 30.15 inches. Justin Wilkie checked in with 79 degrees with a good deal of sunshine in Glen Burnie. Light southeast breeze at 5 miles an hour in the barometer. They're rising 30.15, 75% humidity. So it is a lot more humid today than we saw yesterday, but still all in all, not a terrible day. 75 Ocean City, 81 in, in D.C., 82 La Plata. We're at 77 in Rock Hall, Easton. Also at 77, Bel Air at 77. We do have a coastal flood warning, and that's basically for downtown Annapolis. The water has been pushing across the bay, also portions of Baltimore and Hartford County, and Southern Maryland, also a lower eastern shore, have some flood advisories for high tide tonight into tomorrow. Because of the water being pushed, the bay is very shallow. So when the winds come out the southeast direction, east direction, it pushes the water up across the bay, and the high tide will show some minor flooding, maybe a foot to a foot and a half above normal. Right now, most of the east is pretty clear up to the north. There's a frontal boundary that eventually will get to us as a cool front, and that'll be on 
Saturday. It may bring us a few showers at that time. So there's a warm front moving across northern sections of New York tomorrow. Some showers up there for us will probably stay dry. It'll be a little more humid. But as we head into the weekend, here comes that front. Saturday morning, we'll start seeing some clouds, maybe a few showers possible by 10 o'clock in the morning. It looks like we clear out for a while. And then late at night, more clouds come back. Sunday, unfortunately, with a front even further south, at least the model is showing a little bit of shower activity at 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, which may linger into Monday and probably again into next week as more systems kind of head toward our region. So we'll be dealing with more clouds and more shower activity early next week. 75 tonight, kind of humid. Tomorrow, humid, some sunshine back up to 79 with the south breeze picking up and a small cap divide in the bay. So a little nicer on Saturday, less humid behind that front with 78 degrees. Great for the parade here. But cooler, 69, a few showers possible Sunday, Monday, warming up again Tuesday, Wednesday with more chances of showers. Not going to rain all the time. By Thursday, chance of a few showers back down around 74 degrees. By the way, our normal for next week does drop down to 75. This weekend, our normal is right around 76 degrees. The Nice big. Okay, right. thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. WJZ News at 5 is coming up next. Lance, I switched back to the phone for a little bit. Yeah, just for a little bit. It's cool. Five on WJZ. Heartbreak in Harford County. I'm Mike Helgren on the scene where a woman opened fire on her co-workers, killing three of them and then herself. What we're learning about her and the latest on the situation tonight. Live from Television Hill. This is WJZ Breaking News. Deadly workplace shooting, a search for answers after a shooter.
everything is cut off, uh, all the roads are cut off. Um, they're not even supposed to let cars down here, and they're just using any larger vehicles they're letting through. But uh, they're telling some people to divert through the graveyard somewhat. But there's so many cars that I think I counted at least 13 ambulances. Police evacuated the massive buildings and secured the scene while employees were reunited with their families. I cried for a while, and my mother, listening to my mother, so it was like, is my sister here or is she not? I can't get in touch with her on her phone. I can't get in touch with the warehouse workers, so the next thing to do is just ride out here and come get her. And that's what I did. I mean, we've seen too much of this. Yeah, too much, and it's just it's just not enough love out here, if you ask me. I can't put my mind, I can't say how, why they think like that, but I'm just glad my sister was okay. And she was able to reunite with her sister here in front of this business park. Uh, according to Rite Aid, they have grief counselors who will be on hand to help employees, but they still cannot go back and get their vehicles. More on Ms. Mosley, the suspect in all this. We looked at her criminal background. Nothing violent that we could find. There was a civil case filed against her by the county back in April, and then there were some traffic violations. She was pulled over by police at the end of last Last month on the 28th of August and then again on the 1st and 2nd of September for some car registration violations but we're continuing to dig into her background she did have a social media presence including a Facebook page live on the scene in Harford County Mike Helgren WJZ Mike thanks there was a massive police response to the scene this morning and our live coverage continues with Rick Ritter also in Aberdeen with more on the situation there Rick Mary, Jess, a huge police presence responded to this scene this morning. And we know the situation, the shooting rampage, started outside of the facility, then made its way inside the Rite Aid Distribution Center. This is a center, we're told, that was more than 200,000 square feet big uh, in terms of the size itself. And obviously, a lot of places for employees to hide. And we've heard stories of employees hiding, ducking for cover, trying to save their own lives, thinking about their loved ones. There was also some nearby witnesses who worked at other businesses nearby, one directly next door to where the shooting unfolded, who said an employee who was shot ran inside his business and that they immediately tried to render aid and stop the bleeding. Tell me about that, what you witnessed. Oh, my God, he was, he was shot in the leg. I didn't know what's going on. I didn't know what's going on. I thought somebody was, I heard gunshots in the parking lot. I thought somebody, somebody was chasing after him. My manager was like, shut that, close down the building, close all the doors, lock everything. And we, we, he came in, we, we sat him down, and like you see in the video, we was trying to help him, put pressure on the woman. He was saying that uh, over here was gunshot, pop, pop, pop. He tried to run out of the building, then he got shot on his leg, and he was just, um, he was just... You know, worry. You know, it was about his life. And Mike, what was he saying that he saw? What did he say? say? He said he only heard was gunshot. He, he tried to run out of the building. He got shot in his leg. He was like, he, he was just, he, he didn't know what happened. He thought he was, he thought he got, he got killed. I mean, basically, you know, he thought he, he, thought he, he, he was dead. But he came to a building and then we tried to help him, help him out. You know, we didn't know what was going on. Maybe. We thought that somebody was chasing them out in the parking lot. Then it was just, it was just crazy. Scary and heartbreaking. These are some of the terrifying stories that we are starting to hear. Again, a 200,000 square foot building. So obviously took investigators a long time to comb through that facility, trying to make sure there were no more victims uh, potentially laying in there or hiding, trying to make sure everyone was out of that facility. Mosley, we know, is from Baltimore County, and authorities had said they were issuing a search warrant at her last known residence there, along with other addresses as well. Jess, Mary, back to you. All right, Rick, thank you. The warehouse where the shooting took place is massive with more than a thousand employees, so it took a while for everybody to be safely evacuated. Our live coverage continues now with Kimberly Eaton live at the Reunification Center, which is near the scene. Kimberly? Well, as you said, it took a while for those uh, the scene to be evacuated. It also took a while for families 
and uh, people who were impacted by the shooting to get here to the Family Reunification Center because this is about nine miles away from where that shooting happened. But throughout the day, we've been able to talk with some of these people, these family members, and also people who were inside the buildings as the situation unfolded. And late this afternoon, we spoke with one woman. She was here picking up her father. He is an employee at the Rite Aid Distribution Center and shared what he experienced. And I want to let you listen uh, to how that family describes the events. And he started just run. Uh, he, people start just running, and they say they start shooting there. And he just go back to the bathroom and go to the, you know, the last toilet and lock it himself. He put his left up and just wait. And he speaks Spanish, so she was translating for us. And she also said that when the gunshots stopped, that's when he left the bathroom and was able to escape the building. In the process, he saw one of his coworkers. He says gravely wounded on the ground. We also asked him about the shooter, if he knew her. He says he knew her only in passing. He was familiar with her only as another employee. And he said he never expected, never suspected that she would do something like this. We asked why, and he says. It's just not what you think would happen on your Thursday when you go into work. Now, if you are still looking for a family member, a friend, a loved one, the Reunification Center is still open. This is the Level Volunteer Fire Company. This is where you are asked to go if you're looking for someone. There's also a hotline that you can call, and as we've been saying, that is listed on our website at WJZ.com. For now, back to you. All right, Kimberly, thanks. New details emerging about the female suspect in this deadly workplace shooting. We now know that she is from Baltimore County, and that's where WJZ is live. George Solis with the very latest for us. George? That's right. We're here in Parkville, not far from a last known address for Shinokia Mosley. Again, 26 years old from Baltimore County as a last known address. We have been able to track down at least three or four addresses in Baltimore County and possibly one in the city. And as you mentioned, Mike, uh, as Mike Helger mentioned earlier, rather, uh, there were nothing, there's nothing on her criminal record that would indicate anything suspicious. A couple of traffic violations are so far what I've seen. Now, I did speak earlier to the daughter of a, a woman who was working at the distribution center who shared a heartbreaking message with her daughter while the shooting occurred. Now, she wasn't able to confirm a photo for me of Mosley. She did say that uh, the woman who conducted the shooting was a recent new hire, but there was never anything to suspect beyond uh, just, again, just a few interactions in the building. But again, we're here in Parkville at an address that's uh, not uh, I should say that's known to be one of the last four Mosley. Now we did hear that they were maybe possibly conducting some type of surveillance, or uh, police were still in the area looking at a number of these residences that belong to Mosley. But again, a pretty quiet scene as far as we can see. But of course, there may be a whole lot happening behind the scenes that police obviously do not want us to share, or that we aren't privy to at this particular time. Obviously, a lot more to uncover and unravel on this suspected shooter that. Again, police identified as 26-year-old Sonokia Mosley, last known address here in Baltimore County. We will continue to stay on the scene here and bring you more updates as they become available. Now we'll send it back to you. All right, George, thank you. Well, four of the victims were transported by medevac to Hopkins Bayview here in Baltimore. And that's where we go to Devin Bartolotta with more on this angle. Devin? Jess and Mary, we're, we're hearing a lot more about the emotional impact of this on a lot of people, but there are still three, possibly four people at this hospital with physical wounds. All of them brought here this morning around 10 a.m. with gunshot wounds about an hour after this incident happened. Now, we do know that two people are in stable condition. They are up there talking to authorities and expected to be released. Now, at least one person, possibly two, are in critical condition here. The second person may have died. We are not quite sure yet if that person was the shooter who we know later died at a hospital. Um, but earlier today, police were on guard here. Uh, their security had uh, security guards out here with uh, armed with guns, wearing bulletproof vests. They were blocking off the street here. And the hospital says that all of that was just in case and for the safety of the patients and the hospital. So, I mean, I think until we know the events and the motivations, it's always good to be cautious and have security for uh, their safety and also for our hospital personnel safety. 
Now, the hospital has not released much about the victims that are still here. We don't know anything about their ages or if they even knew the suspected shooter. The hospital also says they do not think they will be providing any more updates. So any further information on this will have to come from police. Back to you. All right, Devin, thank you. Well, the shooting caused a flurry of activity on social media. Many people trying to make sure their loved ones were safe. Denise joins us now from the WJZ Cube with more reaction. Denise? Well, Jessica and Mary, you know, words are difficult in times like this, uh, but it is important that officials, those in power, reach out to victims. And earlier today, Governor Larry Hogan did tweet out, we are wholeheartedly grateful to the first responders who were at the scene in five minutes. And all medical and law enforcement personnel who are helping in the aftermath of this tragic shooting. Every citizen in this state I know echoes that feeling. And then Representative Andy Harris from the Eastern Shore, my sympathies go out to the victims, families, and friends of the shooting today in Aberdeen, Maryland. We are praying for your well-being and are extremely heartbroken by this tragic event. And even with a game facing them, Raven, the Ravens today as they practice had this shooting on their minds. And here's a statement from the defensive coach. I'd like to take a second and let everyone know that our thoughts and prayers are with the people in Aberdeen. I think it's a, a tragedy. We don't know the ins and outs of what happened, but uh, you know we've seen the news just like probably the rest of you have. And I said it's, it's a situation that happens too much. It seems here of late. You know the timeline on the years put on it, but it just seems like it's happening too much. Yeah, I think everyone would agree with that. Um, once again, there's a lot of information that you can find on WJZ.com. So uh, anytime throughout the night, if you want the latest, you can always check there and we'll have that for you. Back to you, Mary and Jess. All right, Denise, thank you. WJZ is the latest on the deadly workplace shooting. Three people are dead, three others wounded by the female shooter who also took her own life. She is now identified as 26-year-old Snokia Mosley from Baltimore County. She was a temporary employee at that Rite Aid facility, and be police believe that the shooting started outside of the building and then continued inside of the building. So far, there is still no word on a motive. And still ahead on WJZ News at 4, our live coverage of the deadly workplace shooting in Aberdeen continues in just moments. Please stay with us. Maryland is for crabs. Delicious blue crabs, fresh from the Chesapeake Bay. Create good times and lasting memories with friends and family. Enjoy Maryland blue crabs and crab dishes today. Get in the game with huge savings from Miller Brothers Chevrolet. Get up to $9,000 off a 2018 Chevy Cruze or save $9,400 on a 2018 Malibu and take up to $8,300 off a Suburban. Let us show you what the Miller Brothers difference is all about. It's Gavigan's grand opening of their brand new location in Towson, and all six stores are celebrating. Savings of 60% off, 60 months interest-free financing with no money down, or get a discount equal to your sales tax and free local delivery. Gavigan's Towson grand opening. He's the son of two Maryland school teachers, Ben Jealous, Rhodes Scholar, who turned around the NAACP when its finances were in tatters, restoring its prominence, nearly doubling its revenue. Named Marylander of the Year, businessman and venture capitalist, Ben's helped grow over 20 companies, creating over a thousand jobs. Ben Jealous, his plan, Medicare for all, to lower costs and prescription drug prices, fully fund public schools, increase teacher pay, Ben Jealous, a job creator with a plan to invest in small businesses. The Baltimore Sun said Jealous has the stature and gravitas to lead Maryland. Ben's endorsed by teachers, nurses, and business leaders. I've spent my life pulling people together to get big things done. We can do much better on jobs and education and health care, but it means that we got to believe in each other. Ben Jealous, Governor. Come celebrate the grand opening of our new showroom at Heritage Mazda Catonsville. The selection is big, over 500 Mazdas in stock, and enjoy even bigger savings all month long at any of our three locations. Now through September 30th, get a 2018 Mazda CX-5 for just $25,145, or lease for $149 a month for 36 months. Don't miss this incredible buying opportunity. The celebration is happening now through September